Everyone loves a relaunch, a rebrand. Remember when the PlayStation went from lying down to standing up? When Ronaldo became R9? Reinvention is game changing. Bigger, better, faster. This is the new home of FC Pro. But don't panic now. I have got some familiar faces to guide you through the action. All served with a cheeky grin, of course. Live from London, welcome to the FC Pro Global Qualifier. to our shiny, beautiful, bold new home. And I hope you like the color purple. And if you don't, don't worry, because there's plenty more to love, including my new friends in the studio, Mr. Richard Buckley. And of course, we have Boris Legend joining us. Uh, Richard, though, I didn't see any moves during the opening titles. I'm quite disappointed because you've been dancing all day, my friend. We've got a long season. I don't want to wear myself out too early. What is the signature move that we see if you score, though, when you're playing FC? It's a I'll classic. It I'll throw it back. I'll throw it back. I, it's not really a classic, though. It's a bit outdated. No one dabs anymore. Uh, Boris, what are the kids doing in Sweden when they celebrate? Gritty. Can we see a gritty? Gritty. We have to ask Anders Mergang. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, my goodness. I'll get it out from him at some point, because we do, of course, have the Monday night shows to come. And we also have some classy commentary from these boys. They're our newest commentary duo. I'm calling them Brian. Ryan Pessoa and, of course, Brandon Smith. What do you think of, of Brian? Are you happy with the branding? I'm happy with what I've just seen from Richard Buckley over there. Anything <laughs> better happy. than that? I'm not happy with that, Richard, I'll be honest. OK, well, you do better then. Absolutely not. Come on, I'll then. Be now, move, we've got to move I on. I forgot no. it's, it's been a while since we scored in a pro <laughs> game. But let's, let's move on from the awkwardness now and move on to me being a bit sycophantic and fawning over our newest face, FG, because he, he might have a few friends who play for Man City, so how do I get their numbers? Well... But as I, I, I'm a married woman, I should say, how do I get them to teach me how to play football? Well, I mean, they might be able to teach Ryan how to play as well, some of them. Shout out to Rico Lewis, he's very, very good, and it's good to see in the commentary box, Ryan. I hear that he might be watching as well. I think that maybe people could be saying hello to him in the Twitch chat right now. Absolutely, say hello to Rico, and of course, let us know what you think about everyone's drip. Yeah, I mean, you basically are wearing the same thing as Ryan Pessoa's, but again, we'll we'll glam you up later. We'll add a little chain or something to tell you guys apart. OK, time to give you all a bit of context, because many of you watching will have entered online qualifiers alongside the players you'll be seeing competing this weekend on PS5, the exclusive platform of FC Pro. We have gone from a player pool of over 50,000 down to 64 in attendance in London for the global qualifier all trying to get to the world champs next summer. So here's how the season fits together. The FC Pro Open. The first piece of silverware up for grabs in EA Sports FC 24. Tens of thousands of players enter, but only one is crowned champion. After regional ladder and qualifier competitions, the field is narrowed to 52 of the best players on the planet. They will join the 12 invited players in the global qualifier. The Global Qualifier takes place in London and is played across three days. On Friday, players compete in five rounds of group stage play with the top 32 making it through to the knockout stage. Those remaining players are split into four groups of eight with brackets A and B played on Saturday and brackets C and D played on Sunday. The top four players from each group join the four already invited to make up the 20 players in the multi-week FC Pro Open. The Open will divide into four groups of five players who play on Monday night in London in November, December and January. The top two from each group would advance to the FC Pro Open Finals, crowning the first ever FC Pro Open champion on February 3rd. The final four will earn a spot at the FC Pro Championship in summer of 2024 and will automatically be invited back to next year's FC Pro Open. We are going to be seeing some of the big names you know and love competing later today and tomorrow as well. But things have slightly changed for this year, Richard. 
drastically changed. Uh, the, the typical rule book that we've had in many a previous title, we've ripped it up. We've gone from the ground up and we have built the draft. This draft is going to span over the entirety of the FC Pro Open and every single week there'll be a new set of squad building restrictions. This week, for this global qualifier, it was 8 million coins. I mean, firstly, Boras, 8 million coins. Thoughts on that? I think the budget is quite high. Uh, you could get some top names. And, well, it's not no, eternal because you don't see all nine, etc. They are, I think, 10 million coins each. Yeah. Uh, and players like Mia Ham, that is five million coins. So, what, so, like these top names might miss out, but still, that is plenty of coins. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, when the budget changes and gets lower and lower, any players watching, you can blame Boris Legend for saying that eight million is too easy. No, so no, actually, I didn't say that. You, you blatantly did, mate. <laughs> let's actually take a look at the drafts that you guys put together for this weekend, starting with you, Richard. I'll go first because I built the best draft that you could have built for the eight million coins. You see the back four here. Um, pretty standard, in all honesty. Allison in goal, you've got to have a, a steady foundation. This right here is the man who is going to change my fortunes if I was to play in the FC Pro Open. Um, he's incredible. Zico, what, I mean, what do you think, Boras? Eight million coins well spent? Uh, not quite. Oh, great. I mean, that he's, is, he's like three million That coins. is <laughs> three million coins on just one player that was added this year. Zico, he's no 5'5". Five five. But I tried him out and I don't think he's worth the price tag. I think, you know, you pay like for the name extra, probably. And for the new player thing, he's, you know, he's fresh, but still is a quite nice team. You have defense that is quite ratty and strong. <laughs> Mate, but... are you sure you're from Sweden? Because you're talking like Switzerland right now. <laughs> Can we please move on to your draft instead? My draft, yes. Uh, the same defense almost is quite default. So the thing is here that I think the best would be to put the uh, budget up top. So defense is quite cheap. Uh, midfield though, a bit different. You could argue uh, Zanetti Centurions. I don't think we're going to see that often here. But yeah, he has not. stamina. He has stamina for days. So he can run far. He can run far. Uh, good pace, good weak foot. And then also Modric for the passing. Tevela's excellence. Up top, of course, Ginola and Kilian. So I think this team is definitely better, but let us know in the chat. Can I also, I don't want to land Boris in it too much, but earlier on when we were talking about his draft, he went, oh, well, Zanetti, like, he's, he's really clever. He's like, <laughs> that yeah, was his really mind in game. But that's that's literally not on the item. No. So it doesn't, it doesn't count. He has but passion. It, but it's fine. Like, I've learned so much from watching you, but I want to learn from our community. So please do share the drafts that you have created for this weekend's 8 million budget. Hashtag FC Pro Draft. Now, all of the players that competed this weekend, even the ones we sadly said goodbye to yesterday, had to submit their drafts for the weekend on Thursday night. That was the deadline. But let's find out how exactly we went from those 64 players down to the field of 32. It was an epic start to the weekend with Swiss yesterday, where we saw some underdogs sneak through and some big names knocked out of the hat. Verjan lost 7-5 to underdog player Nisten SQ, stirring excitement from the start. Come here. And Emre Yilmaz lost 4-3 in penalties against Young. Umut proved his power in round two with a 5-3 win against Mahaned. And Verjang reclaimed his status with a convincing 11-0 win against Kuhn. Things hotted up in round three when the first eliminations were on the line. Manchester City players were matched against each other with Tex taking a 5-3 win over Bonanno and Oli Lito beating Tuga in a big name matchup. There were also first wins for LJR Pachotto and Montanza. MS Dasari, Nick Seb, LJR Pachotto and Lamps were surprisingly sent home in round four. Whilst Bonanno and Abu Maka both were convincing 6-1 winners against first favorites. Paolo Neto and Hummer. Happy lived up to his name when he defeated Young 5-3 in the fourth round, and Nicholas 99 booked his place in the next stage, beating Yoskan on penalties. Who 
Uma needed to win and did just that, sending Paolo Neto home. Montaxa left it late to win his final game on penalties against Afonso and qualified to the knockouts. Klinger scored four in 13 minutes to complete an incredible comeback in the last minute against Tuba. Before we get into the guys who made it to the groups, we've just got to take a moment to show our appreciation for some of the big names that we lost yesterday, Richard. Yeah, massive names. There's four players who got invited from the 12, uh, from the community that Unfortunately, dropped out. MS Dasari, massive name, former world champion. Tuga, Mr. Qualifier. He always gets to the knockouts. Lamps, which I think was a big name from NA as well. And Yuval, which probably surprised me the most. Number one player from Europe last season, not making it into the FC Pro knockout. Yeah, well, hopefully we're going to see them bouncing back next year. But let's talk about who did make it through. And actually, let's work backwards. Let's look ahead to Sunday to Group D, because this is kind of a group with relative unknowns. And my favourite player, I have to say, from yesterday's Swiss, actually, was Justin Q, who beat some really big names. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really solid performance. And when we do look at his draft later, there's a few interesting picks in there that me and Boros are going to be breaking down. I think also in Group D, it's, it's wide open. It's an open field. Albert's, I like, in that group. I think he's got a lot of potential. And Group C is the group of death, because we've got Vergang in there. We've got a few others, Matthias as well. Umut and Emre Yilmaz as well. There's champions all over the place in that group. Unfortunately, only four can go through. Yeah, unfortunately, we're probably going to lose some of those other big names. Seeing that we've already lost four, it's going to hurt to lose some more, to. but we're going to see some new stars rising through. But are we going to see a new star in Group B? Because Faku Cohen, he went five and zero in the Swiss groups, and I'm not going to lie, I've never heard of him. Yeah, when you talk about Argentinians uh, in this game, Nicolas Mateus Banano, the two that jumped to the top of the page. Faku Cohen, five and all, level with 10 in Swiss. What performance? But can he keep it up under the purple lights? We're going to be finding out later today in the show. But first of all, we've got to get on with Group A and Tex is clearly the king. He is. He, he finished the statistic best player um, from day one. There's some some good names in Group A. I'm really looking forward to it. Levy David, Klinger as well, and Young. Good South American presence in that group. Well, we're going to talk about it on the desk in a moment. But before we do, let's head over to Brandon and Ryan for their thoughts. Thank you very much, guys. And yeah, just leading on from those conversations yesterday, Ryan, some massive names that didn't make it through Swiss. And I said it yesterday, it's probably one of the biggest Swiss stages we're ever going to see in a competitive tournament because if you don't make it through this tournament, it's going to be a long old season. Yep, exactly. As you said, a lot of these players will be vying to make it to the latter stages of this tournament to get into the FC Pro Open. And again, many upsets that didn't make it. Well, Richard mentioned the four players out of the 12 invited. No North American representatives as well, which is massive. They had five juggernauts from that side of the world that didn't make it. Well, there's bigger news as well, because there's new rules for FC24 this year. The games are going to be longer. No more two legs of competitive play. Instead, nine minute halves, one leg, one and done. Ryan Passar, what's your thoughts on that? Longer games, but so to speak, they are shorter because we're not playing two legs anymore. Yeah, um, it's hard to say my opinion on it yet. It's still, we need a, a bigger consensus of games played. But again, all players, everyone, we've really been used to six minute halves, best of two. Now you have to focus for even longer in that game. It's nine minute halves. Any slip of concentration will be punished. So. We saw a lot of late goals yesterday as well. Wouldn't be surprised if we see more of that today. Yeah, we've seen like 10 plus goals in all our games here. The FC Pro Open Global Qualifier. For now, though, we're here at FG's backstage speaking to some pros. Who are you speaking to, mate? Yes, hello, it is FG. And as you can see, I am backstage in the player lounge. You can see the players are chilling out here. We've got some pizza on the go here. I'm on the lookout and look who I've just bumped into. It's none other than defensive genius Levy. Levy, let me come and sit next to you. First things first, how are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling all right. Um, obviously, a little bit tense because uh, big games upcoming, but I'm feeling good as well, so nothing to complain about. Now, yesterday, of, of course, the games are now nine minute halves. You were a defensive genius yesterday. You conceded the least goals. How did you rate your performance defensively? Uh, to be honest, I didn't even think about that that much. I just heard it from Brendan, I think. And yeah, obviously, I tried to defend well, but 
I want to score. You need to score to win goals. Um, I had a tough game against Tex where we both defended pretty well. He uh, was on the lo on the better end with a 2-1 victory. And yeah, overall defensively was solid and that allows me to attack well. So I think it's the things to together which makes a, a good performance. Absolutely. Now, for those of you who are watching, you might not know, last night it finished really, really late. There was a bracket which got announced late. The first question I've got to ask is, did you stay awake for the bracket or did you just go to sleep and wake up casually? No, I, I did stay up because I needed to know whether I was going to play today or tomorrow. And yeah, we're playing at six, so I could like sleep in, so it was not a problem for me. So you've had enough sleep, you're all feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling good, I'm fit and more ready than ever. What about rituals? So pre-match rituals, have you got anything to do? I mean, you seem very, very relaxed. You seem like you're just chilling. Yeah, I'm just trying to make myself feel comfortable. That's the thing I'm uh, used to, and that's what I want to do. Well, we're super excited to see you. All the best today. That was Levy. Thank you so much. Let's carry on our walk. We've got some more players over here as well. Hello, Mr. JH. How are you, my friend? I'm feeling good. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous to play against Tex, but yes, I, w I will be here, and I do my best. When you face up against a player like Tex, who of course so many people know, so many people love and respect, it's a great opportunity for you, isn't it? To show them, show the world what you can do. Yeah, I think it's a good uh, opportunity to play against Tex. It's uh, like a bit uh, like a idol for me um, in the scene and I, I, I like to play against the biggest names in the scene and he is one of them and yeah. And finally, just before we head back, what can the viewers on Twitch expect from your gameplay? Um, I hope to score more goals than Tex, and that's my plan, and then, yes, I will win. Well, good luck. All the best. We wish you all the best. The vibes in here are all right, aren't they? Let's head back to the guys. Well, uh, two takeaways from that interview. One, I'm expecting FG to just come through the curtain and join us on stage, which would not be a bad thing. It would be absolutely delightful. But also, JH7 has luckily understood the rules of FC, which is score more goals than your opponent. So hopefully he'll be able to do that against Tex in that opening matchup of Group A. So let me just talk you through the actual bracket stage and how it's going to work, because Groups A and B will play today, and Group C and D are in action tomorrow. It's really simple. Play Players need two wins to go through the day, but they're eliminated if they lose twice. So that's all you need to remember. Win two, you're in, you become a top C, because as soon as a player makes it through to the next stage, they're gonna draw the group for the FC Pro Open, and they're actually gonna be doing it with FG. But right now, Richard, I will need you to pretend to be FG and demonstrate how these balls work. Okay, so you've just qualified, you've won two, whether it's through the loser's bracket or through the winner's bracket. If you come from the loser's bracket, you come in here, you're gonna pick your ball out, open it, I'll not do it to save the suspense, and that will be the group that you are assigned to. The winner's bracket, straight in there. Green, losers, slash, still winner. Purple, yep. you've come through the winner's bracket. Perfect, and FG, I hope you're watching that, mate, because Richard did it flawlessly. Now, four players have already qualified from the last season. They've been pre-seeded into each group. They are Mark11 in Group A, PH Zin in Group B, Mano Bashori in Group C, and Oven in Group D. Got all that? Good. I'm going to be testing you guys later because I don't have time right now, quite frankly, because we need to get some FC on this floor. Our marquee matchup to kick things off is going to be Tex versus JH7. We want to see if JH7 can deliver those goals. He knows he can get into the back of the net, but Tex. Let's face it, five and zero in the Swiss stage yesterday. He set out his stall, and if there's one thing we know about this player, he loves to play in person opposite his opponent, staring them down in the face. And that Man City jersey is definitely buoying him up for the competition. But what about the drafts? Well, we've got to head over to Boris Legend and to Richard Buckley to find out their thoughts. Thank you very much, Frankie. Yes, me and Boras have got the pleasure to break down the drafts for our opening key matchup. Boras, it's only right to start with Tex. It was 5 0 in Swiss yesterday, and this is how he did it. For everyone at home, you can have a little look at it there and see what is uh, being used. I've got a question, yeah. firstly, Boras. There's three players in this team that nobody else in the entire tournament has used. <clears throat> Who are the three? And let us know in the chat as well. Who do you think is the three players that no other player has drafted? I think probably Socrates is a different choice, unique. But he has a size and a faster weak foot, so I don't think that's a bad choice. 
but definitely a bit uh, different. And then also left back Robertson, Trailblazer, I don't think we see that. Uh, one more? And one more, I think. Last one is tough, but my guess is Hansen Trailblazer. Yeah. Let's get on to the other team. Let's have a look at JH7 squad. Pretty standard, to be honest. The big key point here is Peter Schmeichel in goal. I can tell you only one out of seven players. Uh, he's one of seven out of the 64 that drafted, who selected Schmeichel in goal. Quick thoughts on that team right there. Ginola is the big Ginola, key point. Mbappé, yeah, I think they're going to be in most teams. Uh, they offer you a lot up top uh, with their speed and the dribbling, even physicality size. Uh, Maymore in there as well, and Hansen, the gold item. But one thing here that might concern me is maybe the defensive mi uh, balance on the midfield. Because Absolutely. Puteas and Frankie, average defense there is 74, 75. So how does this actually line up in the game? Might be against Tex, probably, you know, maybe a bit attacking perhaps. 81%, 81% of the players picked Ginola in their drafts. Well, you know what's going to be used. You know the players that are going to be playing with them. Let's head to our casters to get this game started. Thank you very much, Richard and Boras. Drafts are locked in, and I think we are pretty much ready, Ryan Pesawa, to kick off this new FC Pro season. We've been waiting a long time. So many online qualifications have taken place, and now it is time for LAN. Time to uh, to find a knockout player. Yep, exactly. And it's an arena or a stage that we always see Tex thriving in, in-person events, who always comes to, to show his dominance. And yesterday, he done that. 5-0, and oh, I think today, Again, he needs to win two before losing two to qualify for the FC Pro Open, and I'm backing him to do it. Well, it's not just Tex in action, as we said. There is three other matches taking place in this group. Remember, four players from the eight will qualify for the FC Pro Open, which kicks off in two weeks back here in London across eight long weeks of group play. But I don't know about you, I've waited long enough to kick off this tournament. Back live for you guys at home and all around the world. The FC Pro is back. A new game with a new name and the same goal for all of these competitors. Let's get that countdown on the screen. Tex back in action, back on the main stage. 5-0, and oh, he went last night here in London. He's back and he's two games away. However, there is a German that sits on the other side of him. JH7 or Fortuna Dusseldorf. Another prime example of the virtual Bundesliga producing these new names, these new talent. Two wins away, Ryan, is all you need. Do that. You're pretty much locked in for eight more weeks of league play and probably the most difficult tournament you'll ever see. 20 of the best players from all around the world will be there. Absolutely. And again, you mentioned how it's only two wins away. It's in touching distance. It sounds easy, but of course, the task ahead is completely opposite from that. Well, then keep in mind, Texas is going to be kicking from left to right in this game. With JH7 on the other side of play, from right to left. And it looks like straight away we could be going into a technical pause. Maybe something isn't right for those two. Remember that we have got other matches in action happening in our other games here in Group A. I wanted to get your thoughts on the draft selection, Ryan Pessoa. I mean, look, can anyone win the draft? They've got the same budget, they've got the yeah. same selection of players, but if you had to sit there and go, who edged that draft between the two? Or whose draft would you rather have? Ooh. Whose are you choosing? Out of those two, I'll be honest, I actually would lean towards JH7's draft a little bit more. I understand Texas one is all personal preference. He chose Socrates, he chose Hansen Trailblazer is the one, in my opinion, that... She's a, she's a lot of money. Yeah, she is, but I think she's incredible, especially with the, the meta being finesse shots. You've got the Playstyle Plus on that Hansen card coming in off the left-hand side. We saw a goal Tex scored yesterday. It was on one of the VTs as well against Levy to break the deadlock. So I feel as if maybe Hansen could be a, an underdog of a choice there. Well, there was one game that has kicked off in this Group A. Do not worry. Klinger against Levy. I mean, I know you're a big fan of Levy, Ryan, but so he is... Right now, the best defensive player that's left in this tournament yesterday had a not a bad Swiss stage at all. Went four and one in the end before he had to match up against a very difficult Tex. Yeah, Levy, as you mentioned, is, is one of my favourite players throughout the years. He's shown consistency um, when he first came into the scene. I think it's going to be a very tough game. Klinger coming in off of that. He was 3-0 down approaching the latter stages of the game against Tuga. Saw Tuga celebrating and to, to turn that around to win 4-3 in the last moment of the game will definitely give him a huge boost of confidence coming into today. Could be an early chance. 
Here's Levy looking for the one more pass. Interesting fact for you, Ryan. Do you want to know it? Yep, go ahead. Klinger and Levy have the exact same drafted <laughs> yeah. team. Player for player, man for man, female for female. I, I feel as if when you have that that threshold or the price range of, of 8 million, obviously there's going to be some variation within the squads. We've seen some players go with um, sort of Hanson Trailblazers. We saw um, a couple other icons or or other items in the team that are, I would say, unique to certain squads. But I think the base of the squads will be very similar. Most of the, the staples in the team will be Van Dijk. You've got Mbappe, who I believe it was 94 or 95 percent of players ended up choosing him in the squad. Here's Mbappe. This is Klinger. In case you didn't see the uh, the VT clip, that match he played against Tuga. And there was a lot of Portuguese being thrown around <laughs> in that qualification room. 3-0 up, Tuga was in that game, yeah, to lose 4-3 is... against Klinger. You saw the reaction, you saw the passion in that one. I mean, you can understand why. It sent you into the knockout stages. Speaking of women this year, brand new addition into FC24 Ultimate Team. Alexa Patelis, the highest rated in-game gold item there is. Offers you just so much in that midfield. And there's no surprise that the pro scene and the general ultimate team scene have just taken such a liking to her. Yep, absolutely. Along with the, the chemistry links as well, there's many players from um, that Barcelona women's team that are incredible in the game. Not just incredible, I'm pretty sure they're all walkouts as well, Ryan. Here's Levy. Looking to build up now. That's Trailblazers, Bellingham, Alexa Patele. It's all it had to be, didn't it? 14 minutes in, and it's the new star of the show on this year's FC24. What a start. It's a brilliant start from Levy. You've seen his coach Renzo behind him for Team Hullet. It's a step over into space and a shot across goal there from Patez to give Levy the one goal lead. Well, we'll keep you up to date of Levy's game. We're hearing now that Texas game is back underway. Do not worry. This is live. You're catching it now. But it's still nil-nil. Texas kicking from left to right in that Manchester City strip. I have to speak to you, Ryan, because you played for Manchester City as a pro. How big of a move is that for Tex? Massive. Massive move. Again, one of the... Well, I the... Wait, I was Hello. after this attack. Here's Hansen. Fake shot inside. It's Schmeichel. He's the goalkeeper of choice for J.H. Seven. Richard picked up and said it's one of the most popular choice, but it is a, a choice that a couple of players have made. Back to what we're saying, though. Big money move for Tech. Signing for Manchester City this year. Sure, the pressure builds signing for a club of that stature. Absolutely. One of the, the biggest teams or organisations in the scene. In fact, they've been around for a number of years now. So to sign with them is a huge statement of intent from both Tech and Man City. And I feel as if he's taken the pressure under his wings already. He's already 5-0. Here's Akimi. Defended well, only as far as Neymar. There's a Traveller. There's your first little look at that. Same mechanical finish type that has carried over into this year's game. As you were saying, Ryan. Yeah, I was just speaking about the, the term, the, the pressure on his shoulders, obviously coming into perform, perform. Even if he was a free agent, there'd be heaps of pressure on Texas' shoulders. So I'll be able to do that at one of the biggest clubs. And coming in, he makes it look easy. I feel as if that's one of the things with we associated with Texas gameplay, whether it's skill moves defensively. He's one of the very few players that can stand on the ball. I can, kid you not, stand completely still and still put a lot of fear factor into his opponents. Someone else that's in that team that nearly did score. Caroline Hansen of FC Barcelona. Tex has gone from the trailblazer version. Of her in-game item. He has to defend this one first, though. No surprise, there is a sprinkle of Liverpool players in that team. Robertson, another one of the Trailblazers. I think it's safe to say that Texas is quite a fan of the Trailblazer promo. I think he's got three of them in his team. Yeah, I'd like to know how many players selected Robert Robertson. Was he one of the players, I believe, that was unique to Texas? He was, he was the only one. He was the only one that's used him. Yeah, that is, a, to me, it's a surprise selection, obviously, because you have to factor in the coins as well. Most players were used... Steele or Mendy. Speaking of that trailblazer item, here's Hansen Steele. 
Comes in that left strip dribble in to just try and weave her way around a gap or two. But as Richard said on the build-up, the only player to choose three players in his draft. And one of them is an icon. Eight million coin budget, remember, for those at home that are tuning in. You can get involved as well. Hashtag FC Pro. Any player in the game you can welcome into your team in an eight million coin budget. These players had to do that. And I think one thing that we can agree on, there's always going to be one big buy, isn't there? Mbappe is probably that player. Yeah, absolutely. I say most of the squads will, will look towards Mbappe, Ginola up front as well. I think those two would be the most expensive players in the squad. You try and get maybe two players and then spread the rest of the coins throughout the squad. Centurions, Kevin De Bruyne, just over a million coins he does cost. He features for Texas as well. Hansen again. You have to watch out for that. That's the angle there, just playing it to Hansen and trying to find the angle for the finesse. It'll be very, very key. Well, corner. Is there a flick on available? Does it mean it? Virgil van Dijk will score Texas' first goal of the season live on broadcast. He was unbeaten yesterday, 5-0 in the switch rounds. And if he can win this game and one more, he will be in the FC Pro Open amongst the 20 best players in the world. Well, he's utilised the player lock there with Van Dijk to bring him towards the near post, whipped in. And of course, a flick on to get it past the goalkeeper and give him the one goal lead. Just to pick your brain as well, right? 4 3 3, 4 variation. He locks in the draft as. But this role that Hansen's playing, completely on the opposite side of the pitch, but just seems to be uh, the strike partner. The killing Mbappe. Yeah, I believe Tex will be using a 4-3-2-1, a 4-4-2, a or a 4-2-3-1. He actually said to me earlier today, when well, he's trying to see out a game, I know it's not a bit early to do that right now, a 4-4-1-1. Basically a 4-4-2. Slight different variation there. JH7 looking for a way back in this time. Remember, nine minute halves this year. The games will be much longer. We'll be seeing more chances, more goals. What a save, Allison. It's a bit of fortune there. I thought the tackle from Tex was perfectly timed. Fell back to JH7, who wasn't able to take advantage. But already seen a goal from a corner on the opposite side of the pitch. Can JH7 respond in a similar fashion? Time, Virgil van Dijk on the defensive end, wins a free kick. Referee won't play on at all. Safe to say, Frankie Dion, probably the cheaper of the players in that team. But what does he offer you as a midfielder? For me, it's just, he's the ultimate box the box really, isn't he? For a, for a good price. For the price, absolutely. He offers incredible dribbling and passing in possession, of course. Defensively and physicality, you could argue there, there are better options, but for the price you'll get in the league, the links he offers, not just for the club, but the nation, league, nation link to Van Dijk. It doesn't surprise me that he's in a lot of squads. As we said, three other matches taking place in this group A. Nisa against Julian. And Tanini. Gabriel up against Young. And Levy David, the best defender. That came through those Swiss rounds. He takes on Klinger. Tex leads by a goal to nil. If you have just tuned in. Nearly a third of the match play. There's the player lot tease with a custom run for Mbappe who's got the legs on Van Dijk. Is there a cutback available for JH7? Kunde does well. Still the chances alive with Neymar. Kimi. Very much far forward. There's no step overs again. Back to Ginola off the post. And Tex just about survives. Thought he was going to pull the trigger there when he got the ball with Patea. So even try and use a, an elastical, reverse elastical with the space there with, in possession. But it managed to fail to you know, hit the post, which of course is unfortunate. But I think that angle and the way it was, was facing, you could argue that you wouldn't expect it to go in. I'll be honest, like, you'd be upset if it does hit the post, obviously. But it's not a, a shooting situation where I'd expect it to 100% find the back of the net. In past years of competition, right, when the games were over two legs and 
The matches and the halves were a lot shorter. There's suddenly a feeling you've just got to attack, attack, attack all the time. With this nine-minute half scenario, it must throw you off a little bit as a player. Yeah, I feel as if this is where coaches will come into to affect us. We see beautiful. Oh, oh one more pass that oh. no one saw, only texted. Oh, that's lovely, Brandon. It's outrageous from Tex there. The composure to look for the pass across goal. I thought he was going to opt for a shot, but you can see the ball roll inside play to Mbappe and basically an open goal to put it in to give him the two-goal lead and it's deserved. I don't even think he was looking for Mbappe on that pass as well. I think he was <laughs> yeah. looking for someone else. Yeah. I mean, look, the extra few million coins you may have needed to uh, pick up that trailblazer, Caroline Hansen, at the moment. It's been worth every single penny for Tex. 2-0. He leads against JH7. And at the moment, he might have had three different picks in his team, but they've all made sense. Here's Ter Hernandez. No fell on Mendy in the side for JH7. Finds Hansen on the opposite side, but that's just a normal gold item in game. This is brave from Tex, but this is what you can do, and this is how you've got to sort of feel your way to half time. Absolutely, as you said, we're used to having six minute halves. You'd probably say keeping the ball now in, in previous years would have been the goal too, as he's lost possession there. Kimi's managed to win it back for JH7. And that's why Van Dijk's in the team, just able just to shepherd out any attacker when shoulder to shoulder. He's almost a, a guarantee in at centre back, in my opinion, and, and that is exactly why. But we were mentioning about keeping possession. Or sort of just playing throughout the playing through the game with the nine minute halves, you kind of have to to understand that. I say opting for the last attack will be obviously a little bit later than than used to. But you actually get added time this year, don't you? Yeah. Before you didn't really get added time as much as it was one or two minutes, it just went by in yeah. seconds. Now it actually might last 15 or 20 seconds of real life time. Text just looks so sort of calm and collected in this first 45 minutes here. Looking for a fur before the break. Xiao Cancelo continues his run forward. Looking for more options to come around. Hansen back defending. Added time in now of one or two minutes. Just the one. Enough time for JH7 to get that ball forward. Overlap and an overload on the right-hand side of your screen. Mbappe's on offside now. Hakimi is on. Ginola and Mbappe all queuing up on the edge of the box, waiting for their time to maybe strike. That's a clever pass, just offside, I believe, for Ginola. It's half-time we go. Tex leads two goals to nil against JH7. And other than what? JH7 hitting the post yep. for Tex. It's, he's been able to manage most of the threats. Yeah, absolutely. I would say it's a, a game of very few chances so far in that first half, especially where you would... Uh, well, to me anyway, we haven't really seen... I'd love to see the stats there. And not a lot of possession for JH7, it would seem. I felt as if Tex had sort of dominated and controlled the tempo of the game. Well, let's have a look at the highlights from that first 45 or across the other games we're seeing. We're seeing Nissan against Julian. I mean, what a game that one is. Plenty more going in there. This is Levy De Vere. This is 14 minutes into the game by the looks of it. Levy, as we saw, leads by a goal to nil. Alexis, Alexa Patele scoring that one. Over to this matchup now, the Italian. He's 17 years of age. Up against Young. Young leads that one, two goals to one there. Remember, all these matches taking place at the exact same time. We'll do our best to give you the lowdown on them. Our featured matchup is Tex, though. So far, so good. I mean, look, I find it so impressive. I know it's Tex. I know it's a top-level player. But the players that don't have to go through the qualification, and we yeah. know what the qualification was like, we know how difficult it was, the ladders, the online qualifiers, and then to come into this LAN and still be so on it. 5-0, and difficult opponents on the way through. Yep, exactly. As you said, he's he's done it without really breaking a sweat, I'll be honest. He seems as if he's in cruise control in most of the games he's played. As I said, he's got the fear factor, despite it, 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 it's irrelevant of the scoreline as well. He could be losing by two. It's still a, you're still nervous against Tex because he can come back from any scoreline, especially if you're down by two. It's a huge mountain to climb against somebody that is incredibly defensive. And you can't afford to make mistakes like this, giving away possession. As Tex tries to play in behind. The height of Socrates doesn't get there. Well, I was speaking to Tex about Socrates because 
He is an interesting pick in the team. I said, have you used him before this, or is he, you know, did you pack him early in the year and you've sort of played with him in champs? He went, not really. I just, <laughs> yeah. I just chose him. I was like, I, I, I don't know how that selection process came about. Maybe Coach Zach Moore was was in that drafting process with him. But whatever he is offered, he has uh, certainly delivered on it. Same can be said about Kevin De Bruyne. The long passes is something that Texas. Really been enjoying from the Belgium Centurion. We've heard there's been other goals in other games. We'll bring it to you now. We saw the first goal in this game, Ryan. We'll see the second one as well. We've got a nice POV for you. This is Levy on the attack. It's a great start to the second oh. half. There's Ritavella. And that's Valverde. Ooh. Top corner there from Levy. You saw the player, player look fake there just to, to put a defender out of position, just to capitalise on the space in behind. Going to recycle it, Valverde on the Travella. That's a massive, massive goal for Levy. Could have been a dangerous pass into Neymar. I mean, it's, you look at your two midfielders normally. Look at every single draft you're going to see. Your two midfielders are normally there just to, to be workhorses, aren't they? Up and down, box-to-box -box midfielders. You look at the list of players there, De Jong, Bellingham, Valverde, Alexa Patelis in that list as well. But if it comes up at the right time, Ryan, there's a Travella to be had. Modric few players have been saying, I know Boris was a fan, that he can offer you that as well on the edge of the box. Yeah, absolutely. Just the, the options outside the box there to capitalise on shooting opportunities. You've got the, the green time finesse shots as well. Obviously, pro players are, are more than often, more often than not, going to be opting to, to time shoot their, their shots on the edge there. This could be a mistake. Do you know, look. Need to pull that one through. Big chance, needs a big goal. It's Van Dijk again, who's sort of like a secondary goalie at the back there. you see from this corner no players have actually been manually moved yet on the screen you can just see the blue curse there you go there's van dyke now trying to peel away from the other van dyke Ooh, wow he saw the idea but just couldn't really convert on it that's a big chance that's a very big chance you get the ball in the air there for van dyke uncontested a header at goal of course headers are manual so aiming it slightly on the outside of the post there i believe if that's on target I think we'd have seen the first goal for JH7 in this game. Well, other goals have gone in here. It's a goal back for Klinger, who left it late yesterday to qualify. It was Mbappe there, the typical step overs we're used to seeing. Goal back in that one. Makes it so much more exciting, Ryan, that these games are just one leg as well. Yeah. Extra I, time penalties. Yeah. Oh, we're going to see it all. Yeah, I keep forgetting that because I'm thinking maybe he's got the second leg to, to fall onto I, here, I but he doesn't. To, I keep wanting to say it. <laughs> yeah. I keep wanting to say, oh, there's a second. No, there isn't a second leg. Yep, it's this game and this game only. Approaching the last 30 minutes plus added time in this game. J7 has had a couple of opportunities this half. He hasn't capitalised on any of those. And obviously, as the clock ticks on, you're going to see Tex. Slowing the pace down, just forcing JH7 into mistakes, whether it's defensively or offensively. It's a great driven pass in. And Bappe could save Schmeichel. Tech scores again. He can pretty much kill the game there. But I think what we can both agree on, Ryan, here is that when you play against a Tex or a player that's at the top of their game, you're not going to get many chances. Yep. So the chances you do get, you have to be so sure you're going to put them away. Yeah, absolutely. You need to take, not just against Tex, but any opponent in this in this situation, you have to take all the chances that come your way. Easier said than done, but I would say the only, obviously the one that hit the post in the first half, but the header for me is one where you'd expect it to hit the back of the net. As long as it's on target there into the corner, it would have definitely resulted in a goal. Well, I'm just looking at the draft selections here. We're in a pause minute at the moment. No doubt custom tactics are being changed for either two players. But for JH7, I'm just looking along the, the bench selection he's got. Yep. Would Rai go? Dembele. I mean, Dembele's probably first in the queue, I mean, instead yeah. of Rodrigo. Do, they, do any of them feature late in the... I know it's early, it's very early. Yeah, it is the early. 70th minute or so, do they come on and just add a bit of pace? And I mean, if they do come on, who are they coming on for? Is it you take a centre midfielder off and you go all out for it? Or is it going to be a Neymar? Or a, I mean, you can't you can't take off Hansen, can you? Yeah, I don't believe so. I think Neymar would probably be the first offensive substitute if there was one. Rodrigo, uh, not really for me. Dembele as well, I don't really... Obviously, he's got the pace, he's got the dribbling. I don't trust him in front of goal whatsoever. And in these situations, <laughs> you can't, you're going to need someone reliable in front of goal. I believe he's got Musiala on the bench as well with the, the technical plus play style, controlled 
Sprint is very, very effective to create chances this year. Alfonso Davies as well, and to, um, instead of Theo, that well, could be an option. Well, that's the good thing about Texas bench as well. He has got fullback options there. Hakimi is an option to come on, which if he's trying to see out a game, I probably think he would look to do. That corner comes in, two hands on it from Schmeichel. And also, Lionel Messi finds his way onto the bench. I know it's only his, his gold item, so to speak, but regardless of it, it's Lionel Messi. Here's JH7 now. Alfonso Davies fresh off the bench, I believe. And Bappe, oh, oh he lost the code, but he went the wrong way. <laughs> Could have passed it. The pass was in here for an onrushing Dembele into the box, powering through. I thought the pass would have been the obvious choice, or even a reverse elastico, not a normal elastico there to put it straight in to Van Dyke. And we know how Van Dyke is. For those at home who use or I played against him, he's a nightmare. And this is a chance here, or a highlight, I should say, is Levy. Pushing towards the bye and a simple pass across goal there. And it's Ginola to make it three goals to one. Tillinga has a mountain to climb, 15 minutes to go to get two goals just to level the terms. We have just tuned in. Welcome to the FC Pro Open Global Qualifier. You're tuning in at the right time. We've only just kicked off the games here on Saturday of the competition. So many big names will be in action across the next two days. Nicholas in action later today, Tex in action now. There's a Group C that you have to watch tomorrow with the likes of Anders Vergang, Umit. Emre Yilmaz, all in that same difficult group. Here's a chance for Tex to put the game to bed. Oh. Oh. That was nearly a very clever finish from Mbappe. I think that was a flare shot. Maybe he tried to go for Trevella in at the near post, anticipating the goalkeeper movement that didn't come. We're seeing another corner here, Van Dijk in the box. He's going to get there as well. Oh, big save. Just about managed. He's had a couple of those now, hasn't he? It's just the case of... He's also got Van Dijk at the back, but can't always stop him. Yeah, that's a, a Zach Moore trade at Mark Corner. He loves his set pieces, whether it's a free kick or a corner, he knows what he's doing. And there's been a number of chances down from that this game. And it's around 20 minutes left to go. As we say, normal situation in previous years, 20 minutes isn't the longest, but in this, game, in this stage, there's enough time. We saw yesterday Tuga giving up four goals in the last 15 minutes game time. So there's still time for JH7 to maybe get a goal back into it. Or for Tex to get the, the third and potentially put a nail in the coffin. And that's the beauty of these longer games. There is time to come back. Maybe not if you're 3-0 down though. Cut back. Finds. Oh, what a, a save. save. Oh, it's an easy <laughs> tap in. <laughs> for Hansen though at the back post. So a little slight, a little sigh there from Tex. He moves a step closer to solidifying his spot into the next round of the winner's bracket. Fantastic save there, to be honest, from Schmeichel there to prevent it going in initially. But Tex makes the most of that chance again, and he's up three goals to nil against JH7. Barely. Well, there isn't a lot of time. You can see JH7 relaying some of the thoughts from his coach behind him there. It's going to be a massive, massive hill to climb. He has to go for it now. He has to. He has to go for it, but let's also keep in mind here, this isn't the end of the tournament. Of course not, yeah. You get a second chance. This is the beauty of this knockout stage. You win two, you qualify. You lose two, you are out, and you're looking to prowl a league partner to basically come and help you if you're looking to come back into this World Championship fold next year. We've got scores on the doors in some of our other games, by the way. There is some crazy... Crazy <laughs> score lines. We've got nine goals in one game, we've got eight in another, we've got five in another one. We've heard that there's been another goal in Levy against Klinger. We'll give you the latest on that when we can. We'll give it to you right now, in fact. It was Levy who has added another one onto the tally rider. One more pass, finds the ball into Neymar. Thank you very much. It looks like Levy will be going on through. Keep in mind, Levy and Tex are on opposite sides of the bracket. They will not play today. Changes made. One of those being Lorenzo. <laughs> I mean, look, it's 76 minutes into the game, right? Yeah. Van Dyke's still just doing what he needs to do. He's honest. Oh, hold on a minute. Rushed from J7. I feel as if maybe he's, he's in his own head a little bit, lacking the composure in the final third. Tech sweeps up. Look at the space here. It's going to be played in behind. It's going to be Neymar. Kill the game. Can kill the game right now. Neymar, does he need a one more pass? Oh, I mean, Hansen. <laughs> Easy as you like. The most expensive player in that team. 
One of the big buys of every single penny. I mean, look, Tex, welcome to FC Pro. Welcome to a new season of competitive gaming. And look at look at that performance. He's one win away from booking his seat in the FC Pro Open. He'll be playing the winner of Nisa or Julian in a qualification game. I've just looked to the side of my screen there. That game's 4-4 at the moment, Nisa against Julian, and it's looking closer to getting towards extra time. There's been a goal over here, Ryan. We saw Levy 4-1 up. Klinger has scored. We know Klinger likes a late comeback, but... 4-2, three minutes left to play. It's a brilliant goal by the way from Ginola. Great step over to the, find the exit into the finish. I think there's not enough time in that game. Yeah, I believe he's left it slightly too late. Heard a roar across the arena as well. I'm excited to see where that goal has come. Oh, my God. You have just... There has just been some <laughs> mental goals. We'll give you the latest on them as soon as we can, Tex. Still cruising, 4 0 up, looking for goal number five. And he just teases oh. with the defence. <laughs> Neymar, stop it. Back to Trent Alexander Arnold, who's actually come onto the pitch here. Oh, my goodness. Well, 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 well. Goals have gone in. Big goals have gone in, Tex loses possession, chance to come forward now. Antonini, Gabriel, 5-4 down, at a time of three minutes, this guy, 17 years of age, first offline event, part of this new ecosystem, is taking us into extra time, Jude Bellingham making it 5-5 over there. That's a massive goal there, utilising the, the effectiveness of going towards the byline, a simple cutback for Jude Bellingham to find the back of the net, perfect time for him to get a goal. I believe that would have been the last attack. And he's leveled it into extra time in that game. Well, good news, Ryan. We're going to extra time in our first game today, which, yeah. is, uh, which is nice. Can confirm full-time result as well. Levy winning four goals to two against Klinger. Levy De Veer now one win away from the FC Pro Open. Tex will be one win away as well. They're both on opposite sides of the bracket, so they will not face again in this tournament. They did play in the Swiss rounds. Chance to play out, but... Do you look any further than a, a top-class professional performance than this one, Ryan? He's shown his dominance, in my opinion, in this game. And I feel as if, as I said, there were a couple chances for JH7, but for me, it was a, a dominant display from Tex as he advances into the next stage of the winner's bracket. One more win to make it into the FC Pro Open. He'll be playing up against the winner of Nisa or Julian. There we go, full-time result, Tex. Went by four goals to nil. Against JH7 in a new jersey this year, part of that Man City Esports group. Performances like that. They'll say, yes, please, keep it coming. Still unbeaten, 5-0 in the Swiss rounds, 4-0 win. Massive result for him there. And I believe we're going to get to speak to him right now. FG, how is he feeling? What a result. Well, what a result, what a performance. Um, starting the year off with a bang. Yeah, man, you know what? I learned a lot about myself in the, in the World Cup last year, man. I went into that knockout game and I bottled it. I was so scared. So this year I thought, you know what? Let's just go for it, not be scared of anyone. And we come for everyone. And uh, yeah, yesterday was a good day. And I managed to like, follow it through to, to this game, but now I've got one more game. Yesterday was a sensational day for you. You obviously got your automatic qualification here. How do you do it, Tex? Like, how do you raise your game so, so much at the start? I mean, f like, perfect yesterday and also perfect so far today. What it is, this year, it's the best I've been since FIFA 20. FIFA 21, I didn't really play. Uh, FIFA 22, I was, like, top five. FIFA 23, I was, like, top five. FC 24, I'm really good at this game, so I just need to keep playing well, keep playing well, keep playing well. And, uh, yeah, just play every day, man. Just be a sweat, be a geek, and hopefully I can win. Well, congratulations, you're halfway there. I noticed you didn't have headphones on, by the way, so you could hear the two men we're going to throw back to, and that's Brandon and Ryan, so let's head over there now. Thank you very much, FG Tex. Feeling and looking confident. Saying it's the best game play he's been playing for quite a long time. We'll talk more on that in a second, Ryan, because we've got extra time to jump into. 5-5, Antonini Gabriel scoring a 
Last minute equaliser with Jude Bellingham. Up against Young, someone who was involved in quite a few EA Sports tournaments involved in the EA Sports Cup last year. Representing Atlanta United, playing alongside Paolo Neto. And had quite a successful run of tournaments in South America. No surprise he's been able to remain in the conversation on FC Pro. 5-5 run. So game's going to have more than 10 goals. We've already seen it over here. Yeah, we already spoke about some of the, the draft options or the squad selections that we saw in the JH7 text game. Here's a player I haven't seen after I speak about Bappe. After this attack. It could be in. Oh, and Bappe! Massive goal! Antonini Gabriel with Echo Esports. What a debut he's having on land. It's just that little pace boost that Mbappe's going to give you. That's why he's the cert in pretty much every single draft you're going to see. But as you were saying about the drafts, Ryan, I'm just looking at them now myself. Yeah, I believe that goal there, the goalkeeper movement sort of made up Antonini's mind there to go near post. Of course, Young anticipating a shot across goal there, but I was missing a, a choice there of Marquinhos, Trailblazer in at centre-back. I haven't seen him utilised at all. I, I'd love to see the percentage of, of usage of him throughout a lot of the squads that were not just used today, or will be used today, but from yesterday as well. And you can understand what a player and why Trailblazer Jude Bellingham also features in this team. Can he find one more? Rafael Leo, lovely step Ooh. over. Saved by the knees of Thibaut Courtois, who's in the goal for Young. I mean, I look across the board here, it's Alisson, 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 Peter Schmeichel, Alisson, 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 Courtois. That post could be available, Ginola. Can he find it's the in, run of Liao? Yes, he can. <laughs> and it's the super sub that's on the pitch for both teams. This game just seems wide open, whether that's based on the, the stamina of a lot of the players that, of course, were on the pitch for the majority, but the super sub seems to be making the difference in this game here. Liao off the bench to equalise for Young. 6-6, six, six, Brandon, 12 goals, we've seen... We've seen goals, Ryan. Yeah. Lots of them. Remember, this is only round one of Group A. Half time and extra time, 15 more minutes still to come. I mean, you dated back, Ryan, I don't know how many years I need to date back, your debut tournaments Long time I remember in, uh, in 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 Germany actually in fact in Munich I think it's me and Richard Buckley's first event as well for, for for quite some time that feeling playing on LAN first time at LAN first time in all honesty playing a competitive game that's not in his house yeah explain those feelings I think the big thing is just getting used to having cameras on you obviously playing from the luxury of your own bedroom or wherever you compete from um, if you're a first timer, you, you're obviously used to just, you're at peace, you're on your own, maybe you're on the headset with a couple of your friends at home, or you're listening to something, whether it's music or a stream or whatever it is. When you're at an event, you have cameras all over, you have people walking behind you, camera crew, you have, you can hear us speaking about your own gameplay. Yeah, you're in and amongst, sitting opposite of the player you're playing against. So there's different variables to consider, but a lot of players take it in their stride, they're able to deal with the pressure and it doesn't affect them at all. And I feel as if, Anthony is proving that not just today, obviously this game he's done well to come back into, but to get to this stage as well is a massive accomplishment because he wasn't given a, a spot, he wasn't one of the 12. He had to go through the ladder to get into the Swiss online, to get into the knockouts and progress further, to qualify for today, or for yesterday in fact, and then get through yesterday's Swiss. It's a, it's a whole procedure to get to this stage. I mean, it's been a record-breaking launch, I'm sure. What, 50,000 people signed up were, were in that first qualification. Battled it round to make 64 to get here to London. Now we've been in our last 32. Just while we've got a second as well, some full-time results for you. Nisa beat Julian of VFL Bukum five goals to four. Nisa, one of the only free agents that's in the knockout stages. That's Nisa against Tex in a game to qualify for the FC Pro Open. And the winner of this game will play Levy. With the same outcome awaiting one of those players. 
chance to book a ticket across November, December, January into February of the, the FC Pro Open. A weekly 20 player league. Chance to book your ticket to the World Championships as well. Back on the way. Here's Antonini Gabriel kicking from right to left. In what looks to be the Galatasaray strip. Alison brave there. See Morgan brought on off the bench as well. Incredible finishing in the area and outside of it as well with the finesse. Going to be a foul there as Antonini Gabriel tried to break through the defensive line of Young there. Davies, back to Liao. Chance for Rodman off the pitch, off the... And one more pass to Mbappe. There's Morgan. Mbappe with a lot ball. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow! And it is Rodman! The super sum of dreams! It was such a simple corner, but by God, that cross just had such a whip to it. So much space to the back post. And if there's one way to send yourself into a, a knockout match against Levy De Vier, how about that one? It's a magical finish there from the corner. Corners this year, very effective, whether you take it direct. We saw earlier with Tex and J7 Crick, a lot of opportunities from just whipping it in. You can play it short and go for the back post. You can play it to the edge and try and find your way in. There's a lot of ways to score from corners this year. And that is one of them. Anthony takes the lead. Now, eight minutes to go for Young to equalise and potentially send this to penalties. He's going to have to go for it. Here's chance. Leal, one more pass to Nola. Surely a massive save, Alisson. Whipped in towards that back post. Cleared away. I was speaking to a hand from the pros yesterday. They said, what, you know, if you're looking for a player under 50k, Rafael Leo just fits that price tag. Mbappe. Long ball forward. Oh, he's got the legs. Past Alfonso Davies. Conclude the game. Of a massive save. That's two chances from... One each from I do these plays. Could have found the back of the net. So he played short again. He's looking for the back post. He's not. He's going to go towards the byline. It's going to be Morgan. Morgan. Trying to clear that one away. Last moments. Young needs a goal here. He's going to have to push forward. He's going to be playing it. And Mbappe's in. Mbappe's in. He's not. He's played the pass out wide. It's a rente in possession for Young here. Bellingham didn't show for the pass. Just got a game managed now. Game managed. There's open space to run into here. This is where discipline Doesn't comes in. Doesn't need to score. Doesn't need to score again. Wins the ball back nicely, Young. Looking to bring us more emotion and drama. Mbappe, three players around him. Is there an all-going run? He's oh, in. he is. Has he got the pace? Liao keep his teeth on oh. A massive tackle from Bellingham, who was the is. player that scored the equaliser. To send us oh into goodness. extra time, ball changes again. One more pass. Oh, oh, we're, off. <laughs> we're off to penalties. That's a pop. Oh my goodness. Oh no, I feel, I, I feel so bad. I feel sick. I feel sick for him. I thought if he'd done perfectly that slight tackle, but that is a huge goal there. What a time to find an equaliser. Last kick of the game to the send RB. it into penalties. <laughs> wow. Of all players. When the coins are running out in the draft, you just need players that are going to offer your pace late into the game. 7-7, seven, seven, penalty shootout Ooh. to find out who is going to be playing Levy in their biggest match of the season. Up steps Antonini first, he misses, and a chance for Young to go one from one. Ginola steps up, does score. It's going to be Antonini again. Can he get his first goal on the board there from the penalties? It's going to be Morgan. He's gone down the middle again in response. He's got his first goal here. We need a response from Young to make it 2-1. It's going to be a back pay, bottom left corner. Perfect pen so far for the South American. Rodman, who was the hero of the seventh goal, does score. Needs a save. Chance for Young to go perfectly. Does. Three from three. It's going to be Hakimi for Antonini. He needs this. He's gone top left corner. That's his third 
on the board. It's going to be Young to make it in his favour again. It's going to be Liao, and it's going to be saved. Oh, wow. These two just love going right to the wire, don't they? Rafael Leo. Chance now. Must score for Young. Has to score. Or we go to sudden death. Virgil van Dijk for Young steps up. And we continue. Antonini here with Van Dijk. Can he respond? He's gone top right. Great penalty. Has to score to match us up, Young. Eddie Militao with through the centre backs now. For Young to step up, he Ooh. does score. We continue. It's going to be Jude Bellingham here for Antonini. Which way is he going to go? He's going to go top right again. And he finds the back of the net. Pressure back on the South American now. Davies. Which way will he go? Saved! Antonini Gabriel! The new name in town, the new name in London. One win away from booking his spot in the FC Pro Open. What a game of FC 24 that is. A taster of what's to come this year. 7-7. Seven, seven. Extra time, penalties needed. At one point, I thought the goalies were going to get involved. <laughs> yeah, penalties this year as well with the, the way they've changed, the way you, the mechanics of saving it. I felt as if that penalty shot could have gone on a little bit longer. They've done well to save as many as they did. And that is a huge, huge moment for the young man. Antonini gets the win there on penalties. A massive, massive. It was only round one. I'm still <laughs> yeah. five more rounds. Right, well, let's try and give you the lowdown of what on earth happened in Group A in round one. We can tell you the basics. Tex won 4-0. He didn't concede. Levy won his game, as we saw as well. Four goals to two. Klinger finds himself down in the lower side of the bracket now. Levy looking very comfortable there. Also, JH7 has got a job on his hands as well. That was one side, as we said, of the story in this group. The other side, we saw Julian Schaefer and Nisa. And then that man there, who was roaring, and they were both roaring at each other. 14 goals. I mean, highlight of my round for that one, Ryan, I have to say. Penalties? First taste of FC Pro this year. I'm all about the penalties. I'm all about the extra time. What about you? I like last minute winners. I know we didn't really see a winner in that case. It was an equalizer, but I'm all for that. I like the celebrations, the outpouring of emotion. Yeah, it's great to see. And the love of the draft as well. Those new super subs coming in yep. and making such a difference. That's the first round done. We're off to, uh, to try and recover. Frankie, it's over to you for now. My face hasn't quite recovered from some of those final moments. I was just in a permanent all face. But let's confirm those final scores from round one. Tex 4, F95, JH7, nil. Nisat 5, Julian 4, which means Nisat will be facing off against Tex next. Antonini Gabriel was seven on penalties because Young unfortunately missed that final sudden death shot. It was 7-7 seven, seven when they went into that final moment. Klinger was two goals to Levy de Verd, four goals. So those two big names have got themselves safely into a match where if they win, they have qualified for our Monday night stages. Right now, though, let's head over to our um, analysis corner with Boris Legend and Richard Buckley to talk about some of the big moments in those matches. Thank you very much, Frankie. Yeah, I mean, an incredible first set of games, Boris, it has to be said. I've actually got the chat open right now, and I can see all 280,000 of you typing away. Let me know what you think. I'll give you a little bit of input. Socrates is in the team, Fortex. On a few database websites, he's up nearly 120,000 coins on the live market right now. He peaked at 800k. Crazy. Before this tournament, it was like 350,000. That just goes to show the impact that the draft can have. Let's break it down, because we'll, what we've got for you, two clips. Texas second goal, Boras. Yes. You're really impressed with how he sort of created this chance. Let's roll it on. Yeah. So from here, maybe not so much happening, not so many options, but the pass here is a big key. And the step over, as we see we'll here, step over is coming. Yeah. Can see? And we have your Hans and Trailblazers quite isolated, not so many options perhaps. So then, of course, the option that is left is you have to scale. There's four players there. Yeah, four players, there's no one that is nearby. So what yeah. happens? We'll go at half speed, because this is brilliant. It really yeah, is. It's amazing. And one of the best skill moves this year, the step overs. Oh. Just like this. It is smooth, ball roll, big key, opens up this angle, and the composure is perfect. It is so clean. It really is. It's and text. Not only Prime text. 
Prime text, prime text. Not only offensively can text do it, but defensively we saw it, and that's what we wanted to show in the next clip because you might not have seen this, but behind the scenes, you're going crazy with happiness when you saw this defensive play from Tex because it comes from a mistake from him originally. A mistake, yes. Uh, the switch is lacking power here, so... We'll play it on, because, because here. it is De Bruyne, yeah. Yeah, the switch is not the best. And there we have the chance for uh, JH here. And nice, again, the key step overs. Uh, he goes for the cutback, which is this here, a big, uh, so just a big weapon. There. Yeah, you can see that. He has here Killian, good chance, and... Um, well, Tech's defense here is not marking this threat. So then, what you have to do, of course, is you, you must switch fast manually. He could does this not, switch here. Could you have not drove further in, JH7? Is that, am I just being a noob? Maybe, yes, but at the same time, he has here Kundia that is, yeah, probably gonna take the ball back. So I think this was the right choice here, good pass. But then, the that's key, gotta be the player. Yeah, that's good pass. Cutback is this year Let's dangerous. See it. But the switch here, there we have it, switch. And the block is perfect, but without the switch, probably that would have been 2-1. And the attack didn't end there because we see a corner coming in and I noticed this straight away. We'll just stop it right. We'll just go on very, very slowly, please. Yeah, there. play a lot corners, yeah. Play looks, and you're so. gonna aim for Van Dijk, big man. Uh, he has the uh, play styles, he has aerial plus. Uh, and Tex here is marking near post. But here we see JH with a clever run. He, he fakes it, goes first inside and then goes back now. You can see here, cuts back, corner comes, he is wide open, and this and a mismatch right yeah, here. This is quite a mismatch. Van Dijk. Yeah. And you see that he is, he's almost flying. He's, he's, he's floating. <laughs> look at this. Just look how, look how tall yeah, he is. Crazy. But then uh, the headers are manual. Is it a mistake? I mean, it is so fine margins. You must aim. Is it exactly. a mistake? The header yes. could have been done better. Could have been done better. Yeah. I just wanted you to say it. That was all. Um, incredible stuff, it's got to be said. Tex made it look pretty comfortable in the end, but as we've highlighted, there was a big chance there for JH7. 56 minutes on the clock to get back into the game. Yeah, that was a key chance, but I mean, just look at Tex's defense. All right, so the game's now even longer. You have uh, 9 x 2, that is 18 minutes in game. Clean sheet, 18 minutes. Uh, that is impressive. I just want to draw their attention to the draft. Let's walk on over, Boras, walk on over. Because there's one thing in particular that I noticed with Socrates in the team. He's gone for the Centurion's version of Kevin De Bruyne. Long ball. His yeah. passing is exquisite, 95 passing. Yeah, is this a link up, the tall sort of skiller in Socrates to the brilliant passing of De Bruyne? You can get yourself out of danger, you can go long, you can look for a header potentially. I saw a few scored yesterday in Swiss. Yeah, but I think mainly what is the key here is the faster weak foot. All right, so both here, they have faster weak foot and the passing could be sprayed from both feet. Uh, and this year's one of the biggest tools is the driven pass. Yeah. But you need them to have, of course, as well, good weak foot. Could be done both from left and right side. Uh, but yeah, this midfield, I think we're not going to see so much today, especially Socrates, I think. Rare choice, but he did great. Uh, and the midfield is... I mean, the, the balance is quite defensive, but looking at uh, these here, these games, it's going to be plenty of nerves, and you need them to prioritise defence, so I think Tex here did right. Well, there you have it. That's the breakdown from, I'm going to call it the BBB, the Buckley and Boris breakdown board. Is it going to stick? Probably not. Maybe. Uh, let's head back on over to Frankie, who's got a very special guest over in the host position. I do, it's FG, and also we've got Mark 11, but we're gonna update you guys on the bracket before we chat to these two cheeky so-and-sos. So as you can see, Tex is gonna be facing off against Nisa, and the winner of that is gonna book their place in the Monday night shows. And then we also have that incredible new player, Antonini Gabriel, he's going to be facing off against Levy. And I think that might be a bit more of a tougher challenge on his hands. In the lower bracket, Young is going to be facing off against Klinger. And we are going to have JH7 facing off against Julian. So that is definitely going to be something epic. And obviously, we're going to be bringing you all the action that we can shortly over in the casting booth with Brian. And if you don't know who I'm referring to by Brian, just watch the stream again. It's fine. Someone in Twitch out will update you. Right now, though, I want to get an update on what's been going on with you, Mark 11. 
What's up? I'm just watching here, watching everyone play, and I just want to play. Like, I've been waiting for so long, I just want to play the game, really. I totally understand that. Yesterday, though, we were talking about you spending some time in the UK. You're going to be playing in Group A, so you will get to play very soon, November 27th. Uh, but I know that you want to go and see some Man City games, and I think that this man can hook you up. <laughs> oh, we could get that arranged. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Do you have a sofa, though? Because he was complaining about the train times. He was using it as an excuse <laughs> not to go north. I was like, mate, it's a two and a half half hour train from Houston and then FG looks like a guy who's got a plush couch. Look right I've got an extra seat in my setup okay. where you can teach me how to play <laughs> FC24. Um, you're not playing because you're here on merit. Mm -hmm. How's it been? You watched much of the, the Swiss yesterday? I've been watching. I've, I've picked up a few things you know I'm trying to implement my game but it's pretty hard when you're not playing as much but I will learn a few things from the pros and hopefully I can put it into my own game too. And let's talk about Footwiz as well. Um, a great organisation. Dare I say it, Jordan Denman, <laughs> a man who's um, who's a very, very good FC player actually. Has he been giving you some tips? Of course. He was in the back of my ear telling me a few tips. Like He always yells at me like, oh, no, I'm joking. He's a good coach. I love him. He's a great guy. And obviously, of course, games are coming up. You're watching people. You've just seen the text performance. Uh -huh. What did you make of that first round of matches? I think Tex was the favourite the whole time. I think he was going to win, but it was a good performance. It was like, what, 3-4 nil, so impressive from him. Should we take a look at some of the highlights sure. from that first round of Group A? Because why not? Because there were so many goals. I mean, Tex, cool as a cucumber, didn't concede a single one FG. Not at all. And you know what? I'll pass this over to you. You might come for a Ryan Pessoa. Pessoa's <laughs> job, actually. Talk us through this. What do you think about the play from Tex? This was this was obviously the, the Nissan Julian game, um, enthralling game of FC 24. It was. And Nissan's one of the best attackers in the world. Like the way the step over skill moves, I've never seen a better player. Like he's very good at attacking. And if he keeps doing that, he'll easily qualify. But he's got a hard game against Tex right now. So he's still got to lose the bracket if he loses. But I, I believe he can easily get a win or, worst case, lose the bracket. It's really important to note, note as well that it's all is not lost to the guys who lost the first round of matches. How important is that for a pro to, to stay in that mentality that it's game by game? For sure. First game, you've, all, you've got two chances, really. If you lose the first game, obviously it's not the best feeling to be in, but you have another chance, really. Lose the bracket, if you know most about EAFC, we see a lot of people lose the bracket, they always come back and win, so it's very possible for sure. Mark. I know you've got to spend a few weeks in London. I literally actually took a picture when I was at the Tube today. There is a play, and I know you don't want to go to the theatre because you're 19 years old, but it's about football. OK, OK, I'll think about it, I'll think about okay, it. Good, because he's just literally like, I just want to play FC and go to watch a Man City or a Liverpool game, but I also don't want to get on the train and have to book, uh, like, you know, a budget hotel. Exactly, but yeah. Honestly, I feel like new ventures. You're one of the best players in the world, mate. You've got to, you know, broaden your horizons. I'm going to work you, on that you. with you, because we're going to hopefully spend some time together <laughs> during the first Monday night show on November 27th. But for now, thank you so much for joining us. Um, but do stick around, because we might pull you back on. Thank, thank you, you so much. Um, and you, FG, we'll send you back down to the sidelines. But right now, I've got some good news for you guys watching the stream because you, my friends, are eligible to receive some in-game rewards by engaging with us throughout the season. By watching the FC Pro qualifiers, you are eligible to receive 400 XP, a prime gold players pack and a premium gold pack if you win four games using an FC Pro kit. For more information, go to www.eafcpro.com. We have got to head to a break because we have got a winner to crown. Someone shortly is going to be at this desk with Mr. FG himself picking out one of those all-important purple balls and finding out if he's going to be facing off against Mark 11 in Group A. So please do not go anywhere because the action is going to continue in just a few moments.
welcome back to the FC Pro Open Global Qualifier, coming to you live from London. I'm Frankie Ward, and after that opening round one of Group A, I am excited. But let's take a look at the bracket, because of course, the tension is higher than ever. Move aside, Swiss, because we're about to say goodbye to some players who have fought so hard to be here. We're going to be seeing also some champions crowns. And guys, I say champions, they're getting through to the Monday night. So Tex is going to be facing off against Niza. Unbelievably, an August player. We're going to see young player Anthony Di Gabriel facing off against old hat at this game, Levy. And then we'll also be showing, hopefully, highlights from our lower bracket as well. We're going to have JH7 versus Julian and Young versus Klinger. But before we actually get into the action, we should talk about the items that we're going to be seeing played out on the pitch. So to talk us through some of those all important drafts, we are, of course, heading over to Boris Legends and Richard Buckley. Thank you very much, Frankie. Yes, as always, before every game, we're going to break down what is being used and how that eight million coin budget has been spent on the draft. We've seen two so far. We've got two very different teams coming up, it's got to be said. Antonini has got a couple of very interesting picks in his team. I got flamed in the Twitch chat for using Gold Dembele. Antonini's got him in his team, so I can't be that far off the mark. This player right here as well, Marquinhos. Only three Marquinhos. out of the 64 players who came used that version of Marquinhos uh, Boras. What do you think, Satin? Well, I think overall, of course, these teams are nice. It's a, it's a high budget, so you're going to have every team will be powerful. I think also chemistry might be without manager, so because looking at this team, it should, should be, be full probably full chemistry with manager. Uh, we also we see a Trailblazer Bellingham. Uh, he has also changed playstyle to Technical Plus, which I think is a top five playstyle. Um, otherwise, it's quite standard, isn't it? A lot of pace off the bench as well. We saw Rafael Liao come on and make an impact. Alex Morgan with a finesse shot plus. Out of 10, what are you giving that? Let me know in the chat as well. I can see the chat. Out of 10, Out of what 10. are you going to rate that team? Uh, probably, well, I say, in my opinion, midfield is not optimal. Uh, Frankie and Bellingham is a, quite the same type of player. Um, so I give this 8.8. 8.8. It's good. It's good still. It's good. Not great. Levy, let's have a look at the other team very quickly. Um, we'll get through that very, very shortly indeed. I know the guys are ready and raring to play. Pretty similar team, it's got to be said. We're going with Edmil Atal and Van Dijk at the back. Patelez, Bellingham in the midfield. That partnership up top, you're going to see it a lot. I think Tex yeah. didn't use Ginola. Um, went with the uh, Hansen variation as well, but it just is so, so good. 94% of people who played this weekend picked Mbappe in the, top, in the squad. Yeah, he makes a difference. He is uh, the X factor. Also, we see Neymar, which I did not expect in many teams because of the chemistry. He now plays in Saudi leagues. So could be a bit difficult with the links. Uh, he, I think Levy here, doesn't care much about chemistry, doesn't believe in chemistry. Uh, perhaps 24 chemistry with manager might be like 27, 28. Uh, midfield, I like more. Puteas here with, with the 5-5. Five -five. Valverde, Valverde uh, big piece. And this year he's so, so powerful, 3-4. He surprised you so much. Valverde still in the current market, over 200K. Quickly yeah. before we get into the game. Because of the links, uh, the pace, I think, mainly pace. People pay, pay for the pace and he has, is it 88? Yeah, so. Hashtag pay for pace. Yeah. There you have it from myself and Boras. They're the two drafts that you're about to see battling out for an FC Pro spot. Over to our casters, Brandon and Wright. Thank you, Richard. Yes, I mean, look, we saw those drafts and we got to see them briefly in round one, didn't we, Ryan? Because one player was involved in a 7-7 thriller that went to penalties. <laughs> Extra time, we had it all in our first round of action here at the FC Pro Open Global Qualifier in London. 17 years of age, he's making a name for himself already, this guy, Antonini Gabriel. However, the best defender in this tournament and through the Swiss rounds, only conceding eight goals in total. Levy De Veerd, an online champion, a back-to-back -back European champion, something we haven't seen before. I can hear the clock ticking because I think we're near enough ready to get this game underway. Ports coming into this one. Whoever wins will book a spot back here two weeks' time in the FC Pro Open in London, a 20-player league. Um, and we can't wait to get this underway. It's a big game. Obviously, we know what's at stake. You've already mentioned it, but 
Levy is one of the juggernauts in the scene, in my opinion. He's one of the staple names that you associate with latter stage finishes in tournaments. He's still very young. I think it goes, I want to say under the radar, but people forget how young he is because he's been around since he was um, able to compete. And of course, Antonini aged just 17, encased in that, was it 7-7 seven, seven thriller? We saw winning on penalties there against Young. But Levy, I believe he's ready, raring to go. We saw earlier on FG speaking to him behind the scenes. Threw him with confidence. He's calm and composed. That's something that a lot of players do lack. I would say a lot of people, even myself, you get under the occasion, under the lights, you're on the main stage, an, an all-important game, and you crumble because of the pressure. Levy's not like that at all. He's calm, he's composed, whether it's the first round or the final. He always seems relaxed. And there will be Antonini, Gabriel from left to right. Galatasaray strip, Levy David from right to left in that white strip for the first half here. Quick to, to get your thoughts on the draft of Levy. It, it sort of feels like the way he's set up as a chance, first chance comes in. So I've got three midfielders in the team, hasn't he? Three centre mids. Would, would you sacrifice maybe more of a winger for that? To have three midfielder I, options that can be more sort of box to box? I think for Levy, he plays the 4-3-2-1 the primarily. So having Mateus, who can operate as a, a right or a left centre midfielder, um, is very, very effective, especially because, as we said, Valverde is a, a useful option in midfield. The pace, the power, the physicality as well. He's able to offer a little bit more defensively than the likes of Patea. So if you opt for maybe another attacker to play in at right or left centre midfield, your, your defensive options are very, very weak and you're more susceptible to counter-attacks. And this is actually a, a counter-attack from Antonini. A great step there from Levy to, to stop it in his tracks there. Ginola. A little scoop turn away, here's Mbappe now, ball roll or two inside, went for the Traveller, could be defended well, it will be by Hakimi. Still in possession here with Levy, pushing towards the byline with Patea, going to try and step over. A ball roll scoop there, just twisting and turning. A step in there with a, maybe a rash tackle, it's going to be Jude, and it's going to be saved out for a corner. Levy utilising a lot of the controlled sprint in tight areas with Ginola with a technical plus play style. Very, very effective. And again with Neymar towards the byline, it's a great challenge there from Antonini with Van Dijk to stop it in his tracks. You just saw the pounds there, didn't you, of play that Levy will be looking for there. Oh, Able to recycle possession. And now, but more importantly, to have those shots from the edge of the box with those midfielder players that can get there. Keep in mind that two players from this round will qualify for the FC Pro Open. They will be joining those four players that came in the top four of last year's World Championships out in Saudi Arabia. You saw one of them speak to Frankie and FG. That's Mark off foot Wiz, Manny Bashaw, Obram and PHD are all in the building here in London. They'll be sitting waiting patiently to find out what 16 names will be joining them by the end of play tomorrow. How good of a feeling will that be though, Ryan, to just get it done? First two people in the sheet, in the hat. You, you confirm that you're coming back to London in two weeks to be part of a, a huge FC Pro Open tournament. Absolutely, and to do it in the winner's bracket, of course, just Libya, it's a lot of that pressure off your shoulders. You don't leave it to the last game. You get it done early. And it's a mistake there. Antonini well, could be in. I think he's on side. One more pass. Finds Hanson. Loads of time. Good save, Allison. He needed to make that save. Oh, my God, he did. Corner played short. Mbappe and Hanson linking up well. Back to Hanson again. Still the two of them. Making it look so easy and simple. Playing without any fear is... Antonini Gabriel. It's a long way still to go, a long way for qualification. It's a step in the right direction against one of the best defensive players we've seen here in London since yesterday. It's a massive statement goal. They could argue he deserved to score from capitalising, or not capitalising, I should say, on the mistake which led to the corner. But in front of goal, he makes it count this time and he takes the lead. One goal to the good for him. I just wanted to mention with Levy's approach going forward, you see very systematic, is very structured in, in the sense that he's just going to look for the switches of play until the space opens up. Player looks utilised as well. Oh, great clever ball. ball. In behind, Van Dijk gets there. Covered well. To put you on the spot, Edmund Minutau or Kunde? Kunde? Is that back up? Kunde for me, 100%. I, Edmund Minutau, I don't know what it is. I don't get along with him that much this year, but he's still a great option. Of course, his personal preference and it's a great play. Great right. triggered run there, Mbappe. Ball roll inside, Van Dijk proving his worth. Fantastic player lock there from 
Antonini says to move Mbappe into the lane there. Maybe he could have gone for a Bora into the finesse, but maybe he thought that would have been a little bit too obvious and Levy might have moved the goalkeeper to anticipate that. As you can see, look at the right back there in acres of space. The switch that time didn't make it. Actually done by Valverde. Keep in mind, he's already got a team of the week or two, hasn't he? Which, unfortunately, was a bit too expensive to fit into this 8 million coin draft budget. Great step there as well. Using the Marquinhos item that I spoke about being very unique with the Anticipate Plus play style. You can just stand tackle when the ball is glued to your feet when you, you go to retrieve possession. Another player lock fake there from Levy. Bellingham, Valverde, two Madridsters linking up perfectly well. Hakimi down the byline, fakes the player lock into Mbappe. It's great defending. I thought he was going to get baited by the player lock, but he held his ground with Marquinhos. Didn't move or commit too much whilst jockeying and defending and moved back and intercepted the pass. Also, I should say, made the tackle to, to prevent there being a goal. Well, we'll try and talk about this as much as we can, Ryan, as the next two days of the season unfolds. But new to this year, those play styles that changed the game for, for many players. We'll get your thoughts on that of what an important difference they make to the players. We've got three other games taking place now. Someone who's in a game and it's not looking good. If you're a Tex fan, you might want to look away. It's Nisa, the free agent that leads by a goal to nil. David Ginola putting him up a goal to the good. That's the first goal the Tex has conceded, believe it or not, since he kicked off play in the knockout stage after a convincing 4-0 win. He's got his hands full with a game against Nisa there, Ryan. Yep, he really does. If you see attack here, beautiful. Oh, Reverse the last goal, keeper comes out to prevent that being a goal from Levy there. Well worked. As you said, playing against somebody like Nisa, he's very, very, very good going forward. And he isn't afraid to keep possession when he needs to. But for Tex, again, there's a long period of time to go. So I wouldn't sweat too much. A great pass in there. It's going to be Hansen, but a last-ditch tackle from Van Dijk there to prevent Antonini going two goals up. All the games have kicked off in this round as well. Young against Klinger. That's an all-South America matchup between the two. They've probably travelled over together on the plane to London. Now they're playing in an elimination match between the two of them. One will actually be sending the other one home. And on the other side, it's actually the similar story. Two players from Europe. JH7 and Julia both representing German football clubs. One representing VfL Burku and the other one Fortuna Dusseldorf. That's an elimination game as well. Remember, winner of this and the winner of Texas game will qualify for the FC Pro Open. 20 players will play in the league two weeks today across the winter months. Huge opportunity with big prize pull on the line. Ginola, brilliant close control dribbling. Links in well with Hansen, De Jong, Mbappe all in the conversation, all looking to shift this ball, nice switch of play, finds Ferlon Mendy from Marquinhos. Antonini, dispossessed. Well, we've said about elimination games, this is an elimination game, right? Young was leading by a goal to nil, but Klinger! Finding his way back into the tie, clinging on to his hopes of staying in this FC Pro Open conversation. Back to this main game now, seven minutes away from half-time. So far, so good. Oh, what a ball that is. Done well to recover as Ferlon Mendy. Bellingham, must have switched a play. So much space, isn't there? If you can just get your left and your right back forward. Patient though is Levy, is he onside? Ginola isn't. And let's leave this game if we can. There's another goal in the all South American matchup. It was 1 1 for a split second. There's only been 15 minutes in this game, and it's gone the other way. Young, I mean, he's used to goal scoring affairs. He, he was in the 7 7. <laughs> top pins there from Modric to so put it into the top corner. Come making at a perfect time here. It's Levy in on goal with Mbappe. Last chance to buy line. Oh, oh, that's what he could do! Oh. Ooh. Levy. The lack of getting cancelled there around the goalkeeper, an open goal finish there. That's a beautiful use of the skill move. 
Because capitalised there. Great goal. You're waiting for a cutback, aren't you? Yeah. You're Be simply waiting for the ball to be passed for Mbappe, but that Lacroquetta just makes all the difference. I think Antonini dived in there, anticipating... I wouldn't even say anticipating, actually. I think he just lunged in with Van Dijk, I believe it was, and it, it didn't work out for him. It's a great goal there from Levy. Well, as this game comes to the closing stages in the first half, in our other qualification game, Tex has found a way back in. Do not panic if you're a Man City or Tex fan. Neymar bundled off the ball and he sort of just dives it into the back of the net. Not the most Neymar S finish you'll see, but Tex won't complain. He's back at 1 1 in that game. Last chance of the half in this one. Levy looking for a 2 1 scoreline. It's Ginola against Van Dijk. Delays well, finds Mbappe! Corner. We will play it still. The back post. There it goes. Oh, had a bit of towel. Nearly were coming in here. Right? Half time in that game. We'll take a breather for a split second. 1 1 there. There's more news in Texas game. Tex against Nisa. Remember, that's also a qualification game. Tex will strike twice in quick succession, and so will Neymar Jr. Kurgan, he's that is slightly unfortunate there, winning the ball back with, well, say, making the tackle and not winning the ball back. But Tex, he takes it. Two goals to one. They're still in the first half of that game, so there's a little way to go. You do feel for him a little bit there, didn't you? Went in for the ball once or twice there. Unfortunately, the rebound yeah. didn't go his way. But for Tex, after being 1-0 down against the goal-scoring machine that Nisa is, 2-1 up, he leads there. Remember, Tex or Nisa will make it to the FC Pro Open, and it will be Levy or uh, Antonini sorry, from his matchup on that side. Let's have a look at the goals that have gone in around the other games. This all Bundesliga matchup. Ginola putting Julian up by a goal to the good. These are the highlights from Nisa Tex. This was the goal that put Nisa in the lead after just 17 minutes. Mbappe, one of the one more pass into Ginola, and the rest was history there. Free agent, Ryan. He still, he still feels like he's got a lot to prove to wait for the right offer. Absolutely, and I feel as if he has the confidence. He's got two bats of the cherry to make it into the next stage or into the FC Pro Open. That was a goal there for Young against Klinger. Putting it into the top corner we saw earlier with Modric to give him the two goals to one lead. A massive goal in that game. Yeah, absolutely. As we said, we've got a quick break in play. One of you guys home to get involved in the conversation as well. Drop down in there. One player that would be your first player in your draft. First player on your team sheet. Who would yours be, Ryan? Would you be going for the big buy first? Would it be the Mbappe? Would it be the, the must-have? It's Mbappe for sure. With the 8 million draft or the, the budget available for the draft, I think Mbappe for me, I'm surprised he's not, it's not 100% selection and that it's 94%. Genuinely, I feel as if he's the, the cert in the team. Back on the way for this matchup between the two players. Remember the FC Pro Open Global Qualifiers brought to you by Sony PS5, the official presenting partner of FC Pro this season. Here's Levy now, he'll be kicking from left to right in this half in that wide strip. That's Patel, it's Bellingham. Valverde not afraid to go forward or float it to David Ginola, ball ricocheting and bouncing around. He's got quite a busy season at the moment, Levy David. Edevise just kicked off last week, does represent Ajax as well. In the partnered league. Big Ajax fan. Here's Ginola. Oh. Saved by Allison. Tasty little reverse elastico there, as always, causing problems. Move in the transition. Pulls that one away. 52 minutes in. Well, there's the goals in the elimination game, and I mean, there's goals, there's goals, there's actually quite a few goals. This game is in the first half, Ryan Pessoa. Young is winning 5 1. I don't think he's clinging on anymore, Klinger. He's actually 5-1 <laughs> down, and I mean, it's not looking great. I probably should stop trying.
trying to make a joke. Yeah, that's an awful joke. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the keeper could have saved that. He has, he's actually moved him the right way, and it's going to be a goal here. Antonini takes the lead again, Brandon. Just like that, luckily we joined back when we did. Antonini, Gabriel back in front, two goals to one. Continuing to pile on the pressure. 36 minutes in that game, six goals. I mean... There's time to get back into it, but there's also enough time to, to maybe concede a lot more. I think there's time, but I think the bigger the point is, Ryan, it's elimination game of FIFA. You know, you're looking at mentally the biggest of hurdles to try and pull yourself back into this tie. And I mean, look, mentally, four goals down. Yeah. He's come back from deficits, not as large as a 4-1. He was obviously down by three against Tuga and managed to come back. But this is it's tough because there's still what, 60 plus minutes left to go. But in this game, there's enough time for Levy to come back into it as well, but there's also enough time for Antonini, who's progressing forward. He's, he's played the pass. Hansen just offside there. Good time to give you an update in Texas game. We're hearing more goals have gone in. Nice out of Tex. Which way has it gone? It's gone the way of the Man City strip. Tex. Neymar hat trick. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what finish that is. It's not even facing the goal there. It's a great goal for Tex there, an important goal to give him the two goal cushion. Can we just talk about it as well for a second? Because there's obviously going to be people at home. Chemistry's changed this year in terms of maybe the importance in some ways. 33 chemistry is the max we can get, three on each player. Neymar's in this team, sometimes getting zero chemistry, or one, yeah. sometimes two. What difference does it actually make if you've got Neymar on one chem? For me, I'll be completely honest, I don't really notice any difference. That's just me personally. I don't notice too much of a difference. Obviously, the chemistry, so sort of based on how the uh, how effective the chemistry style bonus is for the player, and I don't really notice too much. I think Neymar's one of those players that, regardless, he just feels silky smooth in possession, and it's going to be a oh, that's silky first smooth, time right. over the top. Mbappe, ball roll round the goalie! He's edging closer and closer. Towards finding himself for the FC Pro Open. He said about Silky and Smooth, Ryan. I mean, look at that build-up play. Yeah, that's an old-school one there. I haven't seen that that much this year. Obviously, very prevalent last year and just playing those first-time LB triangles, well, one triangles over the top there. And of course, you trigger the run, you play it first time. If you don't track it, you're going to be punished. And that's exactly what Levy, well, exactly what's happened to him. Punished in that moment, a pause queued, of course, just under 30 minutes left to play. He's going to rely on himself and the coach to give him some sort of motivation to get back into it. Of course, Renzo over his shoulder for Team Hula. As we see the replay here, Mbappe was triggered a little bit earlier there. And of course, the onrushing goalkeeper, a simple ball roll past him, weak foot, green timed as well to make certain of the goal. You can often panic in that situation so often yeah. as well. I mean, look, I thought he was going to chip it, yes. especially with how good a chip shot can be if you've got the uh, the trait for it as well. But composure. Yeah, definitely composure. I personally wouldn't have chipped it. Maybe that's, that's why I mean, what is it, go free? Go, go. I mean, if, if that existed still, <laughs> Ryan, I'd, I'd, I'd love that. Uh, let's not speak about foot champions. Um, shouldn't you be playing there right now and not commentating uh, here? Here we go, here we go. I was waiting. It's taking you this. How long has it been on the screen? Well, there's it's been a goal. There's, there's been a goal in another game. We'll save that conversation. I'm sure we'll yeah. have enough of each other this year. 3 2. Nisa scores a goal. There's, what, 31 minutes in that game still. As we just look over to it on the side screen here. That game will finish after this one. Unless we go into extra time, of course. Antonini Gabriel, 3-1. Still in front against Levy. 25 minutes away from locking yourself in to the FC Pro Open. Unless Levy's got other ideas. Valverde teases that player a lot once and twice. Allison gets a leg on it. Uh, I don't know if he needed that, but that was a great initial player lock. The second one there maybe was a little bit too extra. Looking to conclude the game. Short of the game plan now for Antonini, Ryan. Take minutes out of the game as well. There's no need to go and get another goal. He can just slow the pace down again. He still has a little bit to go in this game. I don't think it's enough time 
or it's enough of a lead to, to say maybe shut up shop completely. He still has to maximise the opportunities if they fall his way. Look at this. Oh, I was gonna say, look at the space there for the left back. He's managed to find it into Alfonso when it's a dreadful pass out of play. And now Levy can try and build an attack here from the defensive side. This is another highlight. It's a ball over the top here. Fantastically brought down by Cancelo. Slightly fortunate. Oh, oh my God, I thought that was going to go it's, in. It's not over yet, right? The chance then continues. Ginola back to Neymar. I was thinking, why is Jao Cancelo going on his own? A little elastico is nice there from Neymar. Neymar still on his own. Oh, that's beautiful dribble. I mean, that is outrageous. I hope Richard and Boras are watching that because what a goal. Julian, that is fantastic. That one was coming at perfect big time. The Levy Allison two hands on it. That's 3 3 that game. That's an elimination game as well. Klinger has got a goal back. We won't go to that one. It's five goals to three. Only in the 48th minute. Well, we'll keep a close eye on that one. Two elimination games and two qualification games it's in front of us. Bench. Now, movement as oh, well. Red time. You're red time in that, Ryan. You're not in the target, are you? Yeah, no chance. Not in that situation there. But that's the reason why Son is brought on the pitch to find those angles. You'd argue it's very predictable. But again, if you're caught sleeping by not moving the goalkeeper there, you're going to get punished. Son's in behind. He's going to full roll. And it's great play. And Bappe turn. Even better finish. And there's plenty of time still. 14 minutes of it. For another goal. For Levy David. Plenty of time still to go. Only one goal behind. Updates across the other games. Texas matches in the 70th minute. Tex leads three goals to two against Nisa. He's 20 minutes away from qualification. For the FC Pro Open, J7 against Julian, 3-3 the scoreline there. That's a knockout game. Young against Klinger. Young leads five goals to three. 55 minutes on the clock in that one. This will be the first game that will finish. Unless we go to extra time, which at the moment could be very much a possibility with how Levy's going to look to play out these last 12 minutes. This new player got enough nerve to find his way over the line in his first offline land event. Referee eventually does give that. It's a free kick. Last 10 minutes. Davies. One more pass, Humming Song, timed it great. Rolfo off the bench. Back post, all the finesse. Does he need it? Van Dijk, not the man you want to shoot with there. Bappe, just full of... Little bit of towel, so many. Defenders just getting in possession here. It's going to be Alfonso, the triggered run here. Oh, Van Dijk! Oh. Of course it would be the Dutchman. Scoring for the Dutch Pro in a massive game. 3-3 three, three the scoreline. And I can tell you right there, it's not the only 3-3. Three, three. There was drama, drama, drama in this game. Penalty or not? Oh, that's a low rubbish. Come on. He's fallen, he's fallen over there and he's taken out. The attacker there and his knee sat for the penalty. Is he going to score to make it 3 3? His text goes the right way, but it's just under the goalkeeper there, approaching the last 10 minutes in that game. It's time for both of these players to get not just one, potentially even more goals or go into extra time. 10 minutes left in that one. We might be on for double extra time, and it's just a case of Ryan, who do you want to watch? I mean, can we, can we have them both? Levy. <laughs> yeah. Levy and Tex. Antonini and Nisa all involved in that conversation of qualification. This one will finish or go to extra time before that Tex Nisa game will. Lorenzo. This is where the Super Soft will play such a role. They did for him. Tanini in his first matchup that went all the way to extra time. He's been there before. 
Coming so. And as that one's intercepted, I'm hearing roars, I'm hearing emotion. There is big news over in Texas game against Nisa as soon as we can give it to you. It's gone the way of Nisa, the free agent, who is minutes away, not only from qualifying for the FC Pro Open, but qualifying without a team behind him. I mean, do they just want to get in a queue, all the, all the teams now? <laughs> what a comeback that is. I'm actually... I'm in shock, I'll be completely honest. There's still time, but wow, that is a, a massive, massive result if he's able to pull it off. There's still a little bit left in the game. Right, well, this one's going to go into extra time. Potentially, we might be able to see the ending. Could be a last attack, actually. From the text match after this one. Right, added time. It's level with the last chance of the game. Added time of two minutes. About 13 game seconds left to be played. Big switch of play, dispossessed. He's got to go forward now. Is he going to play? He can still go. He can go forward. Is he still going to play on? <gasps> Hansen no. from distance! No. Oh, off the bar! Still alive, back to Rafael Leo. Oh my oh, god. Pass. And Bappe's <laughs> on! And Bappe's on side! Oh. Antonini Gabriel! <laughs> oh my goodness. Bellissimo! Bellissimo! <laughs> oh my goodness. FC Pro <laughs> finalists can we can confirm it. This could be the round of upsets. I cannot believe what I've just seen. I, I, oh my, I don't know what to say. Full time, get this into a full time. Wow. Congratulations, Antonini Gabriel, the new star. Amongst many that signed up in the 50,000 of them. We've got to go over to Texas matchup. Here's more news for you. Levy, he's down into a lower bracket now. Not qualified yet, but not out of the tournament. Tex against Nisa. This is Nisa in possession. Nisa in the wide strip of Real Madrid from left to right. Tex wins it back nicely. And in time now. He's got a goal. To come in. Can he find an equaliser? Cancelo's there, ball roll back inside, one more pass oh, for the Trivella. Three minutes of added time though, Tex will win the ball back again. Plenty of time to still get one or two good chances, Neymar. He's been the hero, Mbappe tries to go on his own. Ran. Penalty! Oh. Penalty to Tex! Van Dijk goes into the book. Chance to send this into extra time, he does! Mbappe will be the hero, Tex! He's alive at 4-4. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, we know the intention. He does press tackle. The it's, ball is, is there. It a penalty? It's a hundred percent a penalty. The ball's there to be won. But what he expects to happen doesn't happen in terms of just tackling the ball there. And Tex gets a penalty to equalize. Remember. Ooh. Tex also did concede a penalty he did. in the game, which he could say, look, yes, I felt hard done by that as well. 100 percent yep. Wow, last minute drama in, in a lot of the games has happened so far. As we said, headline news we can confirm. A fifth player in the FC Pro Open alongside the top four from the World Championships. And Tanini Gabriel is confirmed. Look at this. He's <laughs> but one he of just... these two will also be joining them. 92 minutes played, any time of three minutes. There's time for one more chance. Nisa wins it now. This one then, Ballet dispossessed. Extra time will be needed here. Still undecided. Nisa was seconds, seconds away. That is devastating for him, I'll be honest. Devastating because he knows he was a moment, just one decision away from potentially going through and winning that game and seeing it out. Tex looked calm and composed, didn't flinch even when he got the penalty, tucked it away and now we're in extra time. That is a massive, massive call. I'm not here to, to question the referee's decisions, but it looked like Van Dijk just, just, he just got his body in the way. Nah, he does press tackle. In fairness, he does commit to the tackle, but what he expected to happen just didn't. The ball was there to be won. He should have won it. It's 100% a penalty for me, 100%. It's just that he pressed tackle to win the ball. The ball was there. He okay. should have like the, the, the won the tackle. It didn't work out in his favour. No, yeah. it didn't. You saw backstage there, everyone watching this one on. As we said, 
Mark 11 in already we know Manny Bashaw in PH in in Obra in another Italian in Antonini Gabriel just qualified beating Levy this will be player number six of 20 confirmed Tex or Nisa the player that just signed for a brand new organization Manchester Finesse. City Esports Finesse from distance oh. mm, it's a bit it's a bit ambitious but why not against potentially our first free agent to make it into the FC Pro Open. I think for Nisa here, the mental approach is going to be very important because it's very easy to put your head down and be demotivated and just... You're sort of... I don't even know how to explain it. You're very much so thinking about what could have been. There's no time for that. He needs to go forward and, and progress and try and get a goal. You see the controlled sprint ahead with Juno. Oh, fantastic you know, like. dribbling. Steal one more, Dembele. I don't know what that animation was, Van Dijk, but he did the job. Hansen is in. Oh, I thought the pass was going to be played. Mbappe still trying to push on his run. Big switch of play could be available. Left back in space. Centurion's Kevin De Bruyne. Trying to get this attack moving for Tex. Hakimi comes on. No surprise, no Trent Alexander-Arnold involved this time round. Mbappe, one more pass. Big save still Ooh. could be one, just gets dealt with by Bellingham. We have just tuned in. Winner of this qualifies for the FC Pro Open. We're an extra time between these two, no two legs this year in FC Pro. One legged matches, one single matches, nine minute halves, which also means we'll have longer periods of extra time as well. For once, I can actually see the, the first 15 minutes of extra time without blinking and it just disappearing. <laughs> yeah. Socrates, the only player to use him in this drafting process was Tex. Not possession for a good few in-game minutes now. Oh, he's committed. This is good. Stick dribbling. Mixed in with a ball roll or two. He could have been punished there for manually stepping out, putting a defender out of position, but he recovers very well there with Minotaur. Nisat does to, to get possession back. Switch of play, very common thing we're going to see. And look at the left back with the left side here. It's going to be Liao in. Is there a pass? Yes, there is to Rafael Leo. Great feet. Nisa oh, off. offside. Offside, then Bello. Pretty much there at the halfway point, any time. If any, Tex to have his last say. In extra time, onside Hakibi, yes. Plays the advantage for a free kick. Fonzo Davies recovers that one perfectly well and will send us into half time next time. We're edging closer towards penalties here. <laughs> Honestly, I'm still shocked about what happened. I couldn't even imagine what's going through. Both Nisa and Texas minds here. Two different ends of what, what just happened. Nisa, you can see, he's still distraught. At the moments when it pans to him in the cameras, he's looking up to the sky. He's going to kickstart the second half of extra time instantly. He needs to... to try and perform his best if he's going to knock or knock Tex down into the loser bracket. And it's the press here of Tex incredibly well to win possession back high up. And it's going to be an attack here from Tex, stemming from the right fullback. Played inside here. Bellingham. Hansen, De Jong. Socrates onside. I'm inside. Ooh, referee ref again! He's, gone. He's got a goal. He's got a goal! Second yellow Virgil van Dijk. He leaves the pitch. Nisa slumps down into his Herman Miller chair. Look at that look. Van Dijk, isn't it? That's a look of panic, that is. <laughs> panic? I hate to be Van Dijk right now. I was going through his mind. He's fuming. Oh, no. And it's harder to save penalties oh, this year. Oh, no. He has to save it, or for me, it's... Tex. Mbappe Ooh. saved! Oh, my Lord. I thought you said it was harder to save him. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Still. Tex in possession still. Ten men of Nisa. Has now got to try and find a way to win this game, or... Maybe look for a penalty shootout if he can save him. 
you, uh, <laughs> I'll be completely honest. In this situation, oh, no, you don't go for the goal to me. You don't push bodies forward for it. You're already a man down. You can see the space here. Has he, has he patched it? Is, has Bellingham come back Look in? It. it looks to be that way. Good defending there. It's going to fall to Hansen. Finesse, maybe no. I think Bellingham's now a centre back. Socrates into Hansen. Hansen step over his tech. So oh, he's gone in somehow. And it looks a lot worse for Nisa. Questionable goalkeeping from Allison there. It just hasn't been an extra time to remember for that man. Ooh, I thought the goalkeeper should have saved that. I think it was green timed on Hansen's weaker left foot, but even still the... I think if that's you at home, Ryan, you discarded him and I think you'll be buying a new goalkeeper. Shadow boxing him. <laughs> Let alone discard him. That's a big goal there from Tex, so it's going to be a mountain to climb, not just because of the scoreline, but of course, Nisa getting that red card. That's a big moment in the game. Again, looking at the replay. Oh, keeper, I don't know. Allison. Oh, it's just... I, I'd, I'd be upset. Ten players on the field. Seven and a half minutes. And he's had to find a way back, or Tex to find his way to the FC Pro Open. It's a big challenge there from Tex. Look at the space there in behind. The back post as well, Human Son. It's going to be Socrates. He can play it to Mbappe. He can turn back, and that's what he tried to do. It's a big tackle there from Nisa. He does well as well to play out of the press. He's, he's, he's got to go for it, obviously. Play a lot there. Oh, he's tried to. I think he might try to flick onto the left back instead of. Not needed. Socrates. Just discipline there from Tex. Trent comes on as a midfielder. De Bruyne. He's in. More pass. He's in. Seal the deal with Mbappe. We'll send Tex and Man City <laughs> into this year's FC Pro Open. It's a big outpour of emotion there from Tex. Letting out the, a roar. We rarely ever see him celebrate. And this is a moment that deserves celebration. <laughs> you can see the look of relief on his face. That is a massive, massive goal. And again, for Nisa to come back into this, I'll be honest, I just, I don't see it happening. Not with 10 men, even with 11, it's almost impossible at this stage. I mean, look, Man City, as you know, Ryan, when they sign, they, they come to play, they, they want to be making every single tournament and winning everything they can. Huge relief for Tex. He's, massive. He's going to be there. Two weeks' time. FC Pro Open. The best 20 players come through this qualification. Nisa, you have to feel for him. Two penalties he gave away. Save one. He got a red card with Van Dijk. And now he's got to try and get himself into a mindset because he's got to go back down and play a game. Yeah, yes, it's going to be a man. massive game. I actually Hold think... On he would have played Fucking against back. Levy and I believe you can see the end of the game there a massive massive win for Tex massive win. oh my god it could have gone a completely different way Tex goes over to Nissan you can understand how frustrated and disappointing he is on the other side of that Man City Esports are in Tex jumps in joy Two very different performances, isn't it? 4-0 and then having to play against Nisa, who will give you such a difficult game. Extra time was needed. It was a last-minute equaliser. And Zach Moore with a smile on his face <laughs> as well. <laughs> They'll be back in two weeks. We go from four to six that have qualified for the FC Pro Open. As we said, by the end of play tomorrow, 20 players will qualify for our 20-player league here that will be taking place in London across the winter months. I mean, look, look everyone backstage who are watching this and seeing it all unfold. They are watching closely. Tex scoring that. You can see the Tex fans are in the room. But there was a, there was, there was a couple of friends of uh, uh, friends and fellow pros that were competing in the other games, as we said. Elimination yep. matchups as we've, uh, we've said goodbye to a handful of players. I can confirm, looking to the side of me here, Klinger is out of the tournament he falls uh, unfortunately let's have a look around the grounds of what we missed and what we saw this was our featured matchup text this get the job done Antonini Gabriel did also 
get the job done in the last dying moments. Round two, Ryan. I mean, look, I've not been disappointed yet. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah. Last minute thrillers. Whether it's equalizers on the last minute from penalties, whether it's winners on the last minute we saw with Antonini up against Levy. We just definitely haven't been disappointed. Two players secure their spots into the FC Pro. And also two players eliminated. Two more spots up for grabs. It's massive. I, mean, I just saw in his controller there, why so serious on these? I mean, I can understand why you're serious right now. Off the back of that, Tex, huge relief. The headline news, as we said, Tex has qualified for the FC Pro Open. Don't worry, by the way, Vir Virgil van Dijk will be al allowed to play in the next game. It's not a... Yeah, yeah, it doesn't stay not, on. Not a three-match ban round here. Anyway, Ryan, we've delivered another great set of games again. The, the Pro certainly have two for now. It's back to Frankie, but we are getting there. Two more players in the hat for the FC Pro Open. Thank you very much for confirming that, Brandon. I was a little bit concerned because Nisa is definitely going to need Van Dyke holding up the fort as he heads into his win or lose match. I should say win, I say win or lose. Obviously, one of those things is going to happen, but it has to be a must win if he wants to stay in this competition. So let's do those final scores from round two. Ed95. GH76, Julian three so sadly that means we do say goodbye to Julian. Young was able to take a dominant victory, 7-3 over Klinger, so we also say goodbye to Klinger. Tex managing to take things to extra time, 6-4 over Nisat. And Antonini, Gabriel, another dramatic final goal in injury time, 4-3. We're going to check out the updated bracket shortly, but in the meantime, let's head over to Boris Legend and Richard Buckley. Thank you very much, Frankie. Some incredible moments, some incredible games taking place here at the FC Pro Global Qualifier. Congratulations to Antonini and Tex. I did see a comment which made me laugh as well in the chat. Boy Devious, Tex is going to win City the quadruple. Hey, if it happens, it happens. We'll have to wait and see. Boris, we've got two clips that we want to break down yeah, in two particular clips here. from the Antonini matchup. We can have yes. a, a little look at them here. This is the first one, and this was the opening goal. You noticed something that you weren't very happy with. Yeah, Let's so see here we have uh, Levy defending in wide kits, and as we said, defensive genius, but even the sun has its spots, because this here is not the perfect defending. So, Richard, what's gone wrong? So, here, would you do something else here? Would you do something differently? Would I? Yes. I ask you. <sighs> I, I feel like I'm quite condescending as me. Um, I'm a good player. Would I have done something differently defensively? Um, maybe a second man press selected this player, gone with a second man press with this player, so you can watch the pass into yeah, there. Yeah, it could. Am I correct? Work out, yeah, definitely, because usually. I mean, of course, every play is, is different, but in, usually they say that, well, that this first press should be taken by the AI. All right, so this here should be left to the AI because you want to scan and see, okay, the, the danger is in here. Okay. In this, you won't cover it manually. So in this case, uh, what would, would be better perhaps for Levy is if he took a defender here yep. and tried to cover inside and stand somewhere here. But in, in this case, uh, he lets or he takes this first press himself manually, which leaves this here, which is Hansen, uh, wide, wide open. And the pass comes. We can play this now. And from here, it's hard to stop. So usually, you should always try to manually cover the inside pass. Are you surprised to see a defensive mistake, shall we say, from Levy, given that he was the lowest, sort of, the best uh, conceding player in the Swiss, only eight goals conceded? Yeah, but it's, it's difficult because it, it, it's goes, such it quick, goes so fast, uh, it goes so fast, it might be, you know, some nerves and you just switch off for milliseconds. But And also, as I said, like every sequence is different. Sometimes that is a good thing if you try to be active and try to also put press on the ball holder. But in, in that case, that was not the maybe best choice from Levy. Okay, this is the clip that I wanted to, to highlight because we both had a look at this, didn't yeah. we? Um, we'll just roll it on. We can go at sort of half speed right now because I want to show you the pace of Mbappe. Look fast. at that He's pace. Very fast, yeah. He gets in this position right there and we'll just pause it. A lunge. Antonini's lunge there was dangerous, could have caused a pen <laughs> as well. <laughs> well, but a lot of pens were just throwing that last yeah, round. Yeah, plenty of pens, it's just raining. But this, uh, the key here, all right, so, and what looks so simple, Talk to me. but it was so hard to make because this goes fast, as we mentioned. The ball roll. 
This is a simple key yeah. to end up in a good posture. Getting this slight tweak inside. You see here, Mbappé, so most players, including also maybe me now, as I'm quite washed, but just, you know, <laughs> run straight, you know, you know. going crazy, and maybe as well try this pass here to find the striker here. A bit oh, so that that pass. Yeah, it there. could happen here, but it's quite a tricky pass because not not the best angle. But instead, he does the initial ball roll and ends up in a straight forward-looking posture towards the keeper. We can see this now. The next thing that I just want to talk about as we pause it there. Yeah, if we go back slightly. If we can just roll that back ever so slightly. Um, one more frame there. Is he not controlling the wrong player there? Should he not be? Like in here, maybe, or in there. Like, yeah. what's he looking for? Is it that pass? We've seen Antonini, a lot of I, I the think, goalkeeper. yeah, he, he expects probably the pass to come here, or maybe a, a cross, uh, but maybe not the ideal switch here. Um, so yeah, these things, of course, could happen. It is plenty of uh, plenty of nerves, and it goes fast. But I, I, one thing that I must highlight, and what I love, is this simple skill move like Roqueta. Which here makes this it. go possible. Let's see it in its glory. Crocs Let's see it's black Yeah. Oh. And this is sometimes the only option. All right, so he, he cannot perhaps pass it back. Cutback is quite blocked. Uh, angle is not the best. And also, they have not also patched uh, the shots near post. They still work out sometimes, but it's not as effective. So then what is left most times is the croquetta shot, and that is so clean, it is perfect. It was perfect from Levy. Unfortunately, he goes down to the loser's bracket, but he's still in with a chance at the FC Pro Open. Two players have solidified their spots and joined the four that we already had, and we can see the live draw from their group right about now. We can indeed, but before we do, let's just take a quick look at the bracket, which has been updated because we do still have some matches to play out in Group A. As you can see, Tex and Antonini Gabriel, they have already booked their spot in the Monday night shows, but we do need to send two more through today. So we're going to see Levy going up against Young and we're going to see JH7 fight for his survival against Nisat. So those matches are coming up shortly. But now, my friends, it's time to pop some balls and I can't think of a better man to lead us through the action than FG. Well, thank you very much. As you can see, I'm joined by both winners. Tex, we'll come back to you in a minute. Get your breath back. That was an absolutely incredible performance. But now it, the focus is on you, Antonini. Wow, what a performance. You're so young. You're in an incredible arena. I just need to know how you're feeling right now. Competendo al torneo, quindi come ti senti? Ma sicuramente è un'esperienza unica. Essere tra i più, tra virgolette, piccoli del torneo mi fa stra piacere. Ora avrò un, un riposo abbastanza meritato e prossimamente si tornerà a Londra più carico che mai. He said he's very, very happy and excited to be the youngest player here um, and very honored to be here. He said he's going to rest for a little bit and then he just um, he's ready to come back and he just can't wait. I have to ask you as well, before we draw the balls, you must be exhausted. You said you needed to have a rest. Um, you score so many goals, you concede goals, you play excited, excited football on the virtual pitch, don't you? Sarei stanchissimo dopo, dopo, questa, cioè, dopo questa performance, quindi uh, come ti senti insomma dopo tutte queste emozioni, tutti questi gol? Ma sicuramente attualmente sono felicissimo, ma allo stesso tempo eh, sono stanchissimo mentalmente. Adesso però a breve giocherà l'altro mio amico italiano Montaxer e domani giocherà l'altro mio amico compagno Checova, entrambi italiani, quindi ti farò loro e darò il massimo supporto per loro. He's mentally exhausted, uh, but super excited as well. He can't wait to see the other Italians in the tournament. There's Montaxa coming up now, and then tomorrow we got Kekko as well. So very excited, but mentally exhausted. <laughs> I can only imagine. Now, the power is in your hands. You can pick the ball out, and you're going to open it, so you can't blame me. It's all Put it in your hands, so open it. Here we go. Let's have a look. A nice, easy open. And let's show that camera just over there. Who you are playing against? Number three. Mane Bacciori. Which is Bacciori. So you're playing against Bacciori. What do you think about that? Cosa ne pensi? Ma sicuramente è un player assoluto, fortissimo, il più forte al mondo, che è colui che ha vinto il mondiale l'anno scorso. Quindi sarà una bella esperienza anche giocarci contro. 
he said he's excited, but yeah, it's the best in the world. So it'll, it'll, be, it'll be a great challenge. You can't wait. Well, we can't wait to watch it either at home. Massive congratulations. Enjoy your rest. Let's move over straight away. Tex, another man who's like, I mean, wow, what a roller coaster. Now I'm buzzing, man. You know the difference, right? This tournament started at 6 p.m. Usually they start the tournaments at like 8 a.m. So I have to go to bed at stupid times. But no, nah, I can I can do my normal life. I go to bed at 6 a.m. I can just wake up at 2 p.m. Play at 6. It's brilliant. So, yeah. So this is your version of probably lunchtime right now. Yeah, man. It's lunchtime for me. And now I've got to have full time, which I'm so, so scared for. You don't, un you don't understand. Right. So for everyone watching at home, Tex has been talking to me for the last five minutes about how nervous he is to pick the ball Oh, and listen, I'm not going to waste any more time, but I feel like you said this is your most nerve-wracking moment so far today. Top five of my life. Well, I want to hear from everyone in the chat. We want to see what you think. Um, you better not mess this up, mate, because there's so many thousands of people watching you. Right, be quiet now, let me focus. <laughs> Let's leave it to text. Oh, that was all right. That was light work. And that is number four, who is? Oberon. Ooh, a game against Oberon. What do you think? You know what, yeah? I'm one of, like, Oberon's biggest fans. I think he's so good. Uh, like, last year, World Cup, thought he was going to win. I think he's so good. So, yeah, probably the one guy I didn't want to get. But, you know, I'll take it. I'm flying right now. And, of course, as a pro player, you want to play. You have to play against the best to be the best. Do you relish these opportunities? Um, no, I'd rather match a bum, but, nah, <laughs> I match Oberon. So, you got a bit of in front of you. So, yeah, I'll play Oberon. I guess that's a bit of a praise for his opponent. Listen, guys, congratulations. You've made it. You've drawn your own opponents. Let's see what, what, what's to come. Yeah, well, so much is to come. Thank you so much, for everyone. And Francesca, thank you so much for the fantastic translation, or should I say, grazie mille. We have got two elimination matches coming your way. We're going to be sending two people home, but two players through to those Monday night shows that so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to the FC Pro Open Global Qualifier and the emotions and the excitement in this room was the next level as we saw Tex and Antonini Gabriel go through to the Monday night shows but now things are going to get even more tense because as you can see from that bracket we've only got two more spots left from Group A and two more players are going to be going home. Who is going to be taking it and what draft are they going to be doing it with? Let's head over to Boris Legend and Richard Buckley to talk us through some of those items. Thank you very much. Frankie, step on board the Buckley and Boris breakdown board train. Of course, we are going fast. There's no brakes on this train. Boris, two games remaining. Yes. Our featured match is going to be Nisat against Young. Against Young. We've seen clips of them throughout today. I mean, Nisat just coming off the, the back of a, a really devastating loss, it's probably said, against yeah. Tex. We can have a look at his draft right now, but how would you bounce back from that, suffering a defeat in such close proximity to what you're having to play now? Yeah, I mean, he still could be proud because that is a tough matchup, probably facing the you know, most difficult player here. I mean, Tex uh, went unbeaten through Swiss, so it was a very tough matchup, and he fell short just uh, in the last moments. That was a, a close game, so he did great. And he has now still a chance, so we have now an uh, extra game for him, a uh, new, new chance. And of course, he has still the same team. Pretty that, standard. That doesn't change, yeah. Pretty standard team, it's yeah. got to be said. We can see Trailblazer Jude Bellingham in the middle of the pitch. On the other side of it, a Young's team. We've not had a chance to look we at haven't it, seen yet, it But there's a few players in there that catch oh, the eye. Catch, yeah, definitely. Luka Modric, 12.5% pick rate. What's a knockout? Yes. Yeah. I, you liked him. I love him. Uh, mainly because of his touch, his dribbling is, is, is unreal. He is uh, turning so fast and also has Tevela Plus, which is a dangerous weapon. And the man next to him, Yaya Torre, only one of five players out yeah. of the 64 who submitted a, a squad, submitted yeah. a draft, had Yaya Torre in the team. Young was one of them. What does Yaya offer you in that midfield? He has a size. Is it a cheap pullet? Yeah, you could say, but he's not that cheap. Uh, one so million coins. One million coins, and that's maybe why we we're surprised to see him to put that big budget on the midfield. Uh, but still, I mean, the combination of uh, Modric offered the uh, amazing dribbling with Torreira's size, I think, is a nice combination. Um, I want to talk about Neymar. Yeah. As well, because we, we've seen Neymar pop up with a lot of goals. Yeah. You see 30 chemistry in the bottom corner. Yes. He will be one of those players off chemistry in this team. Ryan yeah. said it don't really matter if Neymar's off chemistry. Do you think it matters or is he just he's good enough to be on base stats? Well, the thing is that Neymar is always Neymar. He has this special animation, special movement and 5-5. Five five. And he has also a body type that is one of the leanest in the game. And if you have a lean body type, that means extra good movement. So. Yeah, I think for him, uh, the, the base stats are so good. He has dribbling that is 93. So even if he has one chemistry or even off chemistry, Neymar has still that excellence that could make a big difference in these games here. And I just want to highlight the back four. This was, we did the stats, the most selected back four out of the entire tournament. Mendy, Militao, Van Dijk and Hakimi. They all had over 50% success rate. Yeah. Only one player who made it here today to the knockouts hasn't selected Van Dijk. He's a must-have in these drafts for 198,000 coins. Yeah, that's also why, because he's cheap. Uh, you could also go with Lucio. I saw some, some players taking Lucio, yeah. but I mean, that is four or five times the budget. While Van Dijk offers the same services, and he also has, as spoke about excellence, which in, in these uh, tournaments makes a difference. He has the height, he has the heading, and he scores plenty of goals. So I think Van Dijk must be in. He's a must-have for Boras and myself. Is he in Brandon and Ryan's draft? We'll find out. They're about to take you through the next game. Um, is he are any of those players in yours? Van Dijk, absolutely. Without question, has to be in the team. I think he's, along with Mbappe, I think are the two staple choices, I would say, in the team, without doubt. And even with that 78 pace, Oh, He's a game changer, man. Absolutely. Just the aerial dominance. We've seen how good he is defending corners and also scoring it. We've seen plenty of goals so far from Van Dijk. But this is the matchup, the game to qualify. Nisat coming off, as we said, that devastating loss in extra time against Tex and Young coming from a tough game as well. It's going to be a very, very entertaining game between these two. Absolutely. Well, let's get that timer on the screen here. Two more spots left from this group, A. Eh? to join 
Vitex and Antonini Gabriel. It's time to kick off this matchup, or both of them, we should say. Our featured matchup we'll see. Nisa take on Young. I think one thing that we can expect in this, without being cliche, is lots of goals. They've both been involved <laughs> yeah. in some crazy, crazy matches of FC 24 today. One from Tuzzy Esports, one still a free agent. I mean, look, as I said, if he qualifies, he'll have a team, a list of teams queuing up, I should say, queuing up to sign him for the next eight, potentially nine weeks, if he goes the full way. On the other side of it, Levy against JH7. Winner of that game will also qualify too. Both players have just got to pick themselves up after a defeat. On the other side, you've got players that have already tasted elimination, about to play elimination football. Surely they've got a little bit of an advantage. Yeah, absolutely. You'd say in this situation as well, with the way Nisat lost, he was genuinely seconds away from progressing into the FC Pro Open up against a massive a massive name in Tex. You would say, arguably, people see him as the best player in the world. So that would have been a scalp and that would have pushed him on, not just into the, the FC Pro Open, but the boost of confidence that would have given him in that tournament would have been astounding. And to lose that, playing against an opponent now coming off the opposite end, who's just won his game against the... Um, a fellow player from South America. That's going to be a tough game to overcome. And why do you think Nisat has always remained in the conversation? It's been a good couple of years now. Yeah, it's, was been a, it's been a few. A, a, a huge emergence of players from that side of Europe that came through and they, they just are unbelievable. Online they first emerged and then yep. they just turned it on at LAN as well, didn't they? Yep, he's performed well. He's getting more accustomed to the LAN events, of course, coming into prominence when tournaments were mainly or primarily online, so it was different. He never had the experience of playing in person. I mean, it, 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 it was Rowie Feldman first, wasn't it? Then it was yeah. Yuval Belli and Nisa. The three of them always seemed to compete together. Nationally, they do as well. We're going to jump over to our other game. We are hearing in the meantime, Levy De Vian against JH7. This one also a match to determine if you'll qualify for the FC Pro Open. When I said that, we're going to jump back to our main feature game. That one's eight minutes in. This one has only just kicked off. Nisa kicking from left to right, playing in that Real Madrid kit because he hasn't currently got an esports team or football club to represent him. So the esports young. Off the back of a big win. Cuts back inside. Ooh. He tries to move the goalkeeper, but it's not enough. Nisa. Three minutes is all it took for him to... Strike back into action. Tried to move the goalie there and tried to do something, Ryan, but just couldn't do enough. Yeah, I think he's done well there with the goalkeeper movement. Moving him back, maybe it was a slightly too far back, so he got punished because the goalkeeper was, was actually behind the line. So maybe, or almost behind the line, I should say. So maybe that punished him in, in that sense. But I don't think Young made too much of a mistake there with the goalkeeper. The mistake stems from the defensive movements, just pulling players out of position. Of course, Nisat managed to capitalise off of that. And of course, it's Neymar, five-star week, but we were speaking about chemistry isn't something that, that comes to his detriment, in my opinion, and, and it showcases it right there. Got a triggered run as well with Yaya. It's going to be driven in, the step over. Ginola. Look inside to one of the most interesting midfield partnerships we've seen so far. Hakimi will get fortunate, very fortunate, but fair play for putting it away. Didn't need a, a striker in the lines of Mbappe there. Just needed a right back to time green that one. Simple as you like. The games might be longer, but the goals keep on flying in. 1-1 one, one the scoreline. Seven minutes in. And we are all square at 1-1. One, one. Speaking of that midfield partnership, Ryan, thoughts on it? Yaya Torre alongside Modric. Yeah, neither of those players would have made my selection, if I'm being honest, but it's the reason I'm, I'm up over here with you and they're, they're playing. So it's worked out for them, it's personal preference. We see Young here stepping over with Mbappe. Good defending there from Nisa. Well, a lot of the pros have said, obviously, Ginola's the first on the on the wish list, but second down on that is, is Yaya Torre. What sort of a a player, what sort of a build does he give you in that midfield? Sort of exactly how he was in real life, just the, the power 
the pace defensively as well. Might not have the highest defensive stats, but his just physical presence in game sort of subsides the the lower defensive awareness compared to some other cards. But again, he still offers a lot, not just defensively, but defensively, but going forward. You know, going for it. Nice out there, progressing high up the pitch here. Hanson. She need the one more pass. Referee, no. Says Courtois got two hands on it. Sort of feels like Vieira Torre. He's the he's a CDM. He's a cam. And he's a centre mid all in one. He's just he plays everywhere, doesn't he? Offers you so much. Someone else who offers you a lot is David Ginola. Saying that poor pass does get dispossessed. Still nil nil in our other game for those wondering. Levy against JH7. That's nil nil. Twenty five minutes on the clock in that game. Winner of both of these matches will pick the sport. Oh, Mbappe! Chavella, thank you very much. From 1 0 down, he leads two goals to one. I was about to say, accidentally say finesse. I meant to say Chavella there. The angle opened up the moment he turned inside there. The angle's always there to take the Chavella. And that is exactly what he, what he does. Putting it past the goalkeeper, giving him the lead now. Two goals to one. You mentioned there'll be goals. There's been already three goals in this game. How many minutes have been played? I want to say maybe 25, not even 16 minutes have been played and there's been three goals already. You didn't see Nisat's last game, it was against Tex. Extra time was needed, there was three penalties in the matchup. Nisat gave away two of those, got a red card. And unfortunately, found himself on the losing end of that game. Had to dust himself down. A tiny break and refocus for this one. And it's how that's a shocker. Mbappe, can he capitalize? Hansen can't. He rushed it. He had so much time there, even just to take it onto Hansen's strong foot there. But that is almost was a catastrophe. That is an awful mistake there to make from Young. But again, Nisa, I think, has to maybe take a touch there, be a bit more composed. He definitely would have found himself, uh, not even necessarily a goal, but per se, but at least a shot on target. Goal has gone in in the other game. We'll jump over to it very quickly indeed. And it's gone the way of the Dutch player. Van Dijk into Valverde. Speak of Travellers. And speak of goals as well. Nisa, head in hand. It's getting worse for him. 3-1. He now trails two. We'll see it again on the replay, Ryan. Once again, the ball rolls. There's a set of the angle for the Traveller, and it's Neymar over the goalkeeper. I think those goals as a player, for me, are, are the toughest to take. A finesse shot and a Traveller, just because you kind of think that it's an easy, it's a free goal. You've given up a free goal at this stage, and it's, it's very, very costly. So often as well, you're in those... You're on the opposite side trying to defend that. Oh, Nisa, he's thinking, it's just not happening for me right now. Hakimi, terrible touch. Out of play. Young player lock. Tease that. Look at, the play. Look at the run there from Yaya towards the back post. He stopped his Hakimi, run. Hakimi, not again. Oh, he's learned, his, he's learned from that now. He's moved the goalkeeper, but... But all I wanted to say, Ryan, is that you're so defensively, you're so worried about trying to stop the through ball or trying to stop a player coming at you, then you mess up. You, you naturally yeah. leave space mm -hmm. to get Travella. So what's the counter to it? It's just moving the goalkeeper and hoping, I'll be completely honest. But I, I like that aspect. I know a lot of people might not be fond of long shots or anything, but I think if someone's sat deep defensively, then they have to worry about something in terms of outside the box shooting and inside the box here. It's going to be knee sat. Played across goal there. It's good interception. It's falling straight back to him. And the pass into Hakimi didn't come to fruition, but it's going to be a counter here from Young, using the player locks as well, cancelling it. Poor bit of defending, he's lucky. Well played, Van Dijk. So lucky. Ginola, back pose could be on. Potentially scooped up. Van Dijk again, defensively. It's good defending there, just to stop the danger. Time to counter-attack, Mbappe got to turn around his man. Hansen. Oh, oh Van Dijk. Oh, goodness. That's the benefit there of having advanced defending as well. When you're running back, you can just press X there, just to shoulder bars the attacker, just nudge them out, shepherd them out off the ball. 
It's exactly what Van Dijk is perfect with, with his strength, his stature in game, Bruiser play playstyle as well. I mean, if you're looking along that back line, as Richard pointed out, the most picked, the most effective back line we've seen. We'll speak about it in, after the attack comes out. What, what play styles are you looking for along side that back line from centre backs to, to full backs? For me, full backs I actually don't look too much to. This is a great you know, reverse like, pass. Oh, he's, I don't know what he's done there. I think that's a double tap pass across goal there. He could have even gone for goal if he trusted himself. Does it go about saying on your fullbacks you're just looking for pace? Yeah, genuinely, I need pace. But it depends on the formation you play. If you're playing 4 3 2 1, you kind of need a fullback um, that's a bit more effective going forward. The likes of Hakimi with four star skills and the weak foot um, instead of pot potentially Kyle Walker, who's a lot more defensive. And then the centre backs anticipate. Anticipate plus is very useful. Jockey as well with Kunde, which is why I really like him instead of Militao. Block comes in handy. Intercept. All of the defensive ones are very effective. Quite a high line, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is... Nisa! Hold on a minute, ref. You've got to be careful there! I think he could be gone, you know. Well... If it's a red, I think he's gone. All the referee deemed this as... He's oh, gone. straight reds! Woo! It's deja vu for Nisa! Oh, dear. Two games in a row, and Van Dyke. Oh, wow. That is... Finds his way <laughs> to a red card, but not this time. Late into a game, Ryan. 36 minutes in. He was playing such a high line. There was always going to be risk there, but not that sort of risk. Yeah, that is a... It's a strange tackle to make. Again, you spoke about defence. It felt like it's like a foot champs game. There's so many options, but back and forth. He seems to be stepping out a lot and committing, and he committed there with the slide tackle. And in those situations, we know how it is this year in FC24. You make those tackles, you don't win the ball, you're going to get sent off. And that is one there where... 10 men with 60 or 55 minutes plus at a time or so left to be played. It is... This would be a miracle story. Miracle. To say it the least, it could be a... a oh, it could be yeah, three goals It could be down. a beat down. Oh, it will be. It could be. On. <laughs> As you said, it, it will be a beat down. I'll be honestly hit. If Nisa if wins he's gone, this, yeah. What are you going to do? Are you going to come back and play again? <laughs> take, a, take a lot more than that. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say something that I'll do, but I'm not going to do it in case you actually... I was going to say how gritty like what Anders done yesterday. Oh, please, <laughs> please, don't. Please, please, please do that. <laughs> no, but honestly, though, if he comes back from this 4-1 down, approaching the 40th minute now, 10 men. <laughs> yes. It would just be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Nisa. Such a difficult position now. 4-1 down, 10 players on the pitch. Loses this. It's back to the drawing board. And, I mean, look, he hasn't got a club right now. He took a massive risk on this one to come as a free agent to try and get himself to this FC Pro Open, to try and get himself in the shot window, you could argue, for a contract with a bigger club. Look at the space as well. He's got both fullbacks going forward. It is a three on three. It's just. Mbappe, look, you're in the trouble. Space. Eh? Ginola Mbappe, one defender back. Ginola still. Oh, Towards the back post. Mbappe! You know what there? Brilliant FIFA from no, Young. No, no, that player look, yeah, I'm applauding. Because he could have driven it on the floor. I think that's what was the, the most obvious choice. He's dinked it. I think it's an L1 square there. And Mbappe finishes. Goalkeeper maybe could have done a little bit better. It was straight at him. allison has been a bit shaky in goal. But it's 5-1. It could be more. It, it will be more. I'll be honest with you. There's no way. We, see, we spoke earlier on at the very start of the show. Nine minute halves. It's hard enough defending in a six minute half game with 11 men, 10 men up against somebody that's attacking as fluid and scoring as many goals as young. This could hit double digits, have you all? Well, you'll be happy that you won't have to do that gritty, Ryan. Yeah. 5-1. Five, five, <laughs> We're going to jump over to this game now. Levy of Team Hullet against Fatana Dusseldorf. JH7, winner of this one, remember. We'll also make it to the FC Pro Open as it currently stands, Nisa. Two red cards, two games running. Looks like he's going to be knocked out of the tournament. Levy leads by a goal to nil. Kicker from right to left in possession now. Looking for a second in this game, Hakimi. The way from right back, so far forward. Oh, it's a risky pass there. It's intercepted. It's played in there. It's going to be Neymar. Step oh, beautiful step over there. Oh, Neymar, great oh. feet. The better finish. Controlled sprint there, Brandon was sensational there from Levy. You saw the grimace on 
JH7's face instantly and the player comes there. He knows that's a massive mistake and it could be a very costly one. Massive goal for Levy. Leads by two goals to nil. That controlled sprint as well. Oh, a sensation. Game changer this year. Don't even need to be a skiller oh, to use it. No, you don't. You don't need any skill moves. Of course, it helps with the playstyle of technical or technical plus, but just having the agility, the balance. And it's very easy to use. Just hold R1, able to weave him in and out of defenders. Just keeping the ball glued to your feet. And with someone like Neymar in open space like that, it's just... Yeah, there's only going to be one goal that's going to happen there, and that's going to be the back of the net. Two goals up there for Levy. Time ticking away. As we said, six will become eight. And qualify for the FC Pro Open. If you have just tuned in, welcome along. It's our debut event here for this season's FC Pro. Tex recently just qualified. Antonini Gabriel also amongst the names. The new names that have emerged already. As if Levy's going to be joining that list of players. It was an EA Sports Cup winner last year, 2v2 that was. Seven. So is the way through. He's looking for the switch here. He's baiting in Jason just to push players out of position. It's going to be Addison swinging it out wide to Hakimi. Wins, in, wins the header, sorry. But giving possession straight back to JH7. Hakimi. A goal to spark some hope. Ooh. It's a step there from Levy that could be punished. Still Hakimi. Ball finds his way back to the Moroccan right back. Step overs were nice, but Bellingham gets a toe on it. Watch the manual player switch coming in now in the box. Anyone that has the blue curse above the hat. Is the danger player that's going to be Van Dijk towards the front post? There he is. And no matter if you see him, you just can't stop him. We've seen it many times today already. The the player lock onto Van Dijk, bringing him in at the near post and just whipping a corner in. He finds his head is very very likely that it's going to result in a goal, and that's exactly what's happened there as well. We have some update as well in the Nisa Young game. There was a goal just scored by Nisa for those wondering it. It's now six goals to two. There's still a mountain to climb. Well, remember that the FC Pro Open Global Qualifiers brought to you by Herman Miller Gaming, the official chair supplier of the FC Pro this season. All the players chance to play in those chairs across the last two days in Swiss round and in the knockout stages. It will be the next two games to qualify. As it currently stands, it looks as if it's going to be South American of Young. Joining a fellow countryman in PH Zip. Certainly not over yet. 20 minutes to be played. Are we going to see some of those substitutions involved now in these drafted squads? Great challenge. Looking at those subs for JH7, his best bet he's got. He wants, looking for pace or maybe a bit of a freshen up in the midfield, right? Musiala, if needed. Usman Dembele, probably the other main choice too. Alfonso Davies has already been brought on for him. You can 
20 to 8 goals in the Swiss rounds yesterday, did Levy. Speaking of those changes, it's like they heard me. We'll jump off the screen there. Speaking of those changes, right on one side, as we said, we could be looking at Usman Dembele, Musiala coming on. He's already brought on Alfonso Davies, as JH7 on the screen now. On the other side, for Levy, I'm in song. He's there and he can get you a goal. He is. He obviously is very, very trustworthy in front of goal and obviously on the edge of the box as well. Doesn't have the pace, that the blistering pace off the bench like we've seen with Rodman earlier on or Diaby or Liao, Dembele. But again, in terms of finishing, you definitely trust him when he gets into those areas. Rolf Owen, Alfonso Davies as well. Some options for Levy. I expect him maybe to bring those on. Just to patch over that left and right back area in terms of giving him a bit more pace going forward. Another goal has gone in in that young Nisa game. Seven goals to two young leads against the 10 players of Nisa. 30 minutes left in that game, but unfortunately, it's going to be a bitter end to his tournament here. And the FC Pro the global qualifier after such a positive start yesterday. Let's get back on. See if substitutions have been made or anything on those lines. 90 minutes left in this one. Well, it looks as if Alfonso Davies has been introduced for Levy. Lorente on the other side coming on for JH7. On ball forward. It's... I think he didn't even expect the header to be won there, so maybe he didn't capitalise on the space with Mbappe. Usman Dembella, we can confirm, also coming onto the pitch. Levy confident and calm to play around those areas. Rolfo, we mentioned that left and right back change. It's. Happened. Another okay, pause, back, back, back post. Page. Dembele tried to go on his own, tried to do a bit too much. Randall will have to come across. Well, we've completely out of position now. This is where the gaps will appear for Levy if he can come in well and he'll get his pause. What do you think that pause could be for? Maybe he just wants to readjust to this attacking press he's now up against? It could be just to see what his opponent has changed, seeing if he's changed any formations or maybe personnel that you could use just to bring on to try and nullify the changes himself. Maybe just, just for a breather, just speaking to your coach in Renzo behind him. You can see him just listening, words of wisdom. So maybe see if there's different ways they could see out at what moments they decide to change their defensive formation. If they change now, they change later. Well, we've got a minute to give you the lowdown here, as we said. Remember, we've still got Group B to come today. We'll give you a very quick teaser on that. Our opening game is probably, can't, can't confirm it, but probably going to be Fuma against Nicholas. That's coming in this broadcast today as we jump back into the game. I mean, Group B, that packs a punch as well. Heavy, heavy. Obviously, Group C is the one people say is the, the group of death. I think Group B genuinely has sort of flown under the radar with the Olito's in there. Lex, Hidalgo. Puma Nicholas, who you mentioned already as well. We even we forgot. We're like going like five and oh. Uh, we haven't even mentioned him as well. He's another player. Could be on to do a Antonini Capriel. This is brilliant. Close control dribbling down the byline from Mbappe. Ten minutes away. From finding player number seven. Nice ball over the top. Musiala. Another one of those substitutions that he's made. There's the energy that will give you. Intercepted just about. He's in. Watching Nolan now. Dembele, plenty of pace. Levy looking for the winner. Oh, that's so disappointing. You'd expect Dembele off the bench. Just have a bit more pace about him just to get in behind then and provide. More of an option going forward. Dembele for J7 now. The pass inside. Oh my goodness. Oh, what a ball. Hanson! Oh. Just couldn't do enough. Oh. 
Oh my goodness. Ooh. It's risky. Ooh. Right back. Onside, just drive, the Bappe run. Does he need one more pass or not? Outside the boot, big save. Can he tap in? Ginola just can't link up to it. What a chance that was. It's great goalkeeper movement right at the perfect moment there to move Alisson. The pass has gone out as well. It's going to be Levy in behind again, straight away from the throw on. Cut back. Got Neymar. There it is. Neymar, one more pass. Back post. There it is. Ginola on his own. Tom De Green. Big save, Schmeichel. Corner. No rush needed from Levy. Great feed, Ginola. His old kick he goes for. One last roll of the dice. The Fortuna Dusseldorf's FC Pro player, JH7. Right back on overlap as well. Here's the chance. Lorente. Oh, it's a poor. Could win it. Bad Ginola wins the tussle, though, of Dembele. This is nice. Musiala again. Still down the byline. Corner. Ooh, he scored from one already this game. The controlled sprint with Musiala. Watch Van Dyke in this picture, right at the back of this screen at the moment. Coach is over the shoulder of JH7, just trying to give him some sort of instructions here. And in time of two minutes, we've near enough played one already. There's Van Dyke again at the front post. Mm. It's the defensive Van Dyke that wins it only as far back as JH7. Lorenzi on the edge of the box, fought about a shot, falls back to Davies instead. Defended oh, well by Valverde. Challenge. And that should be enough, should be enough to send Levy into the FC Pro. Final 20. Job done. He will be amongst the best players and he will join his teammate, Manny Bashaw, world champion in two weeks time. It's a massive result. I like the little handshake between him and Ron Renzo as well. Just a little, little handshake there, dapping each other up. But that's a massive result for Levy. A huge, huge game. Was 2-0 up. Conceded, could have scored more, could have conceded more, but he sees out the game to solidify his spot into the FC Pro event that's taking place in a couple weeks' time. JH7 gave a valiant effort, but it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't his day. Well, commiser commiserations there. Let's jump back to our other game now. I mean, look, you'll be happy to know you won't be grinning anytime soon, Ryan Pessoa. It's 9-2. Young has put on one hell of a performance. Look at the goals he scored throughout this knockout stage in Group A. Scored so many goals. And you, you look back at this game, you look back at the big moment, and it was the red card. Absolutely. And even before that, I felt as if he was... He took in his his upset or his, ment his I don't want to say negative mentality because it's, it's tough to say because I think the way he lost contributes to this game as well if he had lost the text in a different type of way I think this game could have been seen out differently I just feel as if his head has been gone just from we saw from the the moment the the text game finished it seemed as if he was demotivated this tournament was derailed and that is it young progresses into the FC Pro event taking place in a few weeks time the player from South America does the job, the smiles, the celebrations with his coach. And it's a massive, massive moment. Well, it's another South American amongst the eight that will be there. Tuzzy Esports will be at the FC Pro Open. As I, said, as I said, he was in the 2v2 tournament last year, the EA Sports Cup at Atlanta. Was young. I know he will be there alongside fellow right. countryman P.H. Zinn. Two more players there, Ryan. Two very different games as well in terms of uh, how they all went down. Yeah, of course. We're going to be able to take a look at some of the replays. It was an early goal for Nisa, but it was responded very quickly by Young with Hakimi. And then after that, it just... <laughs> the game turned on its head. It was a celebration, goal after goal, mistake after mistake. For Nisat, we saw just the, the outpour of negative emotion. It's a tough pill to swallow, Brandon, I'll be honest, because again, I have to refer back to, I keep doing it, that game against Texas, yeah, it was just one slight decision, which has caused him to be in this position. The implications this year as well, you don't win today, you don't qualify today. I'm looking at Nisat, I'm thinking, 
what virtual league is he going to? Where, where, where's he playing? Because that's where he's, he's got to be at. Yep, it's very, very tough. Again, if you don't perform at those moments or in this tournament, some player seasons, it, as, as crazy as it seems, could be done already. Yeah. That's madness, which is, hey, we're just beginning. But again, the foundations of this year, the FC problem is a massive, massive thing this year. There's heavy emphasis on making it, which is why it's so important to do well, but it just wasn't meant to be for him today. And that's why the stakes and the pressure are so high. Six become eight, and they are joined now with Frankie and FG. The results are official. Levy de Bird 2, J871, Nisat 2, Young 9. And to be honest, there probably wasn't that much of an excuse, Young, for you not getting all those goals in the back of the gap, given that you were playing for most of that match against 10 players. Yeah, yeah. It was a very tough match, but at the end, I made it. I don't care about the result, like 9-2 or 2-1. I just made it, and I'm so happy for this. Many more matches to come. I'm actually going to let FG tell you guys what you need to do next. Well then, as you can see, I'm also joined by Levy. Levy, we'll start with you. The power is in your hands, but first things first, let's just discuss how you're feeling. Uh, I'm buzzing, obviously. Um, I won this game 2-1, it was really tight in the end. I didn't have any problems until uh, G7 scored a corner. And then, yeah, the last 15 minutes go in. Obviously, you get a bit nervous, but we won. That's all that matters. And now I'm gonna draw a ball. Hopefully not in the group of Manu Bachor, obviously, because he's my teammate and we don't want to face each other maybe in the final of the tournament, but not in the group, obviously. So that's the only thing I'm hoping for. Well, let's not make you wait any longer. Give the balls a shuffle and pick one out. And let's see who your opponent will be. We will come to you in a second as well, Young. Give that a big squeeze. There you go. And let's show the camera. And that is number four. Obrin. Over and checks. And checks, yes. All right, it's all right. <laughs> How are you feeling? Yeah, at the moment I'm still like very happy, so I'm not thinking about the groups. This probably means that I'm playing the latest of them all, so that means I have a lot of time to prepare again. And obviously I hope I can continue this form. Uh, Tex and Obrun, let's see who the other three are gonna, no, what other two are gonna be in our group. So far, if I look, this is pretty stacked. But the tournament 20 best players in the world is going to be stacked uh, every way. Well, you are in that final 20, so congratulations again. You enjoy yourself, relax. Let's come to you, Young. Um, fresh from your victory, 9-2. Um, the scoreline shows dominance, but the red card was massive, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, he made all the difference. Like the red card that he did, he had like in 36 minutes, he changed the game. I just like stay focused all the time because I know that these games are so tough. And then I make the goals and win the, the, the game, and that's it. You absolutely did. Now, it looks like you enjoy playing attacking football as well. Yeah, yeah. My football is like so attacking, but at the same time, some games I lost because I, I'm so attacking, so I need to work a little bit in my defense. Probably need to learn with Levy a little bit. <laughs> well, we'll leave that to you. It's now time for you to draw Not the ball. Not is there anyone that you, you, you're not wanting to draw against? Yeah, yeah, no PNZ for me. My One of my best friends in Brazilian as well, so no PNZ, please. Nope. Well, the power is your, in your hands. Give them a shuffle and pick the ball to decide your fate. <laughs> what is this technique? That was sensational, by the way. OK, here we go. Let's show the camera and reveal it's the number. It's Zin. And you know what? It is B8 Zin. How do you feel? Him. It is what it is. Like I, I don't want to face him, but it is what it is. So let's go. You absolutely jinxed that, but that was fantastic. Thank you guys. Congratulations for making it. You're in the final 20. You know what though? Just before these guys go, I've got a cheeky question because the two of you are obviously good mates. You are hugging on this desk, and the two of you are like, we know what we're doing later. What are you doing later? Uh, I don't know if that's a smart thing to say on broadcast, but. Like, we are free now, I don't need to work tomorrow, so you know what's coming in the weekend, you know? I mean, I don't, but we can have a chat about that ourselves off camera because we've got to head over to the Boris and Buckley breakdown. I, I want to be invited, Levy. Me and Boris are happy to come as well, wherever we may end up. Two more players, Group A has been finalised, and the two clips that we're going to break it down and sort of give you a little bit of insight at home. Yes. One of them attacking, one of them no offence, Nisa, but a horrific piece of defending. Yeah. This is the attacking clip that we want to show you. Let's play this on because it utilises the player lock. Pause it right there if we can. You can see here the player lock has pulled the defensive player away. Yeah. Why the player lock? 
Well, I think this here is a big key because I say that defensive AI is sometimes more powerful than attacking AI and it could feel if you just attack with, without these play locks could be quite stale uh, but this gives it a chance to run manually all right so you hit down both triggers L3 R3 yeah. and then Rustic switching to the player that you want to which in this case is Neymar I believe yep and what happens here is that he distracts Naysat's defense here. All right, so he's, he's gonna run wide, and Naysat, he just looks here. All right, he just looks here trying to stop this run. And we can see what happens. Yeah. Because the ball then progresses forward, and what happens is, if we just stop it right there, there. it creates the space right in here. Yeah, this is a big, big, back back. Uh, big space here. And this is thanks to the play lock. All right, so without this, probably would not uh, end up like this, but now he gets this big space. And then he decides quickly, all right, so he just here turns we around. It. We can see it. Play and he has well. a perfect angle for Trivela. And it is this year. It's a strong mechanic. Maybe even better than last year, so. Maybe. Probably, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Much stronger. Uh, this was the defensive play that we're going to see right here. You, in particular, wanted to break this down because there was a few errors that you saw from Nisa. And this is where the game really turned. 3-1, 35 minutes into it. It finished up with a cricket score in the end. Yeah, However, it was plenty of goals. He could have got back yeah, into I it. I don't understand quite why Nisov has to press so hard early on. I mean, it's 35th minutes and these games also extra long, I mean, nine minutes halves. And here, what's happening, okay, so he pulls, pulls out his centre back here, yeah. Militao, which means that there's a massive gap here. He, Look at this. All right, this is the danger area, yes, DA. Yeah, there we have it. All right, so this here, if this happens, he pulls him out, the lunge fails. Yeah. Doesn't get the ball back. What happens then? This player right, right there. This player, he's dragged out. Then, what you always must do is to recover position, which means he's, he's now gone. Run back as fast as you can. Back here, he doesn't make this. He's very eager. He, he feels stressed. And this opens. We can see what plays out yeah. in the end. Big, big space here. And yeah. he has left here a three man defense. All right, yeah. so Van Dijk, not the fastest. That is his biggest uh, weakness, should I say. So here, oh, we see said, yeah. All right, so game gone. If you now put this back slightly, yeah, I think here we'll, we'll, in this case, what would was you have probably done better choice? Yeah, you'd have gone with Fellow Mendy probably and pulled him back. Let's check here. Yeah, but here game is gone. Uh, down three one, ten men. Uh, that's gonna be very difficult. Yeah, but well, next time, if we put this back slightly, uh, if we could, <laughs> I can show you then. I think we're on a, we're on a tight choice? budget, boys. All right, all right. But what but, people can do. Go to your social media your channels backs. and they'll tell you about it. Full backs. Yeah. Yeah. And always recover. Always. Always recover. Bring that fullback across and it can do your defensive due diligence for you. More from the breakdown board throughout the rest of the broadcast. Back over to Frankie at the desk. I can't wait. I'm absolutely loving the breakdown board, but I'm also loving having Brian join me over on the desk to talk about Group B. Sadly, we couldn't name Group B after you, but you will be talking us through the action. And let's talk through the players we can see on the board behind us. Eight players here, but we're only going to see four go through to those group stages. And there are some big names here. I mean, obviously, we've got to talk about Nicholas and Fuma because that's our featured matchup. And that is going to be such a testing trial for both of these players. Fireworks. I mean, we're lucky that we get to commentate on it because what a game. Nicholas, the Iceman. I mean, look, so fast. Ryan seems to be proving it on FC24. Yeah, he's an incredible player. Obviously, two players that were in amongst the 12 players that were invited to the tournament. So we haven't seen too much of them this year. But from prior experience, we know how good they are on the biggest stages of all. And what's really interesting is we've also got Hidalgo, who may not have made his name as a solo artist, shall we say. I know it's not technically an FC term, but in 2v2, he's definitely shown what he can do. Yeah, absolutely. And he's somebody that, again, with his play style, very possession heavy, but he's very, very clinical in front of goal. And his opponent, Lex, to me personally, I think he's one of the best players in Europe right now. We've seen him come through the qualifiers, the ladder system, the Swiss, the Swiss yesterday as well. I think he's an underdog, genuinely. It's weird. I think he's actually slightly underrated, despite how good he is. I know you're wanting to jump in with an opinion, Brandon, but I know that we have got FG on the sidelines. He's going to be standing by with Olito. So before we do jump down to him, I mean, this is another player who's amazing at 2v2. I mean, he won the EA Sports Cup earlier this year. Yeah, I mean, look, you, you're right to say you've got a team of the season cup winner in there. You've got Olilito, 
teammates with Levy last year. Fingers crossed they could even be in the same group with, uh, with what we just saw there with the two South American players. So, yeah, all to play for. All we're seeing so far, really, is every name that is drawn is going to be going up against stiff competition. Only 20 can get through to those Monday night shows. But will one of those players be Olito? Well, let's see how he is feeling about the challenge with FG. <laughs> Yes, here I am backstage with the man himself, Oli Lito. Oli, yesterday you started absolutely brilliantly, 3-0, and got the job done. How was it? I mean, going 3-0 and didn't really happen to me a lot. So I got to be honest, I was feeling great after. Uh, then, of course, the last two games were only for sitting, right? So, I mean, uh, I think I lost a bit, little bit of energy there, focus. But overall, I mean, 3-2 and two is, uh, is fine as well. It's a brilliant, brilliant record indeed. And you're here today, you're ready to go. How was the preparation for you last night? Um, I was just waiting for the brackets for the whole night, to be honest, um, to come out. And then when we saw the bracket that we were playing today, we went to sleep early, um, went up, had breakfast, and then had a little bit of a gym session as well. And now here, you know. What do you think about the bracket that you're in? Um, I think it's a good bracket, uh, not the group of death. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, but still a very, very good bracket with Nicolas and Fuma, for example, in there, and even Montaxer. So uh, it will be very, very tough. Now, when we look at your style of play, especially at LAN events, you are sensational. You're electric, you're entertaining. Is that very much a thing you try to do? Because, I mean, there's a lot of people watching on Twitch right now and there's a lot of people tuning in to watch people like Oli Leo. Uh, I hope so, I guess. I mean, I think uh, my defense is also being my strongest part, uh, but I want to score goals as well and do some celebrations for the guys uh, watching, of course. So, yeah. Well, stay tuned. Oli Leo and others are still to come. All the best today, mate. Thank you. Thanks very much. We'll see if the ninja in pyjamas can perform after the break. But don't forget, we are going to have a feisty matchup on our hands to kick off Group B because it is going to be Fuma versus Nicholas and you do not want to miss it. So don't, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
The FC Pro Open Global Qualifier is brought to you by Herman Miller Gaming, the official chair supplier of FC Pro. EA Sports FC 24 tournaments are now live on PS5 and PS4. Compete for FC points and more in Ultimate Team or Kickoff mode. To sign up on PS5, head to the FC24 Game Hub on your PS5 and look for upcoming tournaments. You can also register in-game by scrolling to the bottom of the FC24 main menu and selecting PlayStation Tournament. On PS4, you'll find tournaments in the Events tab on your console. Sign up and show off your skills on PlayStation Tournaments. Hello everyone, welcome back to the FC Pro Open Global Qualifiers. We have sent through four players to their respective groups in our Monday night shows, but now we need to kick off Group B and select another four players. So, to talk us through some of the players and their drafts that they've brought to the field today, we're going to head over to the breakdown corner. Thank you very much, Frank. You have had an exhilarating day, and we're only halfway there. We've got four more spots for the FC Pro Open to find. We're going to kickstart with the Iceman. He's taking on Fuma in his, what, my opinion, the best game of the day so far. Amazing um, game, yeah. Let's have a look at Nicholas's team. We can see it on the big screen here. There is one player in this team that nobody else has used in the tournament thus far. It's a variation of a player. Walker. Can you tell me who it is? Walker, right. incorrect. Kevin De Bruyne. The gold one. Gold version of KDB. I also use him. He's actually great and has one of the best passing in the game. The passing is amazing, pink pass. Uh, so yeah, I think good choice though, but maybe not the best defensively. 65 defending could be an issue. Well, you got to think Valverde's probably going to step into that midfield as probably well. Probably will, yeah, probably yeah, will. Yeah, Torre next to him. It's a very, very good team from Nicholas. You wouldn't expect anything else. On the other side of the coin, we have Fuma's draft. Something quite interesting about this team. You can see it there for you. Yeah, and also both players using Lucio. Um, I think quite standard, uh, something that stands out. Mm, let's see here. I think Hernandez is not so common, right? Is but he? It actually is Lucio. There's only one or two players using Lucio in only? this tournament. Yeah. And it's I'm surprised, but Fuma and Lex. And, Lex. and I'll tell you, they've got identical teams. Identical. The exact same team. Yeah. I just spoke to Fuma then, I said, why Why you pick the same team? We practice together, we train together, we're going to use the same team. Where do you think the danger is in this squad? It probably looks to me, I mean, you've got the young Bellingham in the middle of the pitch, inform Bellingham, not the trailblazer Bellingham, Vinny Jr., Dembele out wide. Is this sort of team that you'd be looking at? It's a good team. You gave uh, an 8.8 .8 earlier to a squad. Yeah. Is this better than an 8.8? .8? I say 8.9. Oh. But one thing that I think is nice here that he has all attackers' fast skill moves. Uh, so that is going to offer a lot. Yeah, that's all fast skill moves. But something maybe that stands out is the bench. We have uh, Alicia Lehmann. A bit of a different choice. Big fan? He is probably. <laughs> also, as well, St. Maximin, another five star skiller. We got a couple of fullbacks. Love skilling, yeah. Yeah, on he the bench. Skilling. Alfonso Davis and Marcus Lorente. It's a, it's a really nice team. Would you say one team is better than the other in terms of the draft process? Eight million coins spent. Whose team would you rather be playing with if you're sat in that chair right now? I think both have, both have good balance, but I also like skilling, so probably I would prefer this team. And while we're waiting for the game to get underway, Group B is about to get underway. Fuma and Nicholas, they're playing in the first matchup. Do you see both of those two progressing after it's all said and done here? Yeah, I think after the first day, after Swiss, they're both looking very strong. So <laughs> this is maybe the toughest uh, and closest matchup we might have so far. Um, but I think in the end, I will probably see both players going through, yeah. It's just what Nicholas does. It really is. Always. He's I mean, since man. FIFA 17, he's been so consistent every year. It's, it's unreal. And I think also... You've actually, got a fact about him. A fact. I think he's the only player that has left in a tournament that is born in the 90s, actually. He's born 99. <laughs> So the rest uh, born 2000 and later, which is quite is actually old? fascinating. So you're telling me Nicholas, 99 FC. Yeah, he's the oldest player. I think so today, and that is quite mind blowing. Not overall, because I know Stokes is watching at home and he's pushing 40, but Nicholas is there and he's about to do it on the main stage. Let's head on over for this crunch match to our casters, Brandon and Wright. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I mean, Group A was unbelievable. The first round was 
like you just can't really call for much more than that, can you? But this one, this one, this should be like this should be a game at the FC Pro, not in the qualification stages for it. Nicholas against Fuma. I tell you two things: these players do have in common as well. They both won the playoffs, one of the biggest tournaments of the year. They both won yeah. it on the PlayStation a few years back now juggernauts in this scene taking each other on someone will remain on the winner's side of the bracket someone will drop down to that loser side i think that's the crazy part is the fact is that one person will have a loss already in the knockout stages which is a, a massive thing two players that have been incredibly consistent over the last couple of years nicholas more than a couple of years he's been how many world cup uh, how many times did he reach the championship i think it's five times five, five times he's played the world cup the, and people will talk about consistency, no matter the game, no matter the year. He's one of the few players that every single year, he just adapts. And I think that's, it's, a, it's an asset, I think it's slightly underrated. How I, year by year, we know how much sometimes the gameplay, the mechanics change. What doesn't change is the consistency from Nicholas and his composure. We rarely see him celebrate. I think I've only seen him celebrate once. A Champions League. <laughs> once, and that was it, once. But again, he's a player that's fantastic. Fuma though, again, incredible his play style is one to watch as well he scores a lot of goals his speed boost in possession he's one person that his aim is genuinely just to score as many goals as possible he might concede a few which is fair which happens but his aim is just to keep on and keep on scoring i think his goal could be as well this year to keep on winning e-league one titles as well because yeah, he, he wins all of those as well no matter who he's been playing for fc lorient is his current uh, team that he does represent on the other side as we said guild esports nicholas nicholas been living back in buenos aires as well recently lived in london last year for a bit no matter where he plays he always seems to deliver here is some of the group stages in the Swiss rounds we saw from yesterday these are players that are in this group that had Swiss games Montaxa was one of them playing the world finals last year got a top 16 finish he left it late in a penalty shootout yep he was zero and two so it could have gone completely different but he's managed to make it to the knockout stages he's a player again this group is unbelievable now that everybody looking into it. It's outrageous. Montax is one of the best players in the world. And there's a reason why he is here in this group. He's going to have a tough game as well up against Faku Cohen, who is 5-0. Who was 5-0 in the Swiss, which is outrageous. Olilito was 3-0, got the job done early on. Of course, losing the last two rounds, but he wouldn't really care too much. Obviously, it's based on seeding. Just getting into the knockouts is the priority. It, wow. Some of the names we haven't even mentioned as well properly with Hidalgo, Sean as well, representing um, from the Europe East region. Kyle Leverkusen in the virtual Bundesliga as well. Tiki celebration from him. There's one player that I want to talk about as well, because he hasn't really had a chance to be spoken about at all this year so far, and that's Lex as well. We'll yeah. speak about him when we see his game. But Nicholas, first and foremost, takes on Fuma in Group B. Eight players are already confirmed for this year's FC Pro Open. We'll find four more across the next few hours now. Fuma against Nicholas will be our opening matchup here in Group B. It's live from London. It is the FC Pro Open Global Qualifier. The Iceman is back in London, looking to make it to another EA Major event. All the matches ready to be played here. As we said, three games taking place alongside our main featured matchup. Let's jump into it right now. You know, one thing we haven't done today, Brandon. Go on. Predictions. You're on the spot. Prediction for this game. I, th I thought you were going to say sit down. <laughs> that, that too. But yeah, prediction, because you normally sit on the fence. I want a, I want a winner I don't, from this I game. Don't do oh, the prediction. Come on. I, I will do it for you, though. Go yeah. on. Um, what? This game or this, every game? This game. Nicholas, got to be. Okay, that's fair. I agree with you. I agree with you. I'm actually, I'm going to make a prediction as well. Because we've got other games going on as well. How many goals? Oh. In the game. Just how many goals in the game? Well, all together, yeah? Yeah. Five. Three, two. Three, two? Yeah, three, two. I'm even giving the scoreline. All the other game here. You can see Oli Lito ninjas in pyjamas. Good Swiss run from him yesterday as well. Four and one. Sean, LDW with Bayer Leverkusen. On the other side here, Nicholas kicking from left to right. And of course, Fuma from right to left. The FC Pro Open Global Qualifier is brought to you by Sony PS5, the official presenting partner of FC Pro this year. Nicholas, just a different breed when he gets to knockouts. 
Shows no emotion, real shows no signs of feeling pressure as well. Call him the Iceman for a reason. So his build up there as well. Controlled spin with Ginola to high press as well. I was going to take before Nicholas finds his first goal. Ginola. Good save by Alisson. What well, we've got a very small break in play, Ryan. Lex against Hildalgo. Some people have been saying Lex could be one of the best players in the world. He's not had a chance to prove it in the world because we've been on regional qualifiers, but he's had such a good start to the year. He's genuinely an unbelievable player. You see, pushed through it, the three ball pushed through. Couldn't find the intended target. But Lex, you said, honestly, I think it's fair to say amongst the community as well, especially in the European region, people will say he's probably been the best online so far. Obviously, you could associate Assault as well, representing Richard Dortmund. Didn't make it to this stage. He was unbeaten in the ladder and process to get to the Swiss format yesterday. But Lex has been phenomenal. Takes on Hildalgo in this opening round, and then Faku Cohen, a player that we haven't even spoken about yet. 5 0 in the Swiss. Here's Ginola. Oh, could they? Brave tackle there from Nicholas. That could have went awfully wrong. Spoke to Nicholas yesterday. I said, favourite player in his team, Valverde. Such an impact for him along the midfield three. I mean, looking at the drafts, whose draft would you rather have? I think I would lean with Nicholas. The Lucio addition there, I think it's a lot of coins to invest into a centre-back for Fuma. Ginola tries to up the legs around Kunde. Yeah, Torre comes into the mix as well, which is rather interesting from Nicholas. Carl Walker, over the choice of the ever popular Akimi in at right back. Mendy. Needs to change once or twice with Neymar down this dangerous byline now for Nicholas. He will just keep running on his arm, will fall back ever so kindly for David Ginola. And it didn't take long for Nicholas to make his mark in another competition you see him there pushing towards the byline he didn't didn't shift his intentions there just played towards the byline played for the pass across a very very bit of heavy bit of fortune there for it to fall to Gino but he, he tucks it away he takes the lead and it's one goal for Nicholas up against Fumo Dembele, Ginola. Trying to find a way through. Let's jump over, Olilito against Sean. There's been a goal over in that game, which way has it gone? It's gone the way of the Swede. I don't know what on earth has happened there. We might not want to see that one again. Ball bouncing around the box, did not look pretty at all. And it's Olilito that finds his way in front, remember as well. Faku Cohen against Montax was another game underway in this round. The unbeaten South American trying to remain unbeaten in the tournament. And Lex against Hildalgo, as soon as we have updates from those two games, we will give them to you. Vinicius Junior. Again, not a choice over the likes of Neymar. One more pass, doesn't need it. You saw the potential run there. Off the right back. Mend it. Neymar finds Yaya Torre, Nicholas looking for a second. 
Mbappe, oh. it's a tidy... Oh, you've got to be careful there. The Elastico was nearly timed perfectly, Ryan, to find the perfect gap between the two. Yeah, it was a perfect, perfect skill selection there. It was just a great challenge there from Fruma just to stop Nicholas in his tracks there from making it two goals to nil. And Nicholas seems very calm and composed and assured it with his build-up and his play style. The controlled sprint seems to be a, a mechanic he's using very, very heavily in offence and in build-up as well. Well, another goal in this game. Can't correct myself, it is Sean that does lead in this one. Not Oli Leeds, so sorry. By Leverkusen leading by two goals to nil. And I'm confident and happy to say that we've got uh, a special guest joining us on the broadcast in the commentary booth. Not just a special guest, we've got the world champion here from last year. Manny Bashaw, my friend, welcome to FC Pro. I mean, you must be itching to get playing. Yeah, of course. This season, it feels like I'm not even included yet, <laughs> but like the best has yet to come. And seeing this event live here in London is, is making me very excited for the group stages. And it's nice, obviously, to, to watch the uh, draw go on. Uh, and a quick one, teammate qualified, Levy, you must be buzzing for him. Yeah, of course, because I know him already before we were teammates, like when we were 14 years old, and now uh, he was really good this year, so I, I did not expect anything less of him. Well, we'll get your thoughts, Manu, across this first round of games. Great to have the world champ with us in the commentary booth. Big chance there for Fuma, might get another one now. Lucio offloads it to Ginola, who's onside. Thank you very much, 1-1. A slice of fortune again, but in fairness, Nicholas's goal had the same element of locking it as well. You'd, you'd expect the interception to stick there, but it, it worked out for Fuma. Well, we have to ask you, Manu, thoughts on this new drafting process we're seeing? Like, as a, as a pro coming into this, do you like what it does to the competition? Do you like how it shakes things up? Well, it was a big surprise when it first got introduced, of course, because I think in the last six years in competitive, we never even had restrictions, let alone like 8 million, because at home I think almost everyone plays with more than 8 million, so I was like, oh, how are the teams going to look like? But I think the teams look decent, but personally I prefer still to use the, the big ones, the, the R9s. The, the, the God Elite. Squads. Yeah. The God Squads. <laughs> I, think, I think we all would. We're going to jump back to uh, Oli Lito's game. We hear he has scored a goal over there. It was 2-0 down and has found a way back in the time. Bappe finding the perfect finish there. Well, speaking of the draft, Manu, who would be your most expensive player. I'll get you on the fourth night in a second. Oh, Fuma! With David Ginola around the corner, 2-1, he leads against Nicholas. Who would be your first player in the draft? Or I should say your most expensive player you're going to put in there? I think it's the same for everyone, no? Mbappe? Mbappe, yeah. Has to be in, has see? It's got to be in the team, 100%. And who would be your interesting pick? Well, I haven't really looked into it yet that much, but I like the idea of text with... Um, De Bruyne and Socrates because they have like um, good play style so I'll look into that for sure. Another member of the Socrates fan club? Well we'll see, we'll have to try him first but I like the idea at least. Well we're going to be seeing hopefully more drafts in the FC Pro Open Ryan so Socrates could be <laughs> yeah. could, could be in use again. Fuma, 1-0 down against Nicholas, leading by two goals to one in this game. Couple of step overs, what's the Trevella, Trevella from Bellingham! What wow. a turnaround! Turned the game on its head in a matter of moments. The Travella, the, the moment the ball was played back to Jude Bellingham there, as soon as the ball roll comes in, you know the Travella is going to be used there. I don't believe there was any goalkeeper movement, and it just floats over the goalkeeper. 3-1 lead, of course. Fimo was 1-0 down. And just from experience of having to play against Nicholas in probably the toughest tournament ever, how difficult is it to get into this position in a winning position against him? <laughs> It takes a lot of work, and even when you are in the winning position, which I've been, it's so hard to maintain because you know he will keep calm, he will like not lose his nerves, and will create still good opportunities to fight back into the game. And I think the only way to control a game against Nicolas is to score more because I think he's going to score regardless what you do. Which is so easy said than done, right? Because he's just yeah. <laughs> he's just relentless. And the one thing that he doesn't have this year, Ryan, to fall back on is a second leg. Oh, he doesn't. That could have been a pass into Juno there with space to push into the box. Did it man manage to find the intended target? Manu, in this situation, three minutes left. Just keep possession for last attack. Yeah, so Fuma has the ball, threw one up, and in this moment he gives <laughs> yeah. it away. So big chance for Nico. 
Oh, it's commentator's oh. curse, Manu. Oh, it's commentator's goodness. curse. Nicholas <laughs> has found another goal back in the tie just to make ever so sure. But as you're probably trying to explain, uh, Manu, um, try and yeah. look after the ball. Uh, this is the situation you want to avoid to concede before half time because if Fuma keeps the ball until minute 45, he still has one chance, which you probably even like get a good chance of, and you will not concede. So that's probably. One of the most re like best reasons to keep the last attack. Now you see three two. Nico is back, exactly. pressing, confidence. Everything switches in this moment. Now. And to get your thoughts, Mano, as we come into half time, how are you approaching nine minute halves now? These longer games. How are you sort of going into them and trying to break the games down? Because there's so much more time and there's yeah. so many more goals. Yeah, that's one thing. There's so many more goals, but I try to like calculate every time. Like, what would it be in six minutes? So they have a better feeling of how, how much time there's left. Good interception by Kule. Um, yeah, that's how I try to look at it. And of course, I see in this new game that there are a lot of comebacks. So leading two goals like Fuma now is or was means nothing. Opponent can come back very easy. So you have to keep going maybe until the last 20 minutes. Then you can look at the score a bit. But what's first 70 minutes. If, if, if you can remember, what's the highest scoring game you've had this year? What? Probably like 8-7, 9-8, eight, seven, eight, seven. Eight. yeah, crazy. Well, hold that for for a second. We've got more news over here. And unfortunately, if you're an Olilito oh. fan, look away. Penalty to Sean of Bayer Leverkusen. And next, Patel is fouled by David Ginola. I don't know why he was back there in the first place defending. He's in the book for a yellow card. And then what happened from this situation here is Hakimi that stepped up for Sean. Surprise, surprise, puts it away. Three goals to one, he leads. And it's a great example, Manu, as well of, I know I'm not saying that either player had a perfect Swiss, but you, you could, all you want to do in Swiss is just get through. Yeah. There's no one sitting there going at the end of it, oh, I did this and I went 5-0. Oh. You've just got to get through to be in the conversation. In the end, it's just about getting through. I saw, for example, last game of Umut, he was 2-2, two 4-2 two, two down. He threw and now everyone thinks he's the favourite. So yeah. it's a matter of going through. The Swiss changes nothing of who's the favourite or not. It's just a fact of getting through, and then you, if you have the big name, you're probably always still the favourite. Doesn't matter, 5-0, and 3-2, oh, and, oh, and that's the mentality you have to, uh, have to have. Just got to get through. Just got to be in the knockout stages. Let's have a look at the, the highlights. I want to see this game a little bit more, Ryan, because we're, we're big fans to see what Lex is like on LAN. And uh, believe it or not, it was actually Hidalgo that went one the up. 31 minutes on the clock. Isabio finds his way into this draft team we saw the score it's 3-1 as it currently stands oh what a goal that oh was oh my goodness <laughs> wow Alexa Patelis there massive celebration from Sean as well how about that one from 30 plus yards out Faku Owen we said about hype in Swiss and about playing well he went 5-0 and in Swiss and I can confirm right now he is currently leading two goals to one in that game we'll jump back to this one now Faku Owen, Ryan, looking looking pretty confident. Yeah, he is. Hold on, we've got an attack. <laughs> Pass across goal. Didn't manage to find the intended target. Manu, do you prefer nine-minute halves or do you prefer six-minute halves, best of two? Best of two. For sure. Best of two, yeah. okay, okay. But this may be because I'm more used to it. Yeah. Uh, I experience a lot that I like, lose the first leg and then I just need that a few more minutes just to calm down, get, get something to drink, talk with my coach, whoever yeah. is, is there. And to get like that fully mental reset, because now, of course, you have the pause menu and stuff, but yeah. you're still in the game. But when you have that fully mental reset, it's still way different than the pause menu. Do you think having the pause helps a lot, or is it still something where you still prefer being out of the game? Hold on a second, the step over from Nicholas, the extra pass could have gone for goal there. Well, it depends, of course, because when you are playing well on the first leg, you want the game to keep going so you don't lose momentum. But when things are not going your way, it's probably better to have a bit of a longer break in between the games and start all over again, push yourself a bit more. And yeah, it depends, really. <laughs> Nicholas coming so close to finding an equaliser. Pressing very well, only one goal behind in this game. Olilito finds himself in an even more difficult situation. Sean on flames. De Jong back to Ginola. Was there a one more pass needed? Yes, there was. Mbappe 
finding the cutback. 4-1 in that game, Ryan. Olito, three goals he trails. I would say... Would you say that's an upset? I would say is I think Ololito coming into this tournament is one of the favourites based on previous accomplishments and his performance in initially in the Swiss format. Well, you have to say that's an upset, of course, because yeah. Ololito was one of the invited players. So, of course, he was seen as one of the players with the most accomplishments over the last few years. So, and Sean, I think it's but one it's of maybe his first LAN event. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure you can talk about an upset. Who is one player you would not want to play against right now? Right now, it's my teammates, of course, Leifi and Emre, but if I have to choose someone else, I think Lex is looking really strong this year with the online season from what, what I've seen. What's, what's it about Lex that's been so good as well? I know we haven't really got to see it offline, we're seeing it partly now, but why has he been so good? What's it about him, his play style, or just his approach to FC? When he's at his top level, he's just very clinical, and not only in the finishing, but also in the passes. So his build-up is very good, and it's difficult to get pressure on him, which makes you a bit, I would say, it uncomfortable in defense, and he always seems to find the the free guy in the in the box, so that it's just amazing quality from him. Well, unfortunately, speaking of Lex, after we've just hyped him up, he's 2-0 down against Hildalgo at the moment. Yeah, wow. Which would uh, which be a huge result for Spanish player. Feels like Nicholas has had loads of the ball here. 28 minutes left into the final third of the game. Yeah, Torre runs into the feet of Bellingham, scores around the grounds at the moment. Faku Cohen against Montaxa is 2-2 in that game. That's 55 minutes on the clock. There's been another goal in Olilito versus Sean LDW. I don't know what has happened there from the Ninjas in Pyjamas player. It's gone from bad to worse for him again. We'll give you the replay as soon as we can in that game. Alongside the other goals. They're going in alongside our featured matchup. I wonder how many players, man, I'm sorry to interrupt you, have chosen Lucio at centre-back. Manny, would you choose Lucio? Would he be someone that you'd well, use the coins on? As I said, I haven't really looked into it yet, but from the teams I saw, Lucio is very interesting to me. It's also like an option I would like to explore, if the squad limit stays at 8 million, of course. But yeah, he's really good, of course, this year with the Playstar Plus. Yeah, yeah. I think Block is his Playstar Plus, yeah. so... Yeah, great, great, great play to have in your team, of course. Corner. The Iceman. That's an aim. Where's that Travella going to come from? Oh. Paul Bowie. Oh, Nicholas! Ah, that's outrageous. Oh, Nicholas. So smart! That's a beautiful goal. Set piece, Nico. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I think he done it perfectly there because he used the Bruin. To me, I don't know about you, I would move the goalkeeper there. Yeah, it's so you kind he, of basically, fall asleep. he basically gets you into a situation where you have to choose. You have to, he has like three options probably you could do. So yeah. Travella, pass, maybe even cross. So yeah, you have to choose. And I think Fuma chose to move the goalkeeper for the Travella and was just very clever from Nico to see that, to spot that pass there and good finish. And to, and to push your opponent into that position, Ryan, of just having to, to work out what on earth you're going to do is just so difficult. Well, I'll get your thoughts on that in a second. Let's have a look at the goal that Sean has scored again. Oli Lito is going to find himself in an elimination game off the back of this. Oh. Goal goes in for Sean. That makes it five goals to one. Theo Hernandez, I didn't know he could do that. Apparently he can. Oli Lito did get a goal back. And this is how that one went in. Ginola might be on a yellow card after giving away that earlier penalty. 63 minutes on the clock in that game. Oli Lito, it's just, it's how it goes sometimes in these tournaments, man. You can have a great day one, you come into day two, there's just more pressure on you. Well, never say never, of course, 30 minutes left. And in this game, when you get that first goal, always possible to come back. But yeah, it looks really tough for him, mountain to climb. But Oli Lito, if you have to say one quality of him, it's his mentality. So yeah. when he comes into that loser bracket, you know his head will not be down and he will be full and confident to, to clutch up that spot. No, oh, absolutely. Like I said, there's a lot of time still left to be played. We are still playing nine-minute halves. So I have to keep reminding myself that we've got these extra long halves here in the FC Pro Open Global Qualifier. Fuma Nicholas is 3-3. As expected, we knew it was going to be a tightly contested game. 3-3 in this one. I think in these, these type of games, when I mean, the level of opposition is, is so high, it's at the elite level, I think those little errors play into 
to the, the results of the game. That little mistake there at the end of the first half genuinely could have changed the whole dynamics of this game. As we see Fuma trying to respond. Oh, he stepped forward with that. Oh, it's a good recovery. Step forward there. Yeah, it changed a lot, of course, because if we go into that halftime yeah. with 3-1, all different scenario for Nico, all different talks in the in halftime with his coach, so all different approach of the second half. Yeah. Bappe with a step over is Nicholas cooking up the perfect chance and Bappe one oh, more pass. Oh, I deserved the goal, deserved it. I thought that was going to be it. Juan comes to Nicholas for that was it. He was off his feet. It's just the cancelling of the. I don't know what you call that. It's like the. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but he's but just cancelling every time. Effect. Incredible. There's something for me to learn as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nico's taking the back pipe in a running race with Lucio. I mean, when you come to these tournaments, man, I'm sure you'll have a lot of time tomorrow as well and weeks before the FC Pro Open kicks off. Is it a case of you, you said they're learning from Nicholas? We just watch certain moments in games and just try and add it to yours? Well, for me, it's a matter of playing a lot, not necessarily watching. Of course, it's a big part as well, but for me, playing is the like. 75% of how I improve and in that while playing I'll learn from my opponents as well so I, I, I have faith in myself as long as I play enough I'll I'll know everything how many games do you reckon you'll, you'd have played by the end of the year end of the year I don't know about games but like every day at least like three four five hours last 10 minutes I feel like Nico has taken control in this game uh, it's important for Fuma now to Oh, penalty! Oh, no! Look like he went down to ground and... He saw the red time shot come in, so it looked like he stopped him from having the, the shot animation. Final eight minutes. Nice touch from Alfonso Davies. Defended even better by Hakimi. Ooh, this is it. This is where Fuma's oh, at. Dangerous. No, this could be dangerous. Ginola on his own. Does he need anyone else? Of course he doesn't. Big goal that could send Nicholas down into an elimination matchup. But do not write him off yet. Never. I think just exploiting the space there with the step over, getting the speed boost. And I spoke about earlier over there when we were with Frankie Brandon, just the, the way Fuma plays, his play style, genuinely, the speed boost, the step overs, he's perfect. He might be honestly one of the best players at utilizing those mechanics. If you could describe Fuma with one goal, it's this Yeah, one. genuinely, this is the goal. Yeah. He just maximizes it. A lot of people would think that maybe that space, there's a lot of defenders around there in close proximity, so maybe you might ball roll, scoop, turn back, but he just goes for it. And it seems to work out every single time, just there. Just head down, run. Goals, yep. Green time, Green thank you very much. Well, yep, exactly. He makes the most of the opportunities when it comes his way, and that's a massive goal. Obviously, there's still moments left in the game for Nicholas to come back. He would trust himself, his coach would trust Nicholas as well. But it's a big, big statement to get that goal. One goal lead against Nicholas, seven minutes left in the game. What do you do in this scenario? Uh, from this year, of course, five at the back got banned, so, and three at the back as well. So he needs to switch into a four, four back formation, probably four, two, three, one, four, five, one. Play it only over the wings. Don't take any risk at your own half. And when you are in like Nico's half, then keep the ball there. Try to win as much time as possible. And uh, only thing you can do. <laughs> Let's see if he can make it happen. There has been some goals in our other games as we've got the world champion Manny Bashaw here with us. What's the latest over here? Montaxa. Oh, pen. Wins a penalty. With 12 minutes left on the clock, I think he was 2-0 down in this game, remember? Against Faku Cohen, he was 5-0 yesterday. Montaxa, 10 minutes away from saying, you can forget about your 5-0 yesterday, you knocked out the tournament, and I'm potentially going through to qualify for the FC Pro Open. Hildalgo still leads against Lex, three goals to two, 10 minutes left in that game. Four-time result, as we already have seen, Sean against Olilito. Massive win for Sean, LDW. 
He's in. That's on side. Forward. It's on side. Of all people, the 84 rated for PSG. One more pass. He's on side as well. Into Mbappe! Oh. And it looks as if Nicholas is off to the trenches, down into Elimination FC. That's game over. Wow. wow. That's a great goal as well, utilising just the passes, the ball roll inside. Makes the most of it. Nicholas and his close, they're confused. They don't know what else they can do to try and get back into this, but he's maximised that situation for him. They didn't even celebrate. Just the extra pass there, the, the shot across the face of goal. It's a two-goal cushion, not many moments left in this game. And I think I agree with you, Manu, I think it's all done. Yeah. Well, there was another goal. We thought Montaxa was cruising. It isn't that simple when you're up against an unknown quantity such as... Haaland, wow. Matthew well, Cohen. Haaland's on the pitch, Rolfo's on the pitch too. Bellingham takes matters into his own hands, quite literally. Oh and says, yes, please, that's 3-3 in that game. Eight minutes left in that one. Who is going down to the lower side of the bracket play there? I think I saw the same kind of pass with the skill move cancel from, um, yeah, in that goal. I think it's something Argentinian, probably, which <laughs> they found out <laughs> You need to together. put that in your locker, you've got yeah. to have that. <laughs> right, I'm going to paint you guys a picture. This is probably a little bit unfair. We're looking at Lex against Nicholas. One of those two will be eliminated in an elimination game if the scores stay as they are right now. It looks like Fuma will be coming through. He will be taking on Hildalgo. If Hildalgo can see out the result there, Hildalgo is currently winning three goals to two against Lex. And in time has been played. Massive win for Fuma. He's one win away from the FC Pro Open. Nicholas throws his headset off. He is potentially playing against Lex in his next game. Cool. That is a huge, huge matchup. Regardless of who loses in that game between Lex or Hidalgo, it's a massive, massive game, I'll be honest. You don't want to play any of those players in the loser bracket. But for Nicholas, very gracious in the feet, manages to just get up and just go back to the drawing board. Not, not nice, uh, sorry, not nice matchmaking, that is it? In a limited oh, uh, <laughs> If I lost against Fuma and then see that I'm playing Lex to stay in the tournament, never mind qualifying for the next stage, I would be like... What have you done to me? <laughs> Hold that thought for a second. Let's jump over to this one right now. Hildalgo leading three goals to two. Against Lex, added time of two minutes. Hidalgo is in possession here in this Arsenal kit, I believe. Just keeping possession, holding it. He's got press of Lex behind him. Added time of two minutes. Should be over the line unless Lex can win the ball back now. Big head up. Virgil van Dijk is there on the rebound. Ginola's chasing him down. It's got to be, that's it, I think that's done. Surely job done. Hildalgo, massive result for him. He will now take on Fuma in a game to qualify for the FC Pro Open. We can confirm <laughs> Nicholas Lex in an elimination game. One of those two will be knocked out of the tournament, but there's also been a late goal in the Faku Cohen Montaxa game. Which way has this one gone? It's a terrible bounce back. He's fallen the way of Mbappe. He links in wow. to Eastman Dembele. One more pass into Modric. That game isn't done yet, but it's very close to being done. 89 minutes on the clock there. Faku Cohen could remain unbeaten. He could do. That's a turnaround because there was a moment in that where I thought maybe Montaxa could see it out. He's done well to come back into this game. Moments left to be played, a couple minutes plus added time. So for Montaxa, he's going to need a goal basically from kickoff. Does it surprise you every year when we come back to competitions, Manu, and there's just a new name? There's just another name, isn't there? Well, I, I was a name sometime well, as well. That so was a nah, it's, it's part of everything in life. So football, FC. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me, but still it's kind of... Like, the game itself surprised you, but that in general a new name has popped up? No, that's not. Faku Cohen on his way, minutes away, let's jump into it. Modric, a player that only a few pros did draft. Champions League item. Montaxa. Not in possession, Faku Cohen. Great dribbling. Just holding possession, taking time out of the game. Marcus Lorente, this is... Great, great dribbling and game management there from Faku Cohen. That is incredible to keep the ball in the corner. And still got possession somehow, right? Wins a corner to Montaxa. 
this is, this is even more bizarre. Montaxa, Olilito. Full-time result there. Faku oh. Cohen of Tuzzy oh, Esports. They could be on their way to having two players from their organisation at the FC Pro Open. Full time there. There's one more game to conclude. Oli Lito against Sean LDW. Another example of what the virtual Bundesliga is also doing as well. League partners playing a massive part in the FC Pro Open, or the, sorry, FC Pro in general this year, and they will do. This is before the league's even kicked off. You've got another young prospect coming through from Germany, Bayer Leverkusen have picked up a serious player here. 7-3 he leads, Ryan. He's going to be taking on Faku Cohen for a chance to qualify for the FC Pro Open. Yeah, we didn't, of course, get to see the whole game, but from glimpses from the replays, we've seen how dominant he has been and clinical in front of goal. It's, a, it's an upset. It's Olilito dropping to the loser bracket where he'll be playing Montax. And, of course, the game to qualify of two bites of the chariot will be Sean up against Faku Cohen. That's going to be a massive, massive game. That, that elimination game there, Manu. Montax or Olilito? Oh, you have two. So you have Lex against Nico, and then you have Montax against Olilito. I think it's fair to say maybe, arguably, four underdogs won in this round. I think you could argue that off what past track record of yeah. previous competition years. Olilito trying to find one more goal. He will do so, but... Fortunately... Be much more than that. Quite an impressive story there as well. The coach that sits behind Sean LDW was Marv. He actually used to play for Bayer Leverkusen many years on. He's the coach of the next prospect coming through. Smiles all round. They'll be one game away. Faku Cohen takes those on. I think you're right though, Manny. You would have sat here and honestly, from a a fan of this eSport, you'd have said, right, surely Oli Ito and Montax are win, and surely Lex and, and Nick... And, I mean, not Nicholas. That's, that's a tough game to call yeah. Nicholas Fuma. He's a great player as well. But full-time results across the boards. It's crazy elimination games to come. <laughs> crazy. As, he, as Manu said, I, I think we could say it's been four upsets. Like the players, if we were to make a... We lost our prediction. That's the last time, by the way, I'm making a prediction. Agreeing you with you. You want to do predictions, right? No, no more. Not with you now. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be honest. There are four, four games where I would have actually said the players that lost, I would have expected them to win. Not, that's no disrespect to the opposition, but I just think just namesake on paper. But again, it's been fantastic performances across the board from the winners. The losers, of course, still have a second chance to progress in this tournament. But it's an uphill battle. They go up from the loser bracket if they want to stand a chance with Nicholas losing against Fuma, which is a, a massive, massive statement from, from Fuma. Absolutely. Well, Manu, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here on the commentary booth with us. What can we expect from you this year? Another world title maybe next year would be nice? Well, let's first get through the groups, <laughs> then get to the World Cup. But yeah, I, I hope so. I, I'll do my best. I'm extremely motivated to do it again because the feeling was incredible when I won the World Championship last year. So, yeah, there would be nothing better to do it twice, no? Have you seen your group yet? Well, I've seen that um, Gabriel's in it, Italian. So it was a big surprise to beat Levy in the last minute and also the game before against Young. Some late, 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 uh, late drama. So he looks very good from the games I've seen. And uh, I'm looking forward to see the other other participants in the group. And if Anders qualifies, would you mind him in there? Be a good well, game, wouldn't it? Yeah, he could be in it, but... Of course, we'll save it for the for latest. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm, just, I'm just trying to build up. I'm just trying to build up anyway. <laughs> Manny Bashaw, world champion, joining us on the commentary booth. Absolute pleasure. As round one is concluded from Group B, for now, it's over to Frankie. I can't wait to see if a gang does make it through and does end up in Group C against Manny Bashaw. But Anders isn't playing until tomorrow. And right now, we need to talk about the results in round one of Group B. So, Faku Cohen taking it with a late surge. Four to three. Oli Lito, a bit of an upset here going down four goals to Sean LDW seven. Lex two to Hidalgo three. And finally, in that marquee matchup, Nicholas FC three. Fuma, a very impressive five. So that throws the bracket slightly into disarray because Nicholas FC is facing an elimination game against Lex. We could lose one of our front runners 
in the next best of one. But I don't know if that is going to happen. And I don't know what our analysts are going to say about the matches we just witnessed. So let's head over to them now. Thank you very much, Frankie. Some incredible games, it's got to be said, here in Group B, round one. We've picked a Nicholas clip yeah, for us because losing. he might be eliminated yeah. very soon. And this might be the last bit of Nicholas gameplay we get to see from the SE Pro Open. It's genius from Nicholas. This goal is so nice, yeah. We're going to see Let's this see whole sequence. And so he sets the trap firstly yeah. with De Bruyne on the Traveller. We'll come back to that later. Yeah, this has a big impact. All right, so he tries then kind of the same play, and Fuma expects the same now. Okay, so pass going back and back here, expecting the same shot now. Travella, but instead... So we expect this. The same. Basically, Travella yeah. into the far post. But now, Nicolas showing why he's so good and why he's so dominant every year. He has the variation and the quick change here. Instead of Travella, he makes this very pass. clever pass. Love the pass, but you don't see that often anymore, but he has incisive plus play style. Let's have a look at it, because it's beautiful. It's got to be Big said. Pass, yeah. The it defender, is. Van Dijk, expect the Travella. The entire defence moves across. Nicholas tied up the game at 3-3. It was a piece of magic from the Iceman. Will he be able to do it? That's the question, Boras. Do you see him going through the loser's bracket? It's a tough bracket, but knowing him, I think he should bounce back. Let's wait and see. Nicholas is going to be in action very shortly indeed against Lex. FG has been out and about catching up with some people. FG, where are you? Well, I am here in our lovely players' tunnel. Wow, what a night so far. But the action doesn't stop quite yet. We're going to head to a quick break, but come back to us because we've got the conclusion of Group B. So let's go to a break and we'll see you soon. The FC Pro Open Global Qualifier is brought to you by Herman Miller Gaming, the official chair supplier of FC Pro. Welcome back to the FC Pro Open Global Qualifier. We are speeding through Group B, and if you missed us before the break, you did miss some upsets. Fuma versus Nicholas was always going to be tightly contested. But most people would have expected the ball to be in Nicholas's favour, but it was actually Fuma who was able to stun with some incredibly beautiful FC goal goodness. Now, we are going to have more goodness as well tomorrow because we're going to see Group C and Group D kick off. And some people are referring to Group C as the Group of Death. And one of the players who is going to be trying to qualify and battle his way through that group is Umut. So we send FG to go and talk to him. 
Okay, now, so I spoke to Anders. It's only right that I speak to Anders' teammate, Umma. Umma, first things first, let's recap yesterday. You're here. Happy to be here. It was a little bit nerve-wracking, wasn't it? Of course, I'm really happy to be here. Like, uh, it, was, it was a crazy day yesterday. Uh, I choked a little bit, to be honest. Uh, I was 2-2, but in the final game, I could manage uh, to win the last game. Also, God was on my side a little bit. Uh, I was a little bit lucky, but uh, I think it's uh, how the game is working. How do you stay so, so calm under so much pressure? Because that last game was super, super tense. There was goals, there was rebounds, there was various things going, but you were so calm. I think it's really imp important to be in focus and just, just to be calm because uh, you couldn't change anything. You just have to play your game and uh, uh, one day you're lucky and uh, it's enough and one day you're not lucky and it's not enough. So I couldn't, couldn't change anything, so just stay in focus. Now the people who are watching will probably already know about the bracket that you're in. Um, what do you make of the potential bracket of death? I, I know my group is really good, but I know also when I have a good day, I can beat everyone. So uh, I, I just hope I am not playing against Anders because he's my teammate. And uh, of course, we are close friends, so it would be like uh, not nice to play against each other. And I think when we play against each other, then it will be like the final game to qualify. Of course, then uh, someone of us will be uh, very mad. So I don't uh, hope that it, uh, we will meet us. Well, it's been absolutely amazing catching up with you. You go and enjoy the rest of the day and we will see you tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Great work from FG, getting all the gossip ahead of tomorrow's group of death in Group C. Umut seems confident, I think he's got enough to get over the line, but that group is unbelievably tough, it's got to be said. Back into Group B is where we find ourselves, and before every game, you know what happens, it's draft talk. Let's get into it, Boras. First team that we're going to be seeing is Montaxas, Montaxa. the Italian. He started 0-2 yesterday in Swiss, he found yeah. his way to 3-2. and two. Anything there that you've seen maybe a little bit surprising? I think now team's getting quite the same. Uh, we need to see something more. We need to see like Zico, Zanetti, <laughs> these that? guys. Is now, yeah. This attack, attack is, is 6.3 million coins of the budget. Yeah, and I think overall that's the best choice. Like you should prioritize attack because that is the toughest part now is to get these, these goals. You must put the, the budget up top. Because in midfield and defense, you could find some great options that are quite budget. And what you got? Quite, 200k, quite 60k. It's not so much, yeah. 15k. And it's, and it's efficient. It is enough. Now, one thing though that we could be mentioning is that he has a quite big budget on the bench, but these games are also long, so I mean, having the squad depth will make a big difference. You got Dembele game Messi, yeah. So it's good bench. Son as well. Son right as at well. the bottom of the screen. You can't forget about Son coming on. On the other side of it, we've got your good friend. Uh, Oli Lito, my bro. He struggled today. Yesterday he started three and zero. He found his way to three and two in the Swiss. It was a tough defeat against Sean. Anything in his team that you, you're really looking at? I mean, Valverde getting the nod instead of De Jong or Patelles. It's going to be those two in midfield. Maybe Neymar is that third centre midfielder. Um, is that how you sort of see this team lining up? Four three two one. Uh, probably yes. I think that's how most most players now, most pro players playing. That's the most. That's the meta simply. Uh, four, four three two one. But defense is the same as Montaxa. That's like yep. the same identical. The bench though different. Uh, he loves yes, Mitoma, but doesn't pick Mitoma though. I think surprising. But he has Kiesa, Centurions, which is not that cheap, but he has the pace. And again, against tire legs coming in being 90 plus pace yeah. could be a difference. Absolutely. Let's see. It might go to extra time. It might go to penalties. One of these two competitors will continue their hunt for an FC Pro open spot. The other one, it's the end of the line. Over to our casters, Brandon and Ryan. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, I mean, look, how on earth is this our elimination game we're looking at in this Group B? Montaxa was in the World Cup last year up against Olilito, a foot Champions Cup winner, a player that has won E-Premier League titles, has been in this scene and remains so, so consistent. One of them will be leaving the tour and one of them will not be making it, unfortunately, to this year's FC Pro Open. Montax is still a free agent as well. Probably a very underrated player as well, to be honest, Ryan. Yep, absolutely, of course. The countdown's beginning to get into this massive game. Loser goes home. Winner progresses into the next stage of the loser bracket. I'll be honest, I don't, I don't want to see either go home. Uh, it is very, very tough to see any of these players. But this guy, Nicholas. Flex. Ow! Flex against Nicholas. One of those two will also be leaving the tournament and they'll be going back to their drawing board, potentially virtual leagues. 
might have to fall back on the League One for Lex if he can't find it here, or maybe an E-Champions League run later on in the season. We'll stay with this one as our featured match. Montaxer against Solilito, both come off the back of disappointing results. Solilito, by his own standards, is maybe a little bit leaky in that first game. Yeah, he'll be definitely disappointed with that. Of course, Montaxa kicking from it left to right, left to right, wearing the right, the white kick. The, 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 white, the white and the right. <laughs> and of course, Olilito in the black kick, kicking from right to left. Montaxa, from experience, is one of the hardest players I've, I've played against, genuinely, in the last couple of years. An incredible, incredible player. Offensively as well is, is next level. Olilito as well, an outstanding competitor throughout the years. Not just in 1v1, not just in 2v2, but also as a person. I think he's one of the most, the most humble people you can get in the scene. That's not going to win him the game today. What's going to win him the game is being ruthless in front of goal and defensively assured, more so than he did show in the first game against Sean. He needs to turn it around. In terms of the, the mental side of things, Brandon, of course, you have Olilito coming from a game where it was out of his hands from, from quite early on. He was down by four, sometimes I think maybe maybe even down by five at a period in that game. Whereas Montaxa lost the game very late on against Faki Corrin. So that's going to be playing on his mind a little bit. We saw with Nisa in group one or group eight earlier on today, how impactful it can be losing later on going into the next stage of the knockout tournament. Could that play a factor as well? It definitely could. I think what's more important, right, is it's a wake-up call, knowing that this is no doubt the biggest game you're going to be playing in quite some time. It sets the tone for so much, especially for Montaxa in a free agent position right now. As with Genova last year, represented them at the, the World Finals. And again, another player that has backed their ability and said, look, I want to go as a free agent, see what I can do to put me in the shot window for a contract. Still 0-0. As Lex and Nicholas just kicks off. Ginola, cut back. Montaxa! Oh, some incredible block there from Olilito to stop a definite goal if that was in. With that, so he made it past the defensive block there from Militao. Saw the slight differences in the draft. So, thoughts on Bellingham, team of the week Bellingham? He, that he, variant that comes in for Olilito. Yeah, he was an option, and we, have, we submitted our own personal drafts. He was an option in the midfield that I went with as well. I think you could go with De Jong if you want to save some coins. You can go with Valverde's item as well, the regular one. I don't recommend the inform. I think it's a bit costly, but I think Jude Bellingham in-game, the inform item is, is very, very effective. will be the next two players. To join that FC Pro Open, Mendy. Lex Patelis, Mbappe down that byline, causing nightmares. Still how is he kept that in? Just about to no longer chance to strike. The Montaxa. We'll find the first goal in this one. And a very stressful switch stages yesterday. Left it late. You saw it's a penalty shootout, I think it was in the end yesterday in the back room where 64 players competed yesterday for Elita right now. I hate to say it, but him scoring first would have been so much more important in this one, Ryan. Absolutely, it's a, it's a tough goal to concede. Incredibly well shielded by Mbappe up against Van Dijk in the box, playing it across there. And the composer just to finish it with you know, one of the marquee players or marquee forwards that are selected in and amongst the squads. One of the most expensive players that you could select in this draft out of the options that were available. Well, this is the qualification match we've got here. Faku Curran, who did beat Montaxa. It was a last minute goal in the game. Leads by a goal to nil against Sean. And as we leave that one, Olilito. Equalises in this one. Did not take him long at all to respond. But the Faku Cohen, Ryan, 
What a story that one would be. I think a player that no one would have called finding his way through. This is the goal that Olinito scored as we left the match up. A fortunate bounce back. Ginola's never going to say no from that far out. No, but that's why you trust the players with the five-star week for in the area. Those goal scoring opportunities, they make the most of them and they make it count. Olinito responding instantly. They're levelling up the game. It's one goal apiece between Montaxa and Olilito. But just speaking on Faku Cohen, as you said, who may or may not have scored another goal. We have an update in that game shortly. He's somebody that, in my opinion, as I said, very under the radar. I didn't know too much about him personally. I've heard rumours, I've heard Nicholas speak about him as well, but he wouldn't be somebody that I would say is a cert to make it, let alone go potentially 7-0, which is a, a huge statement if he's able to see out that win. Keeming. Montaxa. Trinado has been in amongst all the goals. Rodalgo against Fuma has kicked off as well. 30 minutes in that one, 0-0. Mendy patient. So many players around in the step overs down this dangerous area. Hansen, Ginola. Oh, oh brilliant. No, no, no. That's, oh. Brilliant football from Montaxa. I'm clapping. I'll be honest, Montaxa, that is outrageous. That's unbelievable to finish there. Just the way he built up there with the controlled sprint with Mendy towards the byline. It seems very simple. It looks simple. It looks easy. It's just the way he does it. He picks the moments. He could have turned back there. I believe it was with Hanson. I'd love to see that again. He could have turned down and shot. But he, in my opinion, that is the obvious thing to do. And he's managed just to buy this time, be a lot more composed and play for the pass and the, the guaranteed goal, playing it across goal. He sort of just worked it and worked it and worked, didn't he, to find the perfect chance. It's a beautiful goal. Well, you teased us about Faku Cohen scoring again. He has scored again. And this is the goal that he scored. The South American player that was unknown coming into this tournament. 15 minutes in, he leads two goals to nil. There could be a situation where Tuzzy Esports could have two players. Now the FC Pro Open by the end of this game. And I think we've also got another goal if we can see it. Hildalgo against Fuma. Match approaching the 20th minute there. We'll give you the update and the lowdown from that match as we can. That's also a qualification game. One of those two will be booking their spot in the FC Pro Open. Just does so well, doesn't he, of his fullback, Smontak. So look at that interchange there between Anton and Keeney. The full Valverde had to come back and defensively be strong. Good trigger there. Doing it up against Hakimi. He's not many players in the box. They're trying to get some support. And he's going towards the byline. Plays it down. The reverse elastic of it. It was a good tackle there from Montax. So just to stop the attack in its tracks there. How important is it, Ryan, to always overload your fullbacks? Because they just seem like every time there's a goal at the moment it's coming from the byline yes it's very effective and it has been for a number of years now having the fullback at well one fullback on balance if you play a 4-3-2-1 use them as the out ball for the switch um, they never really get marked so it's an easy outlet you can just play it down and bide your time we saw levy early on playing for the switches and just waiting for the open space if you look at the mini map with the radar down below you can just see the right back just drifting forward there's no one near him so if he manages to get a switch you can play it into one of the midfielders or attackers to, to make the use of the space. Well, a lot of people have been saying that, haven't they, that this year the, the fullback doesn't get tracked. And there's just so much space that becomes available, hence why there's always that switch ball one. Five minutes from half time. And we have had a goal in the Lex Nicholas matchup as well. I'll give you the goals from that one. And Hildau will go. Thuma as soon as we can. Let's jump over to that one first and foremost. Hidalgo went one up in this game. Thuma has responded. 23 minutes on the clock. Virgil van Dijk just couldn't get rid of it quick enough. Mbappe was on him. Next few note, 1-1 one, one in that game. Winner of that qualifies for the FC Pro Open. Keeping.
Very disciplined there from Montaxa. Could have pushed forward and tried to drill a pass into Mbappe and lost possession. But he's biding his time. He's going to wait for the last attack just to see if there's one more moment he can capitalise on before the half-time whistle blows. Literally, Pateas pushing towards the byline again. There's not many options in support. You can't go too far back here. It's brilliant play into Ginola. It's going to be Hansen. He's got to go forward. And I think that will do us for half time in this matchup. Let's jump over. Nicholas Lex, where's the goal gone? It's gone the way of Olympic Lyons. Professional FC Pro. Usman Dembele times it green. He's a starter in this draft for Lucas Lechel. It's a perfect start there. Nicholas, as we said, whoever loses that is being eliminated. It's only 25 minutes played, though. That is <laughs> some massive goal for Lex in that game, of course. As you said, there's still a long way to go, a very long way to go. And in this game, we're able to look at Fakukum versus Sean LW. This is a replay. Great bit of skill move there to play it across goal for an easy finish. Again, even the two-goal lead in this, of course, the goal we just saw between Lex and Nicholas is playing it towards Dembele, green timed on his left foot, in at the near post, off the inside of the post. There's nothing even fancy about that That's corner, is it? It's just a simple corner, and there's a gap between the left back and the centre back there. Oh, this no. is one that Fuma will not want to see again, a gift for... Wait, no, Alisson, oh. please. Please, keep so well. Eusebio with the oh. goal there Gosh. in that one. Alisson does so well, he stops the ball roll, then says, you know what, just, have, leave it. just have another go at it. That one is 1-1, by the way, the score in that game between uh, those two juggernauts, Fuma against Hildalga. That's a qualification game as well. But as we said, Nicholas, 1-0 down against Lex. Loser of that game is out of this FC Pro Open Global Qualifier. It sounds harsh, but unfortunately, that is just the way it is. I've heard there's a goal from Nicholas, so I'll be quiet. Nicholas, what have you done? You've done this. Player lock falls back into Neymar. One more pass. David Ginola. I think Nicholas hurt me there, that's 1-1. One, one. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's still in the game, still a lot of time still to be played in that one. I don't think he's, it's even at half-time. No, it isn't. 30 minutes on the clock in that game. Longer games we are playing this year in the FC Pro Open. Nine-minute halves. There's a lot more time, and as we've already seen today, there's a lot more goals going in, Ryan. Yeah, absolutely. I think Nicholas will admit a slight bit of fortune there for the ball to fall back to him, but he capitalises off that, the element of luck to equalise in that game. It's a massive, massive moment in a... Again, I have to reiterate, I think we've said this plenty of times already, an elimination game between two of the favourites coming into this tournament. And it's good defending there from Montaxa. Controlled sprint there with Ololito, trying to get into the space. Well, I would say there was no space to go into, but trying to get into any sort of gap. Referee. Pull the one back for a free kick. Montaxa, as you said, playing in that white strip in possession now. Does not need to overcomplicate that free kick. As we see half time coming for Faku Cohen against Shaw, and that's a 3 1 lead. This should be the game that finishes first, and then the other matches will follow that. We'll try and give you the, the ending points of every single game. Onside is Hakimi. And the tower comes across and wins a corner. This could be interesting. Play a lot there. And towards the back post. Good idea. It's Jude Bellingham. He's triggering the run there with the fullback. See, look at the, the other side of the pitch. Look at the minimap. Look at the space there. There's the ping. It's a good choice to head it back to the goalkeeper as well. Could have gone wrong. But again, it's a little bit more comfortable and it shows the, the confidence there from Montaxa to trust the headed back to the goalkeeper. He can start his own attack now. It goes about saying these back fours and these drafts necessarily haven't really been that expensive, have they? They've just been, they've just been pretty meta, haven't they? I mean, look, for those that listen at home that are playing their foot champions whilst watching this, 
you could you could get them as well very easily as we said the marquee ones that we've seen the most popular choice i believe is addison in goal i think it's mainly at um fullback with hakimi at right back as well and the two center backs in van dyke and Militao. very attainable for a lot of players you're looking at a defensive back four there of what three four hundred k round about there price is currently maybe around about there yeah and i think it's it's worth it the structure of your team when you when you have eight million coins worth of budget i think spending it on the defense is a bit hasty i'd rather prioritize the attack and obviously that's what the majority of players have done it seems like every player has, has agreed that one ball over the top finds hakimi one of those meta fullbacks there's janola one more pass makes it look so easy as he extends his lead to three goals to one. It hasn't been a day to remember so far for Olilito. It really hasn't, and I think with that goal there, just the option or the choice there from Antaxa to turn down towards the goal, instead of turning up and trying to play for a pass across goal that way, turning down towards goal, sort of caught Olilito off guard, and again, it's a simple pass across goal for an open goal finish. Three goals to one for Montaxa, 30 minutes left to goal. We're going to see but we have to see some sort of attacking threat from Olalito to try and get back into this game because otherwise we're going to see one of the household names in the FC24 scene eliminated. We've just pulled into half-time. Lex against Nicholas. Scoreline is two goals to one. Lex in front. We'll show you that goal right now that puts one of the best up-and-coming players in the world in the lead he's taken on one of the household names in this scene it's another great finish it was Hakimi of all players that found himself in the right position there yeah it's another goal that stems from just utilizing the spaces and the the way you can generate attacks with the byline very very effective this year in FC 24 utilizing that with pace the controlled sprint just slow dribbling and again there's, there always seems to be an option where you can play it across Oh, that's beautiful ball roll. Player lock, linking up with Ooh. teammate. That's a rash tackle that I'm sure the referee will come back to. I was going to say, it's a bit of a heavy touch there. I believe it was Pateas that took that heavy touch, that pass inside. We expect her to be a little bit more comfortable receiving the ball from there. It's going to be Neymar for Ole Lito. The drag to drag cancel, pass across. It's going to be Vinny. Oh, Open goal, it's got to be. Harsh. It's a harsh way. Molinito is going to take that every day of the week. Three goals to two. That goal just just gives you a bit of belief, doesn't it, Ryan? It gives you something to play for. You need that. You need that again. The element of luck there for the ball to fall perfectly for Chilola for an open goal finish. And if there was one way for Molinito to get back into it, that moment needed to happen as soon as possible. So he's had that. The guy, I believe there's around 30 or 25 minutes left to go in this game. A lot of time, a lot of time left. We've got four games in front of us, just to the side of us here in the commentary booth. More updates and more goals to give you as soon as we can. Hildalgo Fuma would love to jump over there and tell you what is happening in that game. That's the qualification game. Whoever wins that one will qualify for the FC Pro Open. And, and Faku Cohen still leads three goals to one. Out of all the people in that group, if you before a ball was kicked this weekend, yeah. you wouldn't have said Faku Cohen will be one of those four players. You just wouldn't have. No, I'll be honest. I wouldn't have either. Being completely honest, I would say... I'm trying to be as... You, you would have said two of the players are about to be eliminated yeah. in this round. I would have said Lex Nicholas from this group alone, genuinely. Lex Nicholas, Olilito, Montaxa, <laughs> genuinely, and they're playing. Four of those players are in it. Fuma, of course, yeah. Fuma's a fantastic. Even his, the whole group is incredible, genuinely. Some names there that obviously some players might not be familiar with. They haven't qualified for many land tournaments, but they've shown their consistency and they deserve to be here. They're here on merit. Absolutely. Look, there's a new wave, clearly. The pros coming through. Ooh. I like that little touch there into space. Didn't work out there from Montaxa with you know they're there but it's going to be a nervy last 20 minutes trying to defend the onslaught of attacks from Olalito he's going to be pushing forward trying to get this deficit closed Kimi back to Bellingham has he got confidence now and Bappe 
And if you're a Nicholas fan, look away. Lex might be knocking out the Iceman. 3-1. Lex leads against Nicholas. 51 minutes on the clock in that game. We will give you the closing stages of it. There's so much time left in it. At the moment, Lex is starting to just build a little bit of a gap away from the Champions League previous winner. It's beautiful. This could be... Oh, fancy. Tried it. <laughs> could you imagine if that went in? But again, we're just seeing attacks there. Just down the line, he's seeing success with it. He's not going to stop. Why should you? He's going to keep on going, prodding down the wings because he's noticed it being a weak point in Olilito's defence. Space him, he's in. What's that about post? Is there a pass there? Yes, there Stop is! Chiesa of all players! One of his super subs in the draft. I'm pretty sure the only player <laughs> to use him. Chiesa off the bench, right? That's what they come on for. Bit of pace, inject it in to the last 20 minutes or so, just to be in the right place at the right time to press circle and to bring me back into this game. 3-3, three, three, Olilito is still in this. It seemed as if the space just opened up completely there. The defence was just all ends up. There was so many options for Olilito to push forward. He chose the right option there with Mbappe, just to keep on going, just to wait and force Montaxa to make a choice. And it fell to an easy finish for Chiesa to make it 3-3. Goals a piece. Now, 10 minutes left to go. We could even see another. Balls comes in from... The Ninjas in pyjamas. The Premier League winner. Looking across the ball. Another goal gone in. How down will go Fuma. One of those two will be qualifying. Long ball over the top. Oh, well, That's the ultimate turnaround. Oh it could have been. He had a bit more time. He had a little bit more time. It was just on side there. Just keeper manages to make an unorthodox save there to prevent Olilito completing the turnaround. You can just feel it. Confidence brimming with Olilito. Every time he goes forward now, it looks as if he's going to score. He's very threatening. Montaxa. Backs against the wall now. He's in a comfortable-ish position. And the game has turned completely on its head. Some updates across the games. We have Faku Cohen still leading three goals to one against Sean LDW. 15 minutes left to go in that game. Lex still leading three goals to one against Nicholas. Fuma 4-1 up against Hidalgo. That is a qualification game as well. So that looks as if Fuma will be cementing his spot in the FC Pro Open. We're going to get this corner now. And it's defended well there from Montaxa. Seven minutes left to go. An extra time. Potentially needed once again. Let's just have a little look at the bracket for this group of what could be possible, what could be on the cards. We could be looking at another crazy elimination game as it goes from bad to worse for Hildalgo. Fuma, by the way, gone under the radar in terms of appreciation today. Beats Nicholas, beats Hildalgo. I know it's still a lot of time to be played in that game. But right now, He's running away with this one. Mbappe scores this one. And off camera, Oli Lito erupts at the perfect time. We'll see in real time. 87th minute. Mbappe just pushes everyone off around him. Has he just done enough? to stay in the tournament. Wow, he's done the right choice there, pushing through with Mbappe. I think Montax anticipated a, a little cutback that wasn't played. And Olalito, wow, <laughs> what a turnaround. Genuinely, I felt as if he was almost destined to be eliminated with the way Montax was playing, the way he was generating chances at will. And Olalito, honestly, that just shows, Manu mentioned it earlier, one of his greatest assets is the mentality, the composure, the belief that no game is over until the final whistle is blown. 
And if he manages to see this out, this is a massive, massive boost in confidence. I think it genuinely, I speak of my mentality as well, it could be enough to just push him through to even qualify, guaranteed. But just the mental side of things. You're going into that next game against somebody that would have lost from the winner's bracket. You're in that big push of momentum. If you can see this out, two minutes left of normal regulation time, plus the added time when Taxa has to score straight away. And Taxa left it like yesterday in the Swiss. Has he got enough left in the tank? Mbappe. Ginola, perfect park. What a oh bit of goalkeeper goodness. movement. I believe that was. Oh my goodness, the goalkeeper movement there was perfect. Oh my god, that was it. That was the chance. Can he win the header? He's won it. Still alive. Montax about to Bellingham. Mbappe, a couple of step overs down the byline. Great keeping from Allison again. Oh we have my to gosh. see that on a replay. Oh my goodness, that was it. A little bit more composure there. And Montaxa would have scored. To call that. Humminson was through. Easy finish. Oli Lito Ooh. remains in the tournament. Montaxa eliminated from this FC Pro Open Global Qualifier. Oli Lito remains in with a hunt and a chance of booking his spot in the top 20. Commiserations, Montaxa. But there's more going on here, Ryan. We have to move very, very swiftly soon because we've got more games to see and more moments. Nicholas Nini just conceded again to make that four goals to one. Where shall we go? All right, we've got Fuma, who is running away with it right now. That one's probably going to conclude very soon. But Faku Cohen looks like that one is going to go first by the looks of it. 89 minutes on the clock in the Faku Cohen game against Sean LDW. We're looking at a qualification game here. We really are. I believe I don't think there's enough time for Faku Cohen to get back, oh, to, for Sean to get back into this game. We're going to take a look at a goal here again between Fuma and Hidalgo. And it's gone the way of Fuma, ball roll into a Travella, a marquee goal in FC 24. And it's six goals to one. We go into this game, a step over with Vinny. He's not done, is he? Fuma, you, come he's on. going for seven. Come on, mate. He's going for seven, and that is exactly what he's done. The Colt standing up, applauding. Fuma, incredible. Once again, remains so consistent year after year. Fuma, we can confirm. Will be in the FC Pro Open. GG's, as they will say. It's been a dominant display to get seven goals against he went, anyone. He went one nil down. Yeah, exactly. I genuinely, I was going to say this. Hidalgo defensively is unbelievable. Genuinely, he's very much so. Similar play styles, I would say, is towards Tuga in terms of when he goes 1 0 up, the way he can keep possession and force you into errors is unbelievable. So the fact Fuma manages to respond not just by scoring one, two, or three, he scored seven goals. The, the problem is now, Ryan, Hidalgo's got to go and play again now. Yeah, it's tough, but I, I feel like this is a better loss to have than one that um, when you conceded last minute. You think so? Yeah, absolutely. And that is it. A massive, massive result. Fuma qualifies for the FC Pro Open. Unbelievable performance. Well, eight becomes nine as a Frenchman joins them. FC Pro Open, top 20 player. He is amongst it. Two more weeks, he'll be back in London competing with the best players in the world. We also can confirm off camera, Faku Cohen went unbeaten. Technically, seven and oh, this man went. But this game, Nicholas. There was a goal we missed as well. Could Nicholas be going out. Nicholas 3 2 down. Lex with a chance to put Davies. the game to bed now. Alfonso Davies, of all people, oh what's a save from Allison? Lord. What a save. He was in. We missed that Nicholas goal to make it 3 2. It's going to be Lex now with the corner, playing it short. And Bappe. Does, it, does he want to score? Does he want to take more minutes out of the game? Lex does well to keep possession again, to take more minutes out of the tie. Are we looking at Nicholas? Leaving the tournament here in Mbappe. No need to go forward again. Any time to come in. He can't play it back though. Look at the press. Every it's man for man marking. Wins it back. Two minutes. <gasps> oh no. No. That's a horrible. Oh my goodness. Clever though. No, it's incredible discipline. It's incredible discipline from Lex here. He's just gonna run back. Even look towards even playing it to the keeper. Exactly what he does here. We need a good touch here because okay, Allison manages to bring it down. Well then. I did not expect to see this one. 
Nicholas. Hold on a minute. Unless. Oh my god, he's rushed it. The one thing you never associate with Nicholas. Full time result. Nicholas out of the tournament. Lex, some would say. The story is now written. So much hype, so much chat about this player from Olympic Lyon. Everyone's been saying how good he is online. He's come to land, not the best Swiss in the world. Still doesn't care, he got himself through. And more importantly, he got himself in the conversation still. Oh, that's an unbelievable result. Commiserations to Nicholas, of course. One of the marquee names in the FC24 scene will not be part of the players making it to the FC Madness. Open, which is... And by the way, tomorrow in Group C, this same scenario is going to happen because it is ridiculous. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Nicholas is not going to be there. <laughs> the consistency that he always shows and gives us, unfortunately, it's another South American name this year that will be there instead. Faku Cohen, unbeaten. Incredible story, Ryan. 5-0 and in Swiss, unbeaten in the knockouts. You can't, you can't write that. Yeah, and I don't think we've seen enough of him. In fairness, I don't think we've even given him enough we haven't. props. We, we haven't. haven't. We genuinely haven't. He's gone 7-0. and He's done exactly what Tex has done. He hasn't lost a game. He's qualified unbeaten, and I think that should be commended massively, massively. And hopefully we get to see a lot more of him in the near future, obviously qualifying for the biggest tournament this year, one of the biggest tournaments. So a huge, huge congratulations to him. Yeah, some crazy upsets and some massive results in there, especially for Fuma making it to the FC Pro Open. But two people I want to hear from who I'm sure have got loads of stuff to break down. It's Richard Buckley and Boras. We certainly do, Brandon. Great stuff. Shocks are happening all over the gaff. It's safe to say here at the FC Pro Open Global Qualifier. Well, Taxa eliminated from the tournament, so we thought, let's show, give him one last sort of uh, shining light to go yeah. out on. He scored what we are describing as one of the best goals of the day, and this is how it went down. Virgil van Dijk, middle of the park, spreads it out wide to Ferland Mendy. Yeah. He's got nowhere to go. Nowhere to go, and again, we see like how the defensive AI most times outpowers the attacking AI because here he has no options. So either perhaps he play lock, try to find, um, I think that's Hansen there. Maybe or, a pass into here? Yeah, but that is crowded. Um, there's, there's no way. But instead, he takes matters into his own hands. He tracks back, or he actually tur turns back and skilling. You're going to see here. Let's have a look at this. Step over is coming, and then using here on the line, control sprint, which is this so here, we'll just amazing. Right there for everyone at home, controlled sprint. R1 plus left stick is very simple, added this year. One of the best features, and so, so simple. But here, this is, this looks so easy, but it actually takes plenty of planning. So, most times here, you will end up just, you know, not planning. I'm, me personally, yeah. that ball comes into me at home, I'm shooting. Yeah, you can try out, or maybe you it's just hear... getting blocked. Yeah, probably yes, or you just here end up, you know, just standing here thinking and then losing this chance. But instead, he here planned three steps ahead. All right, so first one is here, the early input, left stick, uh, left stick input, uh, going back, opening so up... this one here, yes. moving this way. Moving this way, input comes early, opens up the angle and things he sees right away, end up here, next up, and then tap in. So he's planning three steps ahead. It looks so simple, but it's actually difficult. Was there an option? He turns here and then a shot, maybe? Or right. was it always the safe option just to play off? I think... We can see what yeah, happens. Yeah, we can see here. So left stick, but it goes so fast, but it's all about the planning. Attack beats defense yeah. on that particular occasion. The controlled sprint, there's so many elements, the controlled sprint, yeah. the step overs, and planning ahead, three steps ahead, as Boris likes to say. We break it all down here at the Triple B, are we the calling triple it? Triple B. The Buckley and Boras breakdown board. Um, incredible stuff from Antaxa. Unfortunately, he exits the tournament. Over two more players have just qualified for the FC Pro Open. There are going to be some very relieved ninja fans over in the Nordic region right now as Oli Lito managed to have a phenomenal comeback to save his spot in this competition, but he does need to play one more time. Meanwhile, Lex, a huge, shocking victory against Nicolas Hussali. We do say goodbye to right now. Some really big results coming out of Group B and we should be able to take a look at the bracket to see where we are as well because we do have two more spots but as I said before Nicholas unfortunately is not going to be one of those players taking a spot in the Monday weekly shows and neither 
Will Montaxa. However, speaking of those Monday nights, we do get to send a couple of players officially through to the groups and find out which night we're going to be seeing them playing on. So I am delighted to introduce them to you now, standing with FG. And also joining us, we have Patricia, who's going to be translating for Faku Cohen. And we have Fuma Biensia. Well, indeed, we are here. Great to have you guys here. Fuma, we'll come to you in a second. Congratulations, Faku Cohen. Wow, 7-0. Absolutely incredible few days for you. Ha sido 7 a 0, unos días, incre unos días increíbles para ti. Sí, la verdad, cuando llegué eh, esperaba un buen resultado. No esperaba que sea así. Eh, venir a mi primer torneo internacional y no perder ninguna ronda, la verdad, es una locura. Eh, todavía no lo puedo creer, pero bueno, estoy muy contento. When I just first came here, I thought um, I would have a good result, but I never expect something like that, not, li not losing a single round. So I'm, this is my first time here in Europe, so I'm really, really happy. Well, you've done absolutely fantastically. It's now time for you to draw and seal your face. So please take a ball. Es el momento de que cojas and let's see bola. who you are going to be drawing against. Give it a shuffle, we like to see. Por el lado, eh? ahí, ahí. There you go. And if you can hold it to the camera. Number two. PH Zin. That's his group. You are in the same group as PH Zin. How do you feel? Is that the same group as PH Zin? How do you find it? Well, obviously, it's a rival durísimo. But, well, in all the groups, there's one that was classified for the merit of the year before. And I think it's also Yang. Así que va a ser duelo de Sudamérica, pero bueno, espero que, que nos vaya bien a todos. He's a very very strong rival. He he just came from last year being top top player, and I believe he's also young, which is like also very difficult. But I think I'm gonna do okay. Well, we wish you all the best. Congratulations on an incredible tournament so far. You're in the final 20, and another man who has sealed his fate, Fuma. Well, fantastic. Tell me how you're feeling. I'm feeling really happy. I, I play really good today. My attack was perfect. I, I like uh, green like every timing today, so it was crazy. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling really, really happy. Your timing was absolutely amazing. We did notice that as well. Is there anybody who you would like to face or maybe perhaps groups that you'd like to avoid? No, nobody, honestly. Uh, I just uh, want to win the trophy now and uh, we will see. Well, let's see who you have got. Feel free to grab a ball out of your choice and reveal the group you are in. Just, just yeah, give just it a give squeeze. it a push. Yeah, 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 just give it a push. There you go. Cracking. And let's show the camera the number, which is number four. Ooh, that's going to be a really interesting one because you've got Oberyn in that group. An interesting group. It looks like a tough group, but a group that you'd be confident in. Tex as well. Yeah, it's a hard group, but uh, I like to play the, the best player in the world. So, Obrun and Tex are one of the best. So, it's uh, I'm happy to play the best. And if I w if I want to win the trophy, I have to play the best and beat the best. So, let's let's play the best. Well, we absolutely love that. That is incredible. Congratulations, guys. You've sealed your fate, Frankie. Over to you. Yeah, thank you so much. And we do have one more match between our players in Group B and their fates because there are two more spots, two more balls to be open tonight. But who is going to be having a crack at them? You'll find out after this break.
Welcome back to the FC Pro Open. It has been an absolutely shocking evening for FC. The goals have been across the board beautiful, but the results for some of these players has been ugly, and it doesn't really get uglier than going out when you're one of the favorites. But sadly, we have had to say goodbye to Nicholas tonight. But some great names are going through and also some new names. Faku Cohen, 705 clean sheets yesterday and two tonight to book his spot in the Monday night finals. And there are just two more spots to be taken by our runners and riders in Group B. So let's take a look at the items some of these players are bringing to the field over in the corner with Boris and Richard. Thank you very much, Frankie. Two games remaining today here at the FC Pro Global Qualifier. Two big drafts left to go. And it's, we're going to a, a player, one that you've, we've already seen in Oli Lito, but before that, we're going to go to Hidalgo's team. The Spaniard recently signed for Summer Esports and everyone's eyes pulled to the top of the screen, Eusebio. Yes, that is a different choice. We haven't seen this yet, but I think though, of course, he had uh, amazing choice and also nice to see a bit of diversity, a bit different options. 3.3 mil. That is a big budget put in, into one player, uh, but he has a five-star weak foot. He has a dribbling, uh, amazing, maybe one of the best finishers in the game. I say top three definitely. Eusebio over Ginola, it, it would seem, in this particular lineup for Yeah, Hidalgo. I mean, what we could tell them, probably not using that many crosses, uh, keeps the ball on the ground. He's only actually got, uh, I did the math, 65K left in his budget for his subs, which is probably why he's got a couple of bronze players on there as well. Adi Emi, Rafael Liao, it's not the strongest of benches from Hidalgo. Do you think that could play a factor? I mean, not the best bench uh, he has. Yeah, that's probably the worst bench we've seen today. I mean, up top, you can only put in Leal. That could make a big difference. Adeyemi, I'm sorry, <laughs> Danny Aarons, if you're watching, but maybe not the best option here. The, the gold at, at this stage now. And then bronze players, I mean... He, there is five subs. There is five yeah. subs, but only two, or actually one major attacking sub. Yes. That could make a difference. And I think maybe at this, you know, with these long games, as we spoke about, the bench does, it makes a big difference, so... On the yeah, other side, for Oli Lito, we've already seen his draft today. We can have a little glance at it so again for everyone at home who missed it. I want to ask you a question, not regarding the draft, but he just came back from a big comeback. Amazing comeback. He's got to be sky high coming into this game. Who do you think takes it? Favourite out of the way? I'm giving you a prediction because it's the last game of the day. Hard to say, uh, we haven't watched Hidalgo yet, uh, but Oli Lito, last game, amazing comeback. He's showing that his my, like mentality is so, so strong. He could come back from anything. And also going into this game, decisive game, having this comeback at your back, I think that could carry him uh, to qualify. Of course, Let's of find course, out. Boras backs Oli Lito. Uh, I'm, I'm going to sit on the fence. And that's exactly what our two casters are going to do. because. Predictions aren't there, strong suit. Brandon, Ryan, take it away. Whoa, Last game whoa, of the whoa, day. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've changed things up over here. We started to do predictions. They might have been completely off, Ryan, but, but at least we tried, right? Yeah, we tried and failed miserably. I won't be making any predictions. I'll be honest with you. None. Zero. I want, I want one now. No, none. Zero. Not one. Right. Not well, one. let's talk more about these two matchups now. Two more players will put their spot at the FC Pro Open at the end of this game. Two players will leave. We just saw Nicholas end his season pretty early in terms of getting into the FC Pro Open. There is still chances we will see him later via that famous E-Champions League that he absolutely loves. But before that, we've got two more games to try and work out who on earth is going to make their way through. Yep, we do. And of course, we have Sean representing Bayer Leverkusen up against Lex, who we've spoken plenty about. And of course, Ololito up against Hidalgo. Two massive games, two games. Loser goes home, winner makes it into the FC Pro Open, a, a major event starting in two weeks' time. So a lot's at stake. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's give a, a match preview for this one. As we said, Herman Miller are a huge, huge helper of our events here at the FC Pro Open. This preview is brought by Herman Miller Gaming. Thank you to Herman Miller for providing all the chairs for this tournament across the knockouts and the group stages. And make sure you take advantage of the Herman Miller Gaming products currently 25% off through to November 28th. Let's get into this one then. The last game here in Group B. 10 seconds on the clock. Players in this situation that might not have expected to be here. On one side of the screen, you've got Lex up against Sean. And on the other backstage there, you can see on the camera, Hildalgo against 
Oli Lito. Two of the four players will make it through. They'll join the two you just saw on screen. Paul there pulls out the pot for a draw into the FC Pro Open. And then we'll be near enough over halfway there. Ryan, 12 players, eight more to find tomorrow. Sean Lex will be our main featured matchup. Oli Lito against Hidalgo will be our secondary game. Do not worry, we'll give you all the moments and the goals from them both. Could be looking at another new star here, Ryan, to, to put their spot at the FC Pro Open. Absolutely, and, and, and I think for both of these players, it's, it goes without saying how important it is, but just for the, the scope of their, their careers, I think it's a massive, massive thing to be associated with the FC Pro Open tournament in and amongst the best players in the world in a regular form that competition is, is something that, again, you have to be very, very good at FC24 to be able to even get into those conversations, let alone qualify for the event. And that is what these two players will be hoping to do. It's going to be Lex here in the white kick, kicking from right to left, and Sean kicking from left to right. Well, he did recently just renew his contract with Olympic Lyon, represented them last year, had a pretty decent last competitive season, made it to the World Finals. First ever time at a World Championship. We'll be looking to do the same again this year. This would help him on his journey. Yeah, if he can do it. On the opposite side, another perfect example of what these partnered leagues are all about. Virtual Bundesliga. With Bayer Leverkusen. New name to keep an eye out for when that league kicks off in just a couple of weeks' time. Famous pick of Lucio at the back for Lex Ryan. Committed attempt there from Sean. Tamori. Yeah, that is that is a unique. That might be. Is that a change that's happened across the the night? I think that's the first time I've seen Tamori start. I've seen him on the bench, but to start and it's going to be. Oh, that's an awful touch there. That's an awful touch in the area there. With Hanson, I was about to say she could take a touchdown turn and shoot, but no, I'm not. I'm not dreaming. Tamori <gasps> starts. Oh in my this goodness! Team Lev Yashin <laughs> is also in this team. This is what the beauty of the draft is this year. Gold Bellingham as well. Using five players under 50k in his selection in the draft, which is a big, big, big statement showing that he's utilizing the points elsewhere in the team. As you said, the only player to use Yashin and Tomori. So, Yashin, if you're going to use an icon goalkeeper, I think the staples, but again, it depends on the price points. Gold Bellingham. Gold Bellingham. Yeah, that's a. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you wonder where the, the rest of the coins went, Hanson, Mbappe, Genoa, La Pras. Pretty decent bench, in all honesty. But Lev Yashin in goal. His legs. Not for so long. Still nil nil in our other game as well. Hidalgo against Olilito. Nil nil. 11 minutes on the clock in that one. It's our last round of play here. In the FC Pro Open Global Qualifier. Tomorrow, Group C and D will take centre stage. Lex. Get dispossessed. Tamori. 84 rated Tamori. I know he's got pace and a. I know there's people at home that probably still do use him in their weekend league teams, but I just think they'd just be. I don't know. I, I, you're the man to ask, Ryan. When you're in a tournament like this and you see you look around your left and your right shoulder and you see everybody using very similar defenses. Surely you've got a sort of got a back what everyone else is doing in some ways. Yeah, but you obviously have to stick with what you're comfortable with. Tamori, a great defender in terms of the pace. He does lack it in terms of physicality compared to other centre-backs. Um, so we see great dribbling there from Sean. Good defending. It's going to be calm and composed there. Lex, a play out of trouble. But again, you go with what you're comfortable with. But again, the play styles, though, for Tamori, I would sway a, a, to use a centre-back that does have a play style plus a defensive one. I feel like that's very effective this year. The introduction of playstyles 
I think shouldn't be overlooked. But again, he's he's in a position now to potentially qualify using Tomori at centre back. So he's definitely done him well. The player's happy to use Tierney Anders in the left back. Here's Janola. Can he twist? Turn past Virgil van Dijk. No, he can't. <gasps> oh, Lev Yashin is! Mm, wow, that's twice now. He, he nearly lost his hat there. <laughs> yeah, that's twice. He's got away with it just about. Is he just getting balls fizzed into him, or is it just his touch that bad? <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, defensive error. Ginola, one more pass, Mbappe, oh, and that's Dyke again. Again, it falls back to Mbappe. Terrible at the back from Sean. Keeps on gifting possession back to Lex. You can't gift it back to him, of all players. Ball bouncing around the box. Still, where's he going to end? Eventually, Sean. Still remains. Can't have composed enough to deal with that one. Here comes an attack form. The German player runs it off the pitch. Gives possession back away again. Both players very brave from playing out the back. Oh no. All ricochets of Lucio's face. That goes for a corner. It's just the, uh, the concentration needed. These two players just got to get it out. Some crazy mistakes at the back. A switch of play there from Lex. Playing it down the line to Mbappe. Oh, that's a great speed boost, but not enough space to run into. Runs out of play there. Ginola, through ball Mbappe, round Van Dijk maybe. Great dribbling, he's left alone there. Yeah, there wasn't too many options. Good defending there to step with Hakimi, just to tackle. Tim Hernandez pushing forward, twisting and turning. Lex trying to find space. He has to go all the way back. The switch off play is open. Look at the left back again, he's in. Post, there is an overload happening there. It's good defending from both of these players. I think they're they're sort of preemptively moving their defenders to anticipate the player going towards the byline. Obviously, maybe from just research and knowing how effective the step over in there. It's got to be it's Yashin with a great save. Corner play quickly. Vinicius, Ginola tries to finesse that one. Did time it green, but there was blue shirts in the way. We're here, there's been a goal in the other game. He'll go against Olilito. Which way has it gone? It's gone the way of Olilito. Vinicius Jr. Getting him off the mark. 28 minutes in. Oh, clever from Levyashin. Does enough to stop Lex scoring that one somehow. Nearly goals in both of our games. Chance to break it, by the way. Ginola or Mbappe. Numbers are back now. Good recovery there from Jude Bellingham of all. Nice to get it back. That's a really good play from Sean. He didn't rush his attack. And he's actually earned a corner from that position. Why was Hernandez there? <laughs> yeah. Good defending there from Lex. To play out of trouble. Approaching half time now. Five minutes in game left to play. There hasn't been many things, but there has been something in this game. It's a goal in the game between Hidalgo and Olilito. Great play. And it's a shot across goal there, giving Hidalgo the equaliser. That animation doesn't ever look like it's going in, no, does it? No, it really doesn't. Genuinely, it never does. It's a bit of an overload here, by the way. Short of a chance. De Jong, ball on his way down the box. Chance to twist and turn. You know, look. Oh, he could, could have played it to Hansen there, and she could have just turned and... Maybe finish will still be patient though. This oh, is even better. Yeah, That's you know, why yeah. you're patient, Sean. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's why we're here, man. You know that. That is exactly <laughs> what. That's brilliant. Fair enough. I thought the chance maybe overplayed it a little bit, but he done brilliantly to, to make the use of the space. The players in the box there. And it leaves it an easy finish. Mateus scoring. It's one goal to the good for Sean. Lex finds himself 1 0 down.
First goal in this one comes just before half time. The winner of both of these games will qualify for the FC Pro Open. 20 of the best players will meet. Across the winter months, the ball out in a 1v1 competition. Hakimi. Trying to find some options in support. Added time of one minute. We've played the one minute. Is there enough time for Lex to still try and make this attack work for him? Bellingham. Thought maybe about a Traveller, but the angle just didn't really sell. That's half time in this game. The score on him, just one goal to nil for Sean, who could have actually probably been 2 1 down, Brian, because I don't know what was going on at the back half of the time there. He kept on playing back to Lev Yashin, and he was called into action, and yep. just about. <laughs> Gets himself in the tie. I think other than those moments, though, I think it's been a very, very strong defensive performance from both of these players. Yep. They've been very disciplined, very slow and methodical in their build-up, not rushing any passes. And it's, it's led to that one goal from Sean, which was well taken in the end. I thought, I thought he had maybe two or three situations or moments in that attack where he could have pulled the trigger and, and pushed forward for goal, but he waited for Lex to open up defensively and he, he took his moment. Well, in the other game, we can give you an update there. We will Hodal go against Oli Lito. Remember, the winner of that game will also qualify for the FC Pro Open. This is live shots from the game now. Oli Lito leads by two goals to one. What a turnaround from Oli Lito in his last game. Difficult match it was against Montaxa. Was able to score an 87th minute winner. Last two minutes of the half. Look at the run at the back post. Thoughts on Eusebio? I mean, look, Eusebio is unbelievable regardless. He was always involved sort of back in the pro scene many years ago. Yeah, back in my day, he was one of the best strikers. I think, genuinely, his finishing might be the best in the game. I kid you not, he's unbelievable. And another player's unbelievable ball roll. Easy as you like. Composed. Olilito finds a two goal advantage here. And it just comes from a simple counter attack. But the timing of the pass was everything to find Mbappe. The angle looked difficult to score from. But a simple ball roll just opened up the space. And we'll jump back over to this one for now. Olilito. 3-1, he leads. That's about to go into half-time as the referee blows for the 45th minute whistle there. 45 minutes away, Lito from finding his way into the FC Pro Open. I think the wrong choice there to play the pass on the floor from Lex there. As Sean, we haven't seen too much of him throughout this whole competition. We've seen him, of course, heard the results in the games. was taking that massive scalp in the first round today in the winner's bracket against Olalito, winning in, in comfortable fashion and losing the next game to fall into the loser bracket now. I think he's been very composed. He's calm. It's a great ball in behind there. Hansen's going to take it down. She's got all the time in the world. Mbappe, Ginola waiting for the right pass. Pretty left strip. Dribble in there. Punch back to the Teles. Score the opening goal. I don't know that's how the competition goes, Ryan, but after all the, the success that Lex has had online building up to this, so many people are excited to see him on land to see what he can do. As we saw with Nicholas, no one is safe. Not at all. And again, credit to Sean so far. I'll be honest, not many people, even including myself, would have given him a, a chance in this group. You could argue that he would have been the weakest on paper just based on previous accomplishments, but he's showing why he deserves to be here. Look at this build-up. Does he need one more pass? Oh, oh he does! Yeah. Two goals to nil. Sean will lead. Oh, that's nice. It's a beautiful goal with the build-up there. Just the way he played it down the byline again, making the right choices. The Lacroquette's a pass. For an open goal for this, two goals up. You say two goal leads are the most dangerous in 
FC24, but genuinely, he looks comfortable. I'll be honest with you, he looks very, very comfortable. I know we say this every year, but we are witnessing a new generation of player to come through again, Ryan. I mean, just look at some of the players that qualified today. The youngest player in the tournament made his way through alongside can say some of the old guard they're not old but from previous competitive years there's always been high flies in tournament 60 minutes in Ginola Bellingham looking for that third time for Lex to turn it on now oh could be a chance for Mbappe to find the one more pass Lex still Maybe slightly overworking it. There's so many sort of light blue shirts now back. Yeah, still we still got possession. You never know. This could be a chance stem from this, but it's been great defending there from Sean, closing all the angles. They're forcing him to go all the way back to Van Dijk. Now he has to restart this attack, and he does it perfectly. Step over into a save from Levi Corner to come in. Travella maybe going to play the left back yeah and it was predicted and blocked there from Sean can reset now just keep possession well as possession changes hands let's jump over to where we can there has been a goal Hidalgo against Oli Lito oh. Lex also bags one here still so much time left in this one as well 25 minutes left two on the scoreline here All you need is a goal, right, sometimes. Yep, comes from a mistake from Sean. Not many mistakes we've seen this game from him. And it's punished. Ball all around the on-rushing goalkeeper. Lex gets the goal back into it. Two goals to one. He is losing by one goal now. Well, over we go. What has happened over here, then? Olivito was in the lead, as we know. Hildalgo had a corner, by the looks of it. La Croqueta. Green as well. That one made it three goals to two, and now this is the latest goal that's just got in from Olilito. What a way to respond after just conceding. Four goals to two, Olilito leads. 55 minutes on the clock in that game. Incredible way to respond. We saw just a step over there, just to green it across goal on his weaker foot. The goalkeeper movement sort of made his mind up there a little bit as we go into this game. Olilito, this is live. Olilito pushing forward to try and get goal number five. Gonna fall back. Ginola, turn, Mbappe! <gasps> oh, what's happened? Just didn't move, did he? He tried to turn around a fraction or two earlier. We'll leave that one for a second. This one will finish before. What has that goal done for Lex in terms of finding a way back into this one? Dion, back to Lex Patele, scored the first goal in this one for sure. Look how narrow and compact the midfield and defence is. With white Olympic Leon shirts. Sean's starting to rush it. So is Lex. He's won it back though there. Fonzo Davies will start his run on the far hand side. God, look at Bappe. He's in. ball there. Misses it. Again. Oh. Still Ginola. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. There's been another goal in this one. Which way? Oli Lito was... 4-2 up in this game. It's a goal back for Hildago. 4-3, that one. 61 minutes on the clock. That one's just ticked over. Oli Lito still leading that game. Our last two players from tonight to find their way into the FC Pro Open. Don't go anywhere. They will be drawing their groups. For the next eight plus weeks as well. Ball does stay in, Lex wins it back now. We've got to go forward, Dembele's got the pace. Oh, it's a shocking pass. It's a bit of a stitch up pass that, isn't it, for Vinicius? Double press though, oh, he's does very press. well, Lorenzo. 
done very, very well to recycle that swing. Very, very well. And you can see the right back still pushed up high. Yep, playing it. right back out of position there. It's Dembele with the pace is now. It, is this where Tomori might get found out late into the game? He's made a good tackle there, just about. Building his legs. Dion Ginola and Bappe all queuing up in the box. Looking to deliver the equaliser, Dembele just delaying. Keeping Sean guessing, Ginola, and Bappe! Oh, Great right. goalkeeper a... movement. Is there a second save there? He was crying. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. I'm sure it was. It's a red as what? well. There was a side tackle in there. It's a red card. It's what a... on earth has happened? It's a red and it's Tomori, I think. He's got a goal. I saw it. There was a slight tackle in there. Oh, it's a yellow. There was a tackle in there that was late and the advantage was played for the shot. I'm not sure if it was a, a manual input or not. I would love to see that again, but it's a penalty. I mean, I was looking at the goalkeeper <laughs> movement and the save from Levy Ashen. We did say, is Tomori going to get found out? He may have gone a little bit further than that. And, I think and given away. I need to say again. I don't know if he slide tackled here. Oh, he's, he lunges there. It is, it's so unfortunate. He lunges manually there to press tackle. The ball's gone. You know, it's soft. Oh, no. It's Lex. so soft. But <laughs> With a golden shot. I don't think he's going to be moaning about that one, right? Yeah, it's annoying because. It's a tough one. It is a very, very tough one, but it's going to be a penalty for Lex to get back into this game. Down the middle he goes and he equalises. 2-2 now. Lex gets back into this game. That's a tough goal to concede for sure. No, <laughs> even a flinch from Lex. He's concentrated. He's ready to go from kickoff. He needs to move on. And there's an update in the other oh game. My. Hopefully we'll be able to show you. What a way we're ending. What a way we're ending tonight. There's been another goal in that game. Eight goals between the two. 4-4, four, four. Hildalgo from a set piece. Van Dyke finds an equaliser there. 67th minute, 4-4 four, four in that game, 2-2 two, two in that game. We might be on for a double extra time here, Ryan. Yep, and that is why you have Van Dijk in the team. Not just defensively, but the aerial threat from corners is unmatched. He's unbelievable. Might be one of the, the top scorers today. Might be giving Ginola a run for his money. <laughs> also, highest red card. Yeah. Uh, numbers probably coming in from Van Dijk today to get... I think Nisat's got, got the majority yeah. of goals. Yeah. Oh, it's a great tackle there. Good slide tackle and he's lost possession. 2-0 two two down. 2-0 two down Lex was in this game. This is where the confidence will now start to just ooze out from the Frenchman. Oh, it's a great challenge there. Could have been, Ooh. could have been costly if it was a little bit later. It's going to be Sean in possession now. It's going to be switching the play. Four and a half minutes left. Nicely done, Ter Hernandez. Van Dijk will be aggressive. This could be costly, though, when he's out of position like this. Does have enough time just to get back across, but will it be enough to York? Travella falls back nicely. Ginola back again. Dior oh. fake shot. And now it's time for Lex to have his oh last goodness, roll of the dice or not. Massive tackle there. Coming in from Marcus Lorente. Just about fights for possession to keep hold of it. He has to go, he has to go back. He needs to. That's the only way and he's done oh, well with Lorente. Well. Edge of the box here. Bellingham does well. Mbappé! With the goal of all goals! <laughs> to potentially send him through! To the FC Pro Open, but it's not done yet! Wow, green timed, near post as well. He was calm, he was composed, he waited for the goalkeeper movement. It's a huge, huge goal. Well, where's this one gone? Oh, There's also goodness. a goal in the other game. Oli Lito! Wow! Mbappe just about the strength. Keeps up. He was about to fall over. The strength from Mbappe there. The goalkeeper movement hit that goal on everything perfect. There's two oh, last minute goals, no, I that's believe. A, that's a killer of a goal time that Sean. 90th minute winner. Lex. <gasps> He's giving it away. He just He's needs to keep be, the ball. 
he's going to be eliminated. Lex will not be at the FC Pro Ooh. Open. And it will be Sean that makes it there as well. Another player that has gone under the radar here in London. He is in the FC Pro Open of Bayer Leverkusen. The virtual oh, Bundesliga yeah, continuing yeah, to provide the stories as well. Lex out of the tournament, Nicholas out of the tournament. Surprises, surprises, surprises in this group B. Yep, there's still another game going on here. But massive salute to Sean. A lot of people would have put him as the weakest player in the group. He's managed to qualify. Hang on a minute. Oh, it's a big tackle from Ololito. <gasps> oh, if, if Jalil got hold of that, that he was in. Well, just for context, Sean qualifies. This is our last game here. On this side of the tournament, Group A and B, near enough confirmed. Then he found our 12th player. Let's go into the FC Pro Open. I've seen him score from a corner with Van Dijk. Is he going to do it again? He selected him. You see him just running in from the edge. This is Haldalgo with a corner. Van Dijk is at the back post. He's oh in! Oh my goodness me, what? Time did green in a player on the line as well, but still, somehow it wasn't enough to stop it. Oh, Chiesa. I thought he'd done enough. I really thought he'd done enough. Again, you could see it coming with the, the Van Dijk player look there. Perfectly aimed header in fairness. But that is a, it's a tough goal to concede. You think you've done enough from the corner. That's a huge moment for Hidalgo. What is that? Is that 5-5 five, five in this game? I've seen so many goals from Van Dijk this weekend. And this game is just going back and forth. Let's see it. Oh, it doesn't even jump. It's as if... I don't know what else you can do there. You've got to put another player on the line. I'm not joking. Come on. I'm, I'm joking. Okay. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I mean, he was a hero earlier, wasn't he? Yeah. Lee, so, unfortunately, <laughs> could head the ball <laughs> out of the goal. Instead, heads it back up to the crossbar. He'll down, go back in the game. Five all here. Our last match of FC 24 to conclude. Who will be taking spot number 12? As Van Dijk adds another one to the collection. Back on the way we go. Eight minutes left. Lorenzo. Ginola, is there one more pass there? There might be Oli Lito. Oh. You've been utilising those step-overs in the area. Scored a number of goals with it. It wasn't meant to be this time for Olilito. Good defending there as well from Hidalgo, as it has to be said. <gasps> Vinicius. In. That's a oh great pass. Hakimi. Hakimi on his own. Will he go on his own? Hidalgo oh. will. Hakimi should get there on the second time of asking. He will. Chance to break on the other side, Chiesa. Mbappe will peel his run. Ginola will queue up at the back post if he can be involved in this one. Doesn't need to instead. Twist, turn! Very nearly get past Courtois. Big save corner to come in. Watch Van Dijk. Is he going to play it short? Is he going to go for the back post? Or maybe whip it into the front? But he's going short. Chiesa. Oh, That's wow. all. He's on. He's on. Oli Lito. With potentially the biggest goal he scored. <laughs> Woo! On FC 24 today. That offside track there is brutal from yeah. Hidalgo. The offside track, the pass there to punch it in to Vinicius. You know, from Oli Lito is fantastic. He makes the most of it. Again, the goalkeeper movement sort of made his mind up. We take a look at the replay. And Mbappe. Playing it to the edge, the offside trap that comes in. It's a late run, I believe, is that Militao who steps forward late and the goal is taken brilliantly from Olilito. The celebrations to match as well. Oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a nervy bit of defending here, Brandon. We're gonna see. Hidalgo has to put everybody forward. He has to go to his depth. He has to put everyone forward. Everyone come or um, contribute to his attack. Centre backs play strike. Full backs overlapping. He needs to put as many bodies forward and hope he can generate this last attack. 
Te prometo que la haces. Vamos. Let's get the time on the screen if we can. Of how long is exactly Vamos, left? Eh? Vamos. In this game. La haces, tío. Vinicius, the goal scorer. How long is left for Olivito to see this one out? Hildalgo to try and get something forward. 89 minutes near enough on the clock. Let's see what added time we get. New switch of play. Numbers queuing up in the box, surely. Four minutes of added time. Hold on a minute. Hikimi down the byline. Massive tackle. Oh, oh. Mbappe again! Six! Six! Nah. Who's made that first interception there? I, 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 need, to, I need a read Van Dijk. I need a read Van Dijk. Nah. Oh, that's painful, I'll be honest. That is, oh. I think he's done enough to defend. It's so unfortunate. There's not much you can do. You can't really do anything else. Ooh. More? Four minutes of added time. Do fancy another goal, lads? Oh, that's so, it's so painful. We could have made it. Oh. Extra time looming. Rory Lito to have the final chance of the game. He builds into it now. He might not want to. He might want to. Look at the right back. I think he's just going to wait. There we go. Oh no. There's the flick on. The Rente doesn't get enough. There is still enough. He, can do, he has to get go the forward. ball past the halfway line. No, he, nah, he rushed it. Let's go the other way. Ginola. Hold on a minute. Oh, it's a big, big slight tackle there. Extra, Extra time oh. needed between these two. Six. Six. I knew these games were going to be tight, Brian, but didn't think we'll be seeing as many extra times as we have. So many last-minute goals. As again, I mentioned at the start, just the concentration levels tend to dip in games. Even though it's, it might not seem a lot, three minutes per half, ends up six minutes overall, it doesn't seem like a lot of time. But when you're focused 100%, your brain sometimes just falls asleep in little moments. We've seen a lot of last-minute goals. I think that one is going to be a bitter pill to swallow for Oli. I think it's a tough one. Because you think you've won it. You think you've done enough, you've intercepted it as well, even in that moment. How difficult is it, like, in, as a pro in that scenario, Ryan? You, you think you've won, then you're back again. You yeah. think you've won, then you're chasing <laughs> again. Yeah, literally. It's just up and down. It's like me and foot champs after going 0 and 10. <laughs> it's a bit generous. Six all. Last match to conclude. From day one, remember, we're back to do it all again tomorrow in Group C and D. The group of death, we're calling it. And there's Vergang in action tomorrow. World champion of it. The Champions League with Emre Yilmaz, just to name a few of those players. Good right back in open space. Nago kicking from left to right. He's got the first possession of the half. Reflected off the chest of Ginola. Still falls Carly Batio Dalgo though. Neymar step overs dancing in the box. Can he get round a few players? One more pass. Eusebio. Can he turn? He still has possession. Still Eusebio on his own. That's why he was drafted in this team. I think the Begidi cancel there with Neymar was fantastic. Just to to turn back and try and find that pass across goal. The strength there from Eusebio. <laughs> Ridiculous. Surpr I'm surprised he kept hold of it. Yeah, I'm very surprised at that as well. The keeper doesn't do enough there at the near post. Hidalgo has turned this game on its head. Olelita now the one chasing. It was in a position where he thought he he would have qualified. Now he's conceded last minute. Now he's chasing the game again, isn't he? To try and get back in it. The good thing is it's five minutes into extra time. 25 minutes still to be played. I'm about to see an instant equaliser. Spreads out well to Chiesa. Back inside, Ginola! What am I watching? <laughs> Seven all! <laughs> Didn't take him long, did it? <laughs> Barely any time at all. Straight away from the kickoff, Olivito responds. 
So great build-up play as well here, just pushing it out to the fullback, or to Chiesa, I should say. Ball roll inside. Dines takes a step back where it came from, a shot at the near post. Yeah. 14 goals. Might as well just call it penalties now while yeah. we're at it. <laughs> yeah. Massive switch apply. Who's going to be the next? Oh, that switch was poor. To make the move in terms of this scoreline, it's I score, you score. There's never been a bigger deficit than one. Since the game went to 4 4. Seven. A match to qualify for the FC Pro Open. That pass made it through. It would have been a, a perfect ball in behind. Last stages of the first half of extra time. We've seen a lot of switches. And this one could result in another chance. Hakimi towards the byline. Sergio's coming in late. Instead, doesn't need the cross. Twist, turn. Oh. Reverse Elastico was. Good idea. Probably the wrong space to do it in. Last chance of his first half in extra time. Oli Lito in possession. Oh my goodness. Oh no, dispossessed. Isabio is there if he needs Mbappe. St still trying to find his way through. Boots it out of play to Zedeman Atal. Half time and extra time. Still, with all to play for. Have they even got any more subs to make? I'm just looking across the board. I think I've just seen Vamos. Bellingham Vamos. being introduced pretty late into this game from Hidalgo. Fresh legs in the midfield. Neymar again. Oh, to, I think it was a little fast there. Didn't find its way through. It's going to be Olelito now. I think the switch is on. He's going to be triggering the runs for the fullbacks. I should say, sorry, Lorente comes on. Rafael Leo as well. Yep. Looks to be the two subs for Hidalgo. Last 10 minutes. Somehow kept on. So patient in the build-up, Ginola. Step over X, and there's that little is acceleration. It? Oh, oh, it's a clever goodness. pass. Chiesa was there, waiting just to tap it in. Get out. A moment of magic. Well, one mistake to make all the difference to determine the next couple of bumps of your FC Pro season. Cadago needs to be a bit careful with those switches. He seems to be getting, getting away with it a couple times there. Sam is perfect. See the play style rapid for Eusebio. It wasn't enough to, to speed away from the fullback. Lorente fresh legs off. Or was subbed on earlier on in the game from Olelito. Switching from left to right. And into the final five minutes. Are we edging our way to a penalty shootout to end? What has been an explosive day one. Lorente intercepts Lorente, the two subs that came on late. The press done well there, done very, very well. And here we go. Overlap, Hakimi. Beats Alfonso Davies to it. Hildalgo, great pass.
pass, Mbappe falls no. too kindly. It's unfortunate. The ball was just bounced back to the path of Neymar, who's going to have the easiest finish he's had all day. See again on the replay. Oh, Van Dijk, he's got. Oh, he's got to. Brandon, I'll be honest. <laughs> got to intercept it. I'll be completely honest with you. He has to intercept that. It's a massive goal for him. That, well, I'll be upset if I'm not. I'm not, honestly it has to be intercepted. It's, it's a tough goal to concede. I'll be completely honest with you. Look, that is. Uh, wow. That's going to take a lot to bounce back from it if he doesn't win this game or come back. It's two minutes left of extra time. Ololito needs something now. Hidalgo will be advancing into the FC Pro Open and he's giving it away. Hidalgo just needs to keep possession. And in time. Onolito minutes away from being eliminated. A harsh goal to concede. And it looks like that is going to be the case. There will be a Spaniard amongst the 12 players. Hidalgo has qualified for this year's FC Pro Open. A 15-goal thriller. Heartbreak for Lilito. I don't know what I don't know, I don't know what you're meant to do in that situation. It's tough. It's such a horrible way to concede again. It's just, yeah, there's not much he can do in that situation. He's being a, a sportsman con or oh, I'm well, hugging and congratulating Hidalgo, who advances, of course. We can speak about the commiserations for Olilito, but we have to highlight the massive, massive success this is for Hidalgo advancing into the FC Pro Open. He's done it defeating some massive names as well. We have to remember he played Lex earlier on today, winning that game to progress into the winner's bracket. But losing against Foom and now winning against Olilito, of course, in an outpour of emotion. It's a tough loss to take, a very, very tough loss. And Absolutely. Yeah, that, honestly, man, that got, that's a very, I'm upset. I don't know, I'm, I'm upset. You can see, I'm upset. I'll be honest with you, Brandon, I'm... Well, Hidalgo is playing number 12 to make it to the FC Pro Open. Uh, a really difficult goal to concede there. 15 goal fritter in the end to conclude what has been a crazy day of FC Pro action. As we said, we're halfway there. We've still got a Group C and Group D to do tomorrow. But for now, it's over to Frankie and FG. And I believe they're joined by some special guests. We are, in fact, we are getting Hidalgo onto the stage as I speak. But before we do check in with them and we draw those all important green balls, just a quick refresher on those results. Sean three, Lex two, Hidalgo eight, Olito 7 in probably one of the most heartbreaking games we've seen in London so far. So as you can see in the bracket, we are losing four names and some really huge names to boot. Nicholas, Olilito, Montaxa and Lex. These are names that will surely be missed, but we do have some fire players making it through to Monday. And we're going to find out where two of those players are going to be playing and who they're going to be playing against right now. So, guys, congratulations, Hidalgo. In particular, you had such a stressful game. Patricia is going to be translating for you. So I think, what should we do, FG? Should we, we, should we come will start. to our boy from Bayern first? We will give Hidalgo a minute to get his breath back. Congratulations, Sean. Wow. Um, going into today, your first major tournament. You've put your name on the map, haven't you? Yeah, of course. No, everybody know me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're about to seal your fate by drawing a ball. I know you're itching to do it, so I won't keep you waiting much longer. Feel free to put your hand in there, give the balls a shuffle and pick out a ball to decide where you will be heading. Give it a squeeze. There you are, and let's just show the camera. Sean, you have picked out <gasps> group number three. Frankie. That's Mano Bashori is going to be in that group. Okay, so to be the best, you have to beat the best. How do you feel? First tournament, as you said, internationally, I'm just, I'm so shaking. I'm done. 
Yeah, nothing to say. He's not done, by the way. He will be in group three. Congratulations, you are far from done. You are in the top 20, and we can see the group you are in there on the screen. And let's head over to you, my friend. Congratulations. Um, an emotional game indeed against Oli Lee. So explain to me how you are feeling. Eh, felicidades, ha sido un partido muy emocionante contra Olelito. ¿Cómo te, cómo te sientes? Bueno, me siento eh, sin palabras, la verdad, porque eh, ha sido un camino muy duro, comenzando el año sin equipo, sin, sin mucha expectativa y, y al final luchando yo solo y, y cuando llegó mi club, cuando me clasifiqué, pues un orgullo enorme para mí, para mi familia y para todos los que me rodean. It's very, it's been very hard for me the start of the year, of the year with no team. So I've been fighting, and finally I got signed, and it's been uh, really, really good. It's been very, very. I've, I'm very proud um, for me and for my family. So I'm, re I'm really happy. And I'm sure your family are just as proud. It's time for you to draw your ball out. So pick a ball, and let's see the group you're heading in. Okay, let's show the camera. That is group number one, Frankie. Yeah, I think you're the first player today to draw group number one. You'll definitely be playing against Mark 11 in that Monday night show. Well, there you have it. That is the uh, final draw of this evening. Congratulations to everybody who made it. Let's head over to our analyst, shall we, for one last time. Buckley and the legend Boras. Cheers, FG. The group's starting to take shape. There's one more bit of business for us to attend to here at the Buckley and Boros Breakdown Station, and that's the award the Sony PS5 Player of the Day. Could only go to one man, and that was Antonini. Didn't know much about him before the tournament started. Everyone knows him now, Boros. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this was a big win here in the shootout. But yeah, he came up uh, out of nowhere. A big new name this year and beating some of these established players. I mean, it's against Levy, which uh, is known as one of the best players. The clutch here, the clutch factor, massive. Incredible, it really was from Antonini. He is the Sony PS5 player of the day. It's been an unbelievable day. It's got to be said here at the FC Pro Global Qualifier. We will be back tomorrow with loads more analysis, loads more breakdowns and loads more draft reviews however for tonight that's it from myself and boras back over to frankie for one final time well tomorrow can't come soon enough because i get to witness those two legends break it down yet again but let's take a look at the matches we're going to be seeing tomorrow and you know what boys just pick a pick a fixture which one are you most looking forward to commentating brandon i think we can all agree anything in group c anything <laughs> anything emre yilmaz i'm going to say emre yilmaz uh, matias canano for me Yes, it's yep. going to be heartbreak. I'm, I'm going Group C as well. I just want to see Anders. I want to see him celebrating on the main stage again. It's always entertaining watching him play. Yeah, yeah Group C is definitely the one. We've got Umut in there as well. Looking forward to seeing his energy out there as well. Group D, then come on, do the honours, FG. Oh, well, where do we start? I'm, you know what? I'm looking forward to Happy living up to his name. Mm. Um, it's going to be an interesting day. Well, if I may, I'm going to say I want to see Justin Q play on the stage because yesterday in the Swiss, he took down Fuma, he took down Anders, and I think he's really going to test the players when he takes to that stage tomorrow. But right now, we want to get your community teams in so we can potentially talk about them on the show for tomorrow. Hashtag FC Pro Draft. Do let us know who you would be spending those 8 million coins on. But in the meantime, that is it for day one of the FC Pro Global Qualifier. We're back tomorrow with Group C and D. But right now, we're going to raise someone streaming EFA, -E 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 FC. So go and give them some love while I learn to speak English. Good night. <laughs>